Everybody move. 
little scared. Don't know what the answer is. Told myself I say the word. Speaking like a prophet did. Shifts to feel like stranger things. Perhaps I got an overwhelm. Chaos just to set you free. Chaos just to set you free. Deep down, still a doubt. What a smile like a song. Seeking answers, all I found it.
Que no te quieren, pichón, hace mucho ruido. La mala nunca la compra. La kill. La mala trampa. Aquí siempre hay guerra, aquí no hay pa. ¿Qué? Estamos vendiendo. ¿Qué? Come papel. Te invito a mi entierro. O déjame tirar la calle como un perro. La mala trampa. Aquí siempre hay guerra, aquí no hay pa. ¿Qué? Estamos vendiendo. ¿Qué? Come papel. Te invito a mi entierro. O déjame tirar la calle como un perro. ¿Qué? ¿Qué?
This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Teams are fighting for the first trophy of the year, but after today, only six will remain and still be in contention. Hello, hola, Diaguich. Welcome everyone to day four of Masters Madrid, coming to you live from the Madrid Arena. In and by the way, it's St. Paddy's Day, so I decided to get a little bit in the spirit, you know what I mean, also to cover the Grays. I'm Golden Boy, joining me today, we got Mimi, we also got Mitch. Luck of the Irish coming in hot. And also, it's good these years that you can protect us from the snakes, apparently. Uh, that's the thing. Is that I a thing that's, you do? That's what we do. That's what we do. I left my staff at home, so hopefully all the snakes are gone, because if any come today, I can't, I can't get rid of them. I need my cloak. We left that in Turkey. You got to be always... <laughs> you got to be afraid of the snakes. In any case, so folks, let's go ahead and talk about what happened.
happened here yesterday because all of our number one seeds took to the stage and we started things off with a pretty fun one. We had uh, Sentinels versus Carmine Core. This was one of the cloudier matches coming into this one. That's Mitch. not a word. Cloutier? We shouldn't make it Cloutier? one. Cloutiest? No. Cloutiest, perhaps? I don't know. I don't barely know English myself. In any case, though, Mitch, it certainly has been uh, fascinating to see a lot of these big name teams clash here in Madrid. And maybe it was the Puerto Rico Irish relation, but I Could understand be. what you were going Could for. Be, I know where you were going. Let's make it a word. Yeah, look, the reality is uh, yesterday I was quite surprised because I came in expecting there to be a, a definitive answer to the split question. Are KC the best in the world at it? And no, they're not. Sentinels may well be taking that, that claim. They look absolutely unbelievable. And for a team like KC, who in the regular season and even on the international stage have been solid on that map to be demolished like that, it sets Sentinels up as potentially the favorites for the tournament. And that pains me to say, <laughs> here we are. Yeah, I mean, Sen fans are eating good. Not only did they win both their matches, but they had, I think, the two most entertaining matches we've had For at sure. Madrid thus far. That Heretics game was electric, and then it was the same thing here against KC. Super close back and forth. Two teams who really either of them could have come out on top, but some great adaptation by Sentinels at the end. And for them, they finally get a break. Three days off before playoffs to prepare, but it's going to be a tough yeah. road uh, for those teams now in the lower bracket playing today. Yeah, what an incredible run that we saw, or that we've been seeing, rather, from Sentinels up until this point. But then we go to our second match of the day. It was going to be EDG facing off against Genji. And I you know, had an opportunity maybe to talk to Munchkin before this matchup. He was like, T1 Munchkin, lose. Genji Munchkin wins. And that's exactly what Genji Munchkin did here today. The squad came out uh, really swinging. Yeah, I, I mean, well, they I, they came out swinging eventually, right. but at first, not, not swinging. swinging. Arms locked to the side, yes, no like swinging this. taking place. Yes. Exactly like that. You look like a penguin, a flightless bird. Can Stunning. Um, but uh, yeah, this team, they start off really rough. They looked honestly pretty dreadful on Icebox, but then they turn things around, show us, I think, a really impressive breeze. Their, their individuals were coming online in a way that we haven't seen yet from Gen G in Madrid. And now they're into playoffs in their first ever international event, really looking like a player there in the top four. Abs oh, absolutely. Yeah, look, it, it, the reality is we started that series off with Kong Kong having uh, quite a snowball. It was yeah. turned into an Avalanche. It's hard to stop that guy once he gets going. But players like Texture, for example, I, re I remember that round where he comes out of a smoke, four bullets out of a ghost, three kills, dismantled his opponents. And look, there were so many big rounds from individuals that I wasn't expecting to see after that map one. Yeah, well, they're going to get themselves a little bit of a break as well. But as we look forward, today is Elimination Day. And all of our number two seeds are going to be facing a potential early exit. And a win here means you still stay alive in this competition. You can see the schedule on your screen, folks. You got FPX allowed, and then after that, it's going to be Heretic Paper Rack. Yeah, a reminder on the format, it's Swiss. So these teams that lost are down in the 0-1 versus 0-1 games. That's what's today. You win, you go on to the 1-1 to -one games for the last two spots into playoff. But these matches are completely random. So these teams playing today didn't know who they were playing until uh, in, when the games wrapped up. So it's very short turnaround, and it'll be very short turnaround again for those 2-1 to -one games to try and qualify. Going down, Losing is so much harder to make it to playoffs than the teams who just got that quick 2-0. I almost do prefer that, though, because it eliminates a lot of what we saw in early Masters events where the team who happened to on the schedule get the game first, they would sit in the lower bracket and watch the other match, get to take those notes, yeah. have that little bit of an edge. I think it's nice to have a, a sort of a level playing field when we come into the, to those matches. The only downside is it does mean that you focus a little bit more on your own game. As we've heard yeah. from a lot of the players here, that's mainly what they've gotten to do, especially with a short break between kickoff and here. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fundamentals that uh, teams are focusing and, on. And I think it's the reason why everyone's been so excited about this tournament. Like, really, no one has any idea where the chips are going to fall here. I think now we're starting to see things really come to fruition, but it has been quite fascinating to see this all break down. We have a question, actually, for you wonderful people back at home that brings us to our poll. Which international league is going to be seeing their exit here today? Their first exit, rather. Will it be the Americas region, China region, EMEA, or, of course, the Pacific region? Please feel free to scan that QR code. Go nuts. This is a test to see how good you are at reading a schedule, because there are only two possible answers here. Yes, that's that true. is that. Oh, that's a good. <laughs> it's not a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a good point there. All right, guys. Well, make sure you use that hashtag. All right, you already know. I've said this a million times. Hashtag Masters Madrid and VCT. So we can go ahead and feature your stuff on the broadcast. And as I always say, be nice to each other out there, people. Come on. Now, 
as we look forward here and we get you ready. You glare at them as you say that. I was just really so just it was scowl. threatening, yeah. Scowl, you know, Papa GB just trying to take care of the you kids You forgot out to put here. the or else to be at the menacing end of it. with the green beard, though. That, I guess so. Yeah, it's very <laughs> true. Saying Irish people are menacing? <laughs> no, nope. hard to nope. be menacing. Oh, hard to be menacing. Yeah, I agree. Also, I don't We're think not Irish menacing. people have green beards generally. <laughs> we do on Patty's Day. We almost went down a rabbit hole that I'm so glad we avoided. All right. I mean, we didn't. Before we get into our first match of the day, though, you know we like to play a little game, some funsies. This time around, we're going to be playing some process of elimination because it's Elimination Day. So we want to keep things nice and fresh for this one. So here's how it's going to work. All right, you guys are going to remove all of the options that you have, and you will pick just one. And okay. Four categories. So let's go for the first one. This is going to be Masters winners. Of these names, which one will you keep? Which two will you get rid of? Get rid of... Ooh. Get get rid of get rid just, of optic. Get rid of optic. Get rid I, of optic. I, I just want to pick fanatic. Gotta, I get rid of two. Get rid of two. Yeah. I mean optic gambit. Yeah. You yeah. gotta keep fanatic. You gotta keep fanatic. They're, they're, they're the one that's still kicking. You know. Yeah. Still a these are, the, these are the masters winners. So you would you would keep fanatic over gambits masters win I mean, and optic masters win. Both of them look win. great in okay. their masters win. But oh, if we're just considering masters exactly. win, I mean the optic gambit crew Reckovic, organization. Optic Reykjavik was good. No, I'm sticking to it. I'm standing gambit, by fanatic. Gambit crew in Berlin. My teammate. Best Greece. games I've got to watch, got to cast that game. But yeah, no, listen, Fnatic, I could see them taking a trophy the next event. I would say at this one, but. No. <laughs> okay, uh. all right. So then we have our answer. Fnatic will remain. All right, chat, make sure you guys play as well, okay? You don't get the interactions up. So this way, you know, we can become famous. Uh, now, <laughs> next category, star players. All right, we got peak yay. Peak tens, which I kind of feel like is a little bit of a cheat, or peak nats. Goodbye, yay. Pick? Goodbye, tens. They were both incredibly impressive oh, and yes. when they were at their peak. But nats, uh, he was doing was something, something no one had done before, right? Yeah. When he was first playing Viper, when he was hitting those lurks at Masters Ber Berlin, no one has really, I think, had a performance like that again. We've seen crazy star duelists like tens, like yay. We've seen Demon One, yeah. but we haven't seen another nats. Well, even thinking about this tournament, the one player during a cast, I drew the comparison with how Dong and how he was playing, but it was more so the results of the rounds. He was playing against a, against a Sentinel-less comp. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, Nats was doing this against Sentinels. He was doing it against both the team and the, the, the composition, yeah. the agents. Uh, the, the way he played was just mind-blowing, and it was something that never, never before had we imagined we would see. So yeah, it has okay. to be him. I'm surprised we agree. I thought we were going to have to argue over 10s. All okay. right, there we go. Let's see what our next one is. New, if new 10s was on this list. That, oh, I that like would new be a debate. Okay. That would be a debate. All right, so here we go. Next one we have, it's the subs. The substitutes that we want to keep. We got Patatech, we got Cider, and we also have CGRS. I'm getting rid of Cider because he wasn't there for the entire Masters when he That's got fair. them there, Sorry, but Cider. he wasn't there the whole time. So he's gone. Ah, Patatech's been good both times. He's been a substitute. Player. I think I have to go with CGRS though. Bringing Paper X on that run in Masters Tokyo, they absolutely couldn't have done it without him. He was there the entire time. He, he I mean, he was a he was a content creator and he stepped up and he played that well against the best in the world. I mean, I feel like I'd be swinging with Cider, keeping him around just because of the impact he had emotionally on me. I thought the team was dead in the dirt. I thought FBX were in a lot of trouble, and he came out, stepped on that stage, and fit into the puzzle Fair. perfectly. So. I don't know. I've also been a, a fan of his for a long, long time in the Tier 2, and I want to see him get a shot at Tier 1. This one was hard Constantly. because I was like, I I'm, I think I'm just going to keep Patatech. He's like, he's here. <laughs> so he's here. I, like, I think but, I'll yeah, just keep yeah, Patatech. Yeah. But hey, look at that. Uh, you know, what did you guys say in the chat? I'm actually quite curious. Hopefully we can find out. Now, uh, let's end with some funsies. A classic whoopsie moment. All right, we got a few of them. So let's go ahead and show the graphics. So we got the Dewey's failed knife onto Jogamo from Masters Tokyo. We had Mystic oh, no. flashing Doma from Masters Reykjavik. We had Solkis with the failed knife on Vanity oh, in Masters Reykjavik. And then we had Zekin with the showstopper on Zelsis, which happened okay. Zekin is here. gone. It's, 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 it just happened. It's nowhere near oh, as so iconic no as any bias. of the other ones. No recency no bias. Recency bias here. I have That's a question. Gone. Do we have to watch them all? No, Are we no, going to watch the one we pick, or it's it's good? It's just the clip. Thank so. God. OK, I mean, the Solkis failed knife is the one that probably I mean, that was the Masters most in my Reykjavik. Head. That is like the be oh, the first Masters Reykjavik. Yeah. That's like beginning yeah. of Valorant history. And it's followed him since that day. I yeah. mean, he, he can't yep. escape it. But the Mystic Team Flash as well for impact on the series, I might have to keep that one. I mean, it's the one I want to get rid of the most, but that's why I'd have to keep Dude, it. Dude, but the Tui's failed. Ivan Jogamo just turned around. He just turned on him. Like, it was just crazy. 
I don't I, know. I There's think, so many good ones. I think I got to go with so the, the Soul Cast Failed Knife because okay. it's just, it's the most historic. It was like the first funny moment. I remember like sitting at home with my friends watching and just like waking up early for that match and screaming when it happened. <laughs> it, has, it has the most impact on me. Although the Jaw one is close too. That was also ridiculous. The Jaw one being the two he's failed knife where Jaw spun yeah. around and, and, and killed him and stuff. turned on him in, in an instant. It was yeah. actually quite hilarious. But all right, so we agreed on the desk here. You know, I would say the numbers are, are on the favor of Soul Kiss with the failed knife. Sorry, buddy. We love you. Yeah, uh, but there you go. All right, folks. Well, let's go ahead, though, and talk about our matchup. No more of the fun. You hear the music? It's done. All right. It's time to talk about the game that we have in hand over here because we have some world champs that are going to be taking the stage in a moment. But here's a little interesting tidbit is that Masters does not seem to fare that well, Mimi, for this powerhouse squad. Yeah, when they, they showed up to two, Tokyo, 2-0 out of that one. They showed up to Copenhagen, 0-2 oh, out of that one. For, for some reason, Loud tends to kind of have slow starts to the year when they come to these Masters tournaments. They performed really well at both champs after that, but there isn't, it, it's not unprecedented to see this team go down early, to see them lose. And I actually think it is interesting to draw a comparison to them losing in Masters Tokyo, because then I feel like there was a lot incomparable in terms of them kind of struggling to find their identity. That's when they were defining the Harbor Viper meta. Did, they played it on one map. That's yeah. when Aspas was like the best Jet in the world. He played Jet on one map. He was the best opera in the world. He bought an op once. Like, it, it was kind of similar to now here, where, where they're going, and again, they're trying to find themselves with another weird composition. The question is, can they fix it in time to, to, to make it work here, where they failed in the past? That's the thing. I think there's been a lot of promise in the comps that they've brought to the stage. Maybe the Ascent one needs a little bit more uh, time to For cook sure. up, but especially on Icebox, I think there's a, there's a ton of interesting ways we've seen them try to push teams out of their comfort zone. But uh, again, it's such a short yeah. turnaround and not being able to anti-strat. I wonder if that's going to be a, a downfall for them. Up against the squad of FBX, though, this is where it might actually work for them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that is the big question around Loud right now. When they were playing in Americas, they were playing Phoenix and Breach on four of their maps. They they come in in their first matchup of Masters Madrid, and they played normal comps on two maps, and then they changed onto the Yoru on Ascent. And I, I think it is the right change, right? And, and the, the question at the bottom of the screen, is this overcooked? Is Loud going too far with the team comps? I, I think the easy answer is, is yes, right? They're trying to do something no one else has done. They're taking some time to do it. It's not fully fleshed out compared to the old stuff Loud saw, sure. but I'm not against it. I don't necessarily agree with that fully because I don't think it's the perfect meta composition, but I think what they're doing is when this team is a squad that's like fully committed to the idea. When they can play something that can be a little bit more gimmicky, a little bit more off kilter, they tend to make that work. For me, it's a question of execution. Because honestly, there's no time between America's and now, or between their first match and now, to go and reinvent themselves. I can also understand why they decide to risk it. I mean, we've even seen some teams, I think the general narrative has been in EMEA around Fnatic's compositions. Maybe they're a little bit too predictable and easier for teams to play against, both from the, from the community. And I've heard it from teams that they've played against. Yeah. So this is one of the things where I, I don't mind if teams decide to come in and say, okay, we might not be able to prepare it to 100%, but we've got to try to stay ahead of the curve rather yeah. than be a little bit too predictable playing the best way that we know we can. I, I, it's, it's an idea that sometimes you get punished for, but I always respect teams for trying it. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like peak Paper X, where I was never a lover of the peak, pa peak <laughs> Paper X comps. And I'm not really, I don't love on paper these loud comps, but when you have a team that's fully committed behind it, can implement it well, you can be successful. Of course, of course, but we'll see how this actually all plays out for them as we jump into the matchup. For now, though, let's actually send it over to Mika Fabs, who's standing by with a quick word from Dewey's. Hey, Dewey's, how are you feeling? Good, good, good. Good, awesome. Okay, we have Archer here to help with some translation. I wanted to know, give us a little sneak, sneak peek behind the scenes. What's been Loud's biggest challenge so far at this tournament? Então, a gente quer saber um pouco atrás das cenas qual é o maior desafio da Loud até agora aqui no campeonato. Eu acho que o horário tá complicando bastante a gente, jet lag tá pegando firme e é isso. I would say it's like the, the time shift thing, like it's actually giving us some trouble to deal with, like jet lag is hitting very hard, but that's pretty much it. Well, hopefully you guys have got some good rest today, best of luck to you. Thank you. These international events are always going to be tough here, right? Jet lag, traveling, but that's the job though, right? So I hope to see that, you know, th these boys in Loud, Mitch, uh, you know, they they've woken up a little bit, they get ready for this game. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think we were a little disappointed with the form that we saw them playing on. This is a team that has high expectations, and sure, we can talk about Masters performances, but after playing on the international stage doing so well at Champs, you have to feel like they're soon to, to break that curse. The pressure can't really be getting to them on this stage compared to what they were uh, facing in LA, and the level of competition here, I think this is the easiest matchup they'll have had so far in that, in that aspect of against FBX. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I think that Loud is a team that I never worry about the pressure because of the experience, and Tui's is a great example of that. This this guy was a rookie when he came into the team at the, be the beginning of last year, and he instantly stepped up to the plate, changing his role over to controller, and he's just been so damn consistent ever since then. I feel like there's like a hierarchy in loud of there's a star player, you forget about the next one down the line. It was Asbus to Les last year, and now I feel like it's Les taking all the thunder. Well, Tuiz is quietly having insane matches. Yeah. He was doing it consistently in Americas and consistently here in Madrid as well. He is an incredibly stoic sight anchor always getting his when someone comes to his Just site. Such a reliable hand. Yeah, and also when he's like playing the Omen, does a great job of setting up his teammates with paranoia. He plays into the system well, but it's also still kind of a star player. Because remember, before Loud, this guy was just a tier two duelist fragging out in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, and now we see him really starting to come into his own in the second year as a part of this organization. But at the start of this year, all eyes were actually on QCK, and they were wondering whether or not he could fit into the system that Sadak has built. So earlier, Mitch is right here next to us, by the way, sat down with the pair to see how they've gotten to know one another. Welcome back to Duo Cues. This time we are joined by QCK and Sadik from Team Loud. And we've got a couple of questions to ask you guys. Firstly, thank you so much for joining me, gentlemen. Thank, thank, you, thank you for the invitation. Now, uh, for you guys at home, these two players are going to be asked questions to see how well they know each other. And they're going to have to write down their answers on the whiteboard without showing each other. And then they'll reveal to the class. And we'll see if they can get the same answers. Let's start with our first question, gentlemen. What is Sadik's favorite agent? Ok, go! Eu sei que você gosta de Banks. Começa por aí. Eu sei que você vai botar. Não, não sabe não, mano. Será que não? Não, porque eu trocou todo o seu G. Eu tô pronto. I'm ready. Calma aí, calma aí, calma aí. Bora. Alright, I'll give you a countdown. You ready? Yes. Uh, let's reveal your answers. 3, 2, 1, show the class. Ah, different directions. <laughs> não, foi mentiroso, foi mentiroso. <laughs> Oh, that's a, a failure on the first one. Both have flashes, at least. It's it's something. <laughs> that's what he said. Like, I know you like flashes. <laughs> that was a good guess, then. Oh, well, that's because you're the Phoenix guy. <laughs> now it's time to put the shoe on the other foot. This time you're going to be tested, Sadik. What is QCK's favorite genre of music? Okay. <laughs> oh, that was quick. That was quick. He's straight to right now. <laughs> Só que eu não sei como você, como você cria, mano. É... Normal. Ok, okay. I'm well, ready. Let's reveal to the class what you wrote. Go ahead. Oh, ok. I'll give yeah. it to you. I'll yeah. give it to you. It's because yeah. I, I didn't know how it's... Like the name in Portuguese. Não, mas tá, tá certo. É isso, né? É happy and uh, funky, né? Uh -huh. Tá certo. Very so nice. Good. Okay, okay. Oh We're on the mark. God. On the money. <laughs> As usual, the captain, big brain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I wouldn't get too confident. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see the next question. This is another test for you, QCK. From the team, which player would Sadik want to be handcuffed to for a day? <laughs> <laughs> Mano, eu vou colocar um. That's a full day. From breakfast until you go to bed. Ah, e será? Tem dois, tem uma dúvida gigantesca. Tem um que você pensa que é nem fudendo, tá? Deixa eu te falar. É isso que eu ia colocar. <risos> ah, então eu sei já. Pronto? Ok. Let's see what you guys wrote. Reveal your answers. Ah, ok. Eu vou botar boia, né? Não, eu vou botar o Les. Imagina estar de mal com boia, me mata. Com todo respeito, né? Well, we are running out of time, but the last question is very quick. Would QCK rather vacation on a beach or on a mountain? If you get this right, you're ahead on points. You win the game. Você vai errar, cara. Tudo bem. I'm confident about this one. Ok. Eu posso escrever em português, né? The captain could take it here. Nossa, ficou ridículo, mas tudo bem. Bora. 
All right. Reveal to the class what you wrote. Let's see. Ejo. Praia? Você falou que não gostava de praia? Não, tá louco, cara. Você falou que não gostava de praia? Não, não. Mas eu vou passar férias na montanha. Não mentiu, mano. Eu vou fazer o que na montanha? Eu te falei, você gostava de praia? e falou, não, você não vê que eu sou branquinha. Ah, para, 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 para. Mentiroso. It's a liar. Well, we've ended one to one. It's a tie at the end of the day. <laughs> a good performance, at least. And now he doesn't get to gloat. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And the very best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the best part about that was after we cut and we got our mics off, Sadik turned to me and said, you've killed our team now after that. They had such an argument over the beach or the mountain. Yeah, I because, I mean, I was able to understand a little bit of it. And yeah. uh, uh, Benoia, I didn't, <laughs> I'd never seen that word before. So that caught me off guard. But the, the mountain, I thought, I, who wouldn't want to go to the mountains? That sounds like a wonderful I mean, the beach sounds nice, too. I mean, yeah. Well, that's that's what Sadik was saying. He was like, what the hell are you going to do on a mountain? But then you get sand in your, in your feet and it's coarse and it's Ooh. everywhere. All right, guys. All right. So... Let's move on to so. Loud's opponent. We got FPX on the other side of that stage. Now, they did get 2 0 by Carmine Core on day one. But, but I think a lot of people going into that one, Mimi, felt like FPX showed us some pretty solid individual skill. Like their 1v1s, it felt as if they were taking confidence in the battles, which was pretty big for them in comparison to what we've seen in the past. Yeah, that's the thing, if nothing else, that FPX will never lack. I mean, life was insane on this game. Autumn was having its moments. The, the players will frag out. But, but I also felt, in particular on the second map, they were showing us a little bit more depth. I thought compared to the first time we saw Berlin, where he was like lurking every round on Fade and doing a lot of honestly really troll stuff, here, there was a little bit more sensibility in the way they were playing. They were still taking those risks, taking those individual moments. But I think they were actually playing a solid mid-round on that attack of Lotus. Mm -hmm. And it really showed that, that, that China is a region, and this team in particular, has gained some more depth while still having those chaotic roots. Well, this is the thing. You know, I, Lotus was really what drew my eye as well. Because looking at it, there were a couple rounds. Round 15, round 19. If either one of those goes to FPX up against KC, this is somewhere that they could have actually taken sure. the map. And considering KC, you were 13-11 against Sentinels, that's not bad to have that close of a fight between a team that a lot of people pinned as favorites coming in, at least as, as top four, and now they're struggling. I think FPX have done uh, a, a world of a job coming into this event. Again, though, it sucks to be sitting off, uh, opposite competition like Loud because the expectations are so much higher on that other side. Yeah. I think a lot of people internationally have kind of looked down on this team. But remember, 44 teams in the international leagues. Only eight made it. FPX qualified here for a reason. They yeah. are not a bad team. They may play a very different That's style right. than the other squads, but they can catch you off guard. This is not a freebie by any means for Loud. Oh, I, I totally agree with you on that one, Mimi. And I'm excited. Uh, to jump into this matchup. But before we do that, though, we actually have Mika standing by this time around with FPX's live to get some words from him. Hi, Live. Can we pull you aside for a quick question? All right, so Live, you've been uh, one of the top performers of the team so far. How do you deal with the pressure knowing that eyes are on you, especially for this match because it's an elimination match? We have Luna here to help with some translation. Alive不选手，你也是队内表现非常突出的选手之一嘛？那面对今天的这场淘汰赛，尤其又是这么的备受关注，你将会如何应对这些压力呢？啊，我觉得就用以往的经验，还有平常训练的自信嘛，对。I think we we'll just use our experience from a previous matchup and our confidence from our practice. That's all. All right. Good luck to the team. Shish it. They say they want to use the experience of their previous matchup. Well, life, uh, you know, if it's the previous matchup, I'm looking forward to seeing what life could do in this one and going up against Loud. Dude, life was unbelievable in this game. Uh, I was not a big fan of how FBX was playing the Icebox. I felt like they were kind of lacking on how they were playing the Reina Gecko combo. And then six rounds into the game, life just decides, hey, I'm going to win. Just starts running down A every round and absolutely decimating Carmine for This guy is a talent who can compete with the best of them. Absolutely. You know, one of the things you always say about Reina is if you pick up this agent, you're not really providing that much to the team. You've got to have a good day. If you come out 13 and 13, I don't care. You, you, if anything, you should be playing something else. Life made a case. I mean, almost agent. throws his chair off the stage <laughs> at the end there. The guy, I think, is also bringing a ton of energy to this team, right? You see when he's popping off, he's yelling, he's screaming, he's yeah. getting up out of his chair. He's a, he's a huge source of life for his team. Uh. <laughs>
I think just, I, I hate that you did that because if I did that, you would have made fun of me. Yeah. And I don't think I'm, that's fair. I'm becoming more like you every time. I know. I'm, <laughs> what are you going to say, Miss? Well, one, one of the things about life and in playing that Reyna was that, and it, again, the composition in general, it yeah. left a lot of space on that defensive side. They weren't able to cover a lot of the time. I think some of the util you're going to have to use typically to bypass likes of Killjoy uh, utility, locking down kitchen, you don't have this to, to fall back on necessarily. Mm -hmm. And it, this is, I guess, the problem. The other thing is if life comes up against an opponent who's waiting for those pushes and winning those fights. So far, that didn't happen. He was hitting his shots almost every single yeah. time. Had a fantastic map one, especially. But it's, it's always in the back of my mind that like on an off day, you're just tanking your team's win rate. Yeah, yeah. and I will say when, when this team did lose momentum towards the end of that KC match, it, it really started to fall apart. Uh, in a post-match interview, Auden was talking about the fact how this team's comms were getting super hectic. People were yelling. It was way louder than normal and really kind of falling into the chaos once they started losing, which is tough, especially when you're in a multilingual team where, where Autumn is still like learning to speak Chinese with the rest of his squad. So they really need to, I think, focus on composure today, especially when they get a lead. Yeah. Uh, if they get a lead. Because you know on the other side of that stage, Loud's going to have that in spades, and that's going to be something that they're going to need to pay attention to. Now, we asked you guys earlier about, you know, MasterCard fan poll. We had some fun. We asked you some questions. We asked you uh, which team is going to be uh, seeing an early exit here, and the results are in, and it turns out China. They believe no FPX believers, Mimi. It's it's not surprising. This would be a massive upset if FPX could win this series. They've never won a series at international events before. EDG has been really, I think, the only Chinese team we've seen thus far who can compete with teams the like of loud so this yep. is going to be a tough one but fpx on a good day when their players are hitting they are a very strong upset squad and loud has looked weak this tournament it's not impossible to win this one and avoid elimination no no no, no. especially if the veto goes the way something like a lotus like we've talked about would be wise for loud to avoid considering how yeah. strong they've looked up against other competition who are good on the map there's a lot of potential for fpx for sure if loud do come in shaky like we've been saying i, I would be very, very worried for this squad because yeah. the reality is, uh, like you said, Mimi, and I'm definitely guilty of this, like the, the international scene has underestimated FPX from what we've seen in some of these days so far. But again, we need to see them kind of take the win before people are going to give them that credit. Close games aren't really enough to win the general audience's approval. But for Loud, they absolutely need to win absolutely. this. Absolutely. The Expectation is there. If a team like Loud, after their year last year, after the pedigree of this squad, yep. after their one in Americas, if they go out 0-2, it, it is a massive, massive upset. Well, let's see what we're going to be playing for this series and jump into the map select with our coaches and find out what battleground we're playing in today. Welcome to the map select presented by Omen for match one. FPX, you're going to be the higher seed. Um, team A or team B? Uh, team B. Team B. So loud, you will be team A and we will start with your first ban. Lotus. Lotus, your ban? Split. Split and map number one coming from loud. Sunset. Sunset, FPX side on Sunset. Attack. Attack, and map number two? Um, breeze. Breeze, side on Breeze. Uh, attack. Attack. Okay, next set of bands, starting with Loud, you have Ascent, Bind, and Icebox. We ban Bind. And Bind, your band, you have Ascent and Icebox. We ban Ascent. Ban Ascent. So map number three is going to be Icebox. Allowed side on Icebox. Attack. All right. Good luck to you both. Thank you. Love it. This series is going to start on Sunset. Both these teams have played Phoenix at home. I think they're the two craziest squads in terms of composition we have at Madrid. This match is going to be wild. Yeah, Sunset's always a fun one, folks. But today we got four teams that are going to take the stage, but only two will live to fight another day. Let's do this.
a lot of the teams uh, have had like a wake up call that you know there's you've actually got some real competition this year. Yeah, I think teams gonna have to work a lot harder. It's all unforsaken. The utility two flashes will now no longer. EDG finally bested Paper X. I feel like we're not playing up to our performance yet, but I believe that we will overcome this. I really, really believe that we are gonna stomp every upcoming game and we're gonna become even stronger. It's our home crowd and we're gonna show it. Heretics taking us the distance! It doesn't matter if you lose the first day. For me, it's just a warm-up day. <laughs> I think PaperX is playing really individually. I don't see a good team play on their team. So if we shoot heads, everything is gonna be fine. We lose to EDG, we're not gonna lose again. I Uma derrota é sempre importante para mostrar os seus erros e ver como a gente pode contornar a situação. Então, vocês podem esperar que terá uma loja muito melhor e muito mais constante para o próximo game. Uh, eu que eu não sei o que eu vou fazer, eu não sei o que eu vou fazer. It's a classic David versus Goliath. FPX still fishing for that first series win at an international tournament. And on the other side of them, they're facing off against not one, but two world champions and some stacked talent in Loud. It's safe to say this is gonna be a tall order for the Chinese team. But if there's anything that we've learned from this tournament, Mimi, is that this squad can do it. They just gotta find it in them. They do, but they're up against Loud. The team at this tournament with the longest pedigree of success. Tadak has led roster after roster to international events, and they almost always succeed. But there is that history in the back of your head of a Masters tournament or two knocked out yeah. Two matches. It's happened before. It's actually quite fascinating given the circumstances with Loud and FPX here, right? Because it's like, you, you look at these Masters events. Loud, kind of struggling. FPX, still looking for that first series win. You kind of have a situation where FPX could maybe get the better of them here. I mean, when Crew was struggling, one of their first big wins in Copenhagen was knocking out Loud. It, it has happened before yeah. where teams come up and, and get these upset wins. Yeah, they find them on weaker form, which is exactly what we've seen Loud come into this tournament on. I mean, everything seems to be lined up for FPX to have that miracle victory here and push deeper, further into this tournament. I don't know, I, I, I feel like the starting battleground, though, for Loud, somewhere they were close against Sentinel, somewhere they beat EG earlier on in the year. This is not exactly a weakness for them. And while on the side of the FPX, I'm not sure they'll be able to match up pound for pound. Life needs to have oh, a life game. That's two. We can't do it twice in one shot. You have to.
Anyways, Sunset, this is the map where I like Loud's Phoenix, uh, Phoenix uh, Breach Comp the best. I think it's a map where getting away with playing no dive is very doable. That's because on the attack, most of your sight hits end up being splits either through mid or through elbow on beat anyway. So you can get away with that. And having that extra flash power means you have great retakes, a much more proactive defense focused on that extremity control. And also on your attack, you have a ridiculous amount of alts that you can start to snowball, especially since Phoenix, you, you get a new ult every six. Yeah, yeah, it's somewhere you're going to be competing across. You know, I, I, I feel like this is somewhere for Loud. They've come in, they've been a little frozen, they've been cold. It's been winter for this squad, and hopefully it'll it's start to thaw. They'll yeah. find themselves on the other side in autumn. Uh, but on the other side, oh. autumn, he's been <laughs> unbelievable. I've really enjoyed seeing this guy flourish on this international stage. I, I don't know how many times he's been able to bail them out of tough situations, and on a Phoenix, even more so. He was dominating in first kills just the other day. This guy's really good, I think, at, at taking pretty strategic fights and winning them consistently for the squad. The first Australian to ever make an international uh, event in Valorant, and he's uh, he's making OCE proud thus far. And, and um, what I really hope to see as well from this FPX team is just some proactivity. You know, I, I just want them to just kind of catch Loud off guard, really put Sadak in a position where he has to like really use that massive brain of his to come up with something creative. I, I like to use this phrase, punch in the face. I kind of wish that there's something that I've FPX has before. The, the thing is, though, you say that, but I think FPX can can push that scale too far a lot of the times, where, where life fair. and That's autumn fair. go off, and they're going for these fast entries, and they're getting split off, and they end up dying. We saw that in the first part of Icebox yeah. against KC, mm -hmm. where they, they were early impression. investing. Sure, they were early investing things like their Gecko Util, dumping that into sight, and then they were scaling in a way where the spacing was just wrong, and they were getting picked to pieces. We need to see an FPX that is keeping their fundamentals in the forefront of their mind if they want to beat a team like Loud, who even when they're struggling, have some of the best fundamentals in the game. And on the other side, I, I, actually on the side you're talking about, Loud, right? This is a squad that I think for QCK, he's been having some struggles in fitting into that entry role. That's true. Now, if he does come in still locking that Phoenix up against FPX, this is somewhere that I can't pull out any excuses for him. He should be firing off on the way through. So something that, you know, I think is important to note as well is when we talked to Sadaka in, in Americas, right, one of the things that he had said was getting QCK on this lineup just gave them more flexibility options, gave them more that they could do. But to the point that everyone's been saying here, it's that I do feel like at a certain point, yes, QCK is fitting more of a role than rather than being a star player. Sure. But yeah, I kind of feel like you're going to need your boy to step up here at this point in time, right? Really make your name on the stage today. You absolutely do. There, there's a reason we're in the face of Valorant where we're, we're past having IGLs that don't frag, right? Like yeah, yeah, actually yeah, yeah. having people who are shooting back, who are popping up. And I'm not saying QCK wasn't at any point in time because mm. it is worse. He's been fine, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done his job. Excellent. Oh, yeah, before. good. Yeah, awesome. that is so true. Because that's the thing. He's done. He's a he's a role player, right? Sometimes yeah, having guys like that on your team can go a super long way. Uh, but you know, you also kind of had a situation where they were replacing a guy like Osboss, who was a really impactful because it's freaking Osboss. So like, there's there's a lot of big shoes to fill there. But I, I'm I'm excited to see what Loud can do, Mitch, uh, especially with this game if they try and get a little little funny with it. Oh, that's that's sick. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to find out where that jacket came from. Yeah, that, yeah that. I need one or or two. And you know, this is the other thing. Uh, just circling back to the QCK Phoenix, the composition that they run gives him so much room to play with. You're talking about all the extra things they can do. Well, with a breach, with an omen, with a viper, and a sova to support you. Yeah. This is somewhere that I think FPX, if they're caught out of position, if Loud can push and pull the map. This should be no problem for QCK yeah. breaking through. Like I said, he's been good and playing his role. He's been going in and going down, but we know that the potential for QCK, the ceiling, is a lot higher. He can burst those sites, blow those sites way open All by right. himself. Here we go, Agent Select coming in, and we, uh, okay, so they're gonna be rolling with the Chamber FPX uh, for life, which could be quite helpful for them potentially. So the biggest difference between these two columns is, is for one, FPX has that Sentinel on their defense. They have a little bit of more control. Generally, if you're you're kind of leaving your Chamber alone on one side, that's what you allow. That's what it allows. Loud is playing Sentinel, which means their defense needs to be perfect. They cannot be leaving these holes. If so, they will get infiltrated by FPX. But I mean, honestly, Mitch, just a wild comp head to head that we're getting Phoenix versus Phoenix in 2024. Yeah, even though you see it say that FPX hasn't played the comp before, that is what they've been running regionally. They've looked okay there, but this is a whole different challenge. All right, folks. Well, this is it. The first match of the day, our first elimination match of the day is going to get started. Who better to send some people home than Pansy and Hypok? Am I right, guys? 
You're not wrong, what? GB. Absolutely hate everyone. You're on the money. Um, <laughs> Can't wait to see someone lose, apparently. Love an upset, love people upset. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, misery loves company, <laughs> and we are here. However, there is a real factor to this that we do need to address. One of these two teams will be going home. Now, Loud had a pretty tough game up against Gen G. 2-1 in the end. Now, bigger picture, we don't know how that looks here. We need to see how this competes, because Carmine Core swept FPX. We're right in. So life, take a little stab there. They would have TP out, but contact found early on. QCK and Tui's. I mean, to post up here. Three members allowed, actually. They're doubling down on this. Yeah, they're That's pushing like... through. <gasps> oh, well, I saw didn't go. see it. Here. Loud are so close to this. This could be devastating. Timing's everything, right? Like, can they keep control of what's going on elsewhere? Deciding to go all the way around T-spawn, not s kind of you know, slicing through tiles, which is where the vast majority of FPX currently reside. So Les needs to be really careful here. He does have Kalantine by his side, One and that's and exceptional eight. work Five from Loud. Clear cut and concise. Lysor has no idea what the hell just happened, but that was just a sweep. Now, half a second either way, Lysor maybe spots this out, finds the opening kill, and shuts down what looks like a very, very well-planned pistol round here from Loud. Get a consolation here, potentially no QCK. Clean. Quick to it. Loud will start the map here with a flawless. Going to send a message here to FBX. No strangers to elimination games on either side here. True. Beautiful setup here, yeah. I mean, the fault line. That was stunning. More than a cosmetic stun. <laughs> yeah. no, you get worried on a pistol round. You do, you do. <laughs> there is always that slight <laughs> question mark, but no, that was, that was very clean work from Loud. And, and I think um, it'll be interesting to see how Loud look in this series, uh, bigger picture. Well, yeah, because I think Gen G's performance afterwards well, kind of... Well, that's changed my perspective. You almost feel a little better about Loud losing, right? Yes, if that's absolutely. a way to look at it. Let's yeah. open up here, life. Power player for FBX down. Autumn tagged up as well, obviously the ability to heal, but... No follow through from FBX just yet. No, let's see if they can achieve anything with this one. Oh. Tricky, obviously with classics, this map not particularly comfortable. Lysor did get a little bit of space, so that could be relayed into those later rounds. If maybe that's something they could explore, but for now you can see them taking the tour. This will probably play in if anyone. And it's going to be QCK over there. Yeah, so let's see how much he gets. He's heard something, enough to turn his attention back. Maybe just the time, no one seeing anything. That's not pretty enough. He does get at least two of them. Dirty HP. Yeah, tough. But another individual fight could open up the potential of a plant. Let's see if he can maybe get the drop, but Kowanzine, yeah, the timing. Nicely done by Kowanzine. Across the corner, finds him. And I think off the uh, back of that, actually, QCK does get his ultimate, so... Oh, really? Yeah, yes, tools, he does. Tools to bring in here. Obviously loses out on the rifle, but we'll try and spread the funds accordingly. Want to put him in a position if they do want to cook something up around the ultimate for this round. Mm. We'll pass across, get him a Bulldog at least. Expected, obviously with this composition, I mean, I agree with Mimi, this is almost the mm. better showing of this composition. Here. The ability to be very proactive, set QCK in motion. I said that Kalanzine hasn't got an assist yet. Doesn't really matter, even after the pistol no, round there. Did well enough for yeah. himself. It could have supported the player beside him, but I mean, if you're there, you're there. Now the bonus does have a great deal of bite to it here for Loud, but life's position a little further ahead than less expected. to so going to get the drop on him and open up a big avenue of chance. Now does this spur on QCK potentially? Already set into place somewhat by that Al drone through middle. He is waiting very much on the jump off point. Bit of stall and actually, this is quite audacious from Kalanzine. Does say, yeah, recover the Bulldog there. Toying with the idea of uh, dipping a little deeper in the smoke, but... Things come through from FPX, I think noting or potentially noting somebody towards market. Don't like what they saw. Mm. They do have themselves a very favorable fight towards eight. Two, he's not committed. No, sitting quite deep. They still have the Paranoia. Still have near on full kit, barring the Aldrone for Sadak. Kalanzine, pretty well situated, and so is QCK. So they could run a pretty good retake if they get there, but again, yeah, keep your eyes towards QCK. He should have been able to clear B by this point, so they could alleviate all the pressure. Now seeing this utility towards A, this should be a comfortable rotate, left. and you've got to look for that backstab. How much value does QCK find? 
little bit of stall on the one way. So he's just trying to go over the top. There it is. Yeah, he spotted him. Oh. Oh, chip damage. Not going to convert to a kill, but that's the site found. And the flank is on the way. Eyes towards QCK here. Potential victim. Careful now. Does he find it? No, oh, dealt with. QCK, that's going to lose a lot of the punch from this round. Loud now looking very vulnerable to he's in Cowan Zine. Lovely work to bring it back to a 2v2. How dare I, mean, I the doubt them. Great for them. No, Lysor loses the fight, and this is ridiculous. Autumn, come on. No flashes to play through on that smoke, and doesn't get too invested on the tap on the spike, but now he has to go. He's got to take this challenge halfway. Not achieved. Autumn plays it well. FPX get across the line, but that's a dicey full buy up against a bonus. A little sketchy, but a round win nonetheless. Loud making things very difficult for FPX there. Even when QCK falls A, it removes a big tool in terms of the retake. Yeah, a number of kills coming through. One enemy Good remaining. Shot. From both Tuis and Cowanzine. Cowanzine, a little bit of hesitation here, obviously, to come off. He was just ahead of the half defuse. And Tuis in a good position to hold the cross there as well, so definitely an opportunity for Loud to pull that off. But the Red Bull clutch nonetheless for Autumn. Let's have his run it back now available also. A little bit of an adjustment over towards A, though. Two players willing to hold towards A main. Playing in Sadak. Life knows they're there. He's at a really weird spot. It's adjusted well enough, though. Loud going to get the first blood and fall away. No trade available. You want to see Berlin back towards the T side of the map. They are congregating this side. I'm waiting to see if the third player does start shifting away towards maybe top mid, but they're not going for it just yet. Still aware there's a chance this could be a fake. Alt going to come through. And Tui's respecting this enough to really not want to tussle with it. Yeah, conceding the space, there's no real follow through from FPX, but it has drawn a bit of a rotation. It's only QCK over on this side of the map now. Just holding contact towards main. Potentially going to spot this out. Yes, he will. Finds, actually, a headshot. Oof. We'll slow things down on the way in as the spike makes its way over. Yeah, loud. Very well equipped on both sides here. Blocking fire. Could be a plan, though. I don't think Loud can really, yeah, really deny stop that. This, no. They've still got a little bit of a glimpse towards middle when you're keeping in mind Autumn's position, but he will probably... Uh, he either has to go and be proactive or fall back towards B main. We have to wait and see what they opt for. Looking for that deep smoke towards main. This should start off the retake. Alt invested from QCK. Spots the player, takes him down. Can't get the follow-up in the alt, but... Except the x in the kills. Yeah, they're still holding on here, but Autumn's luck. There's the timing he was looking for, and it's worked so well for them. Less is in a oh, than wanted position here. Hard to close down on the final three. I think he knows it. They're not giving him much. Loved that late play coming out from Autumn. I was wondering when he was going to enact that plan, and it was just perfectly timed. Loud have to accept this round's a loss, and FPX going to tie up the scoreline. Beautiful fight back as well. A numbers advantage for Loud in the retake. See immediately QCK finds out. I mean, if he does get that kill, maybe a different story, but Berlin looking, Berlin looking very clean here. Shut down both the ultimate and QCK on the reaggress. Great conversion from FPX. Closer and closer to that Hunter's Fury. Do have the reckoning available here. Now on the other side, a lesser purchase, so. Guardian and a stinger. Things will kick off here into round five. I'm curious of uh, on, on some of these lesser purchases, just how proactive Loud are looking to be and make use of this combo. Right. FPX seems as if I guess the first few rounds are a big indicator of how Loud want to play in there. Looking a lot more cautious. I'm still struggling to find an opener over on this side of the map. Here. You can see straight away, FPX is just waiting to read something. Yeah, a bit of a test of their default coming into this. Damage on Sadak seemingly enough to draw their eyes back towards LA site. I don't think they'd noted Tui's. No. But again, Tui's does just have the Sheriff, but a couple good shots could help. But I like this heads up work from them. Aldrone is on the way. He's going to have to relinquish this space as well. So very, very diligent. Up against what is, you know, a little bit of a half purchase here. Alt going to come in as well. So very much going through the motions of what they're trying to do, keeping it very clean. 
At least until this point, but you don't want to run too low on time now. 30 seconds left now, conceding sight. They have to comfortably find right there. themselves a post plant right here. And really, you want Cowan Zing QCK to be the ones to lead the charge here. They're the furthest away from this retake. Going up. A little bit of time will pass. Let's see what they can do with this one. Anyway, they can create a little bit of a fuss here, Loud. FPX digging their heels in, though. It's going to be go time right about now. Autumn good for one, but the trade does come out towards Berlin. Arch still holding back this flood from CT, not really finding the value until then. Two, he's in Kalantine, drawing blood and a swing to the site. Life's now pretty questioning what the hell's going on. No idea about two, he's, but a fantastic clutch from him in the end. Keeps the composure, keeps his cool, and keeps FPX now in the lead. So he was struggling to find an open up. Closing, not so much of an issue. No. Beautiful clean up from life after loud. Look as if they're about to sweep their way back onto site here. Beautifully done. Left to just be a new sincere on the flank. One enemy remaining. Fantastic stuff from him. To give FPX the lead here. Now we'll come back on a purchase. Some ultimates starting to come online here, but Hunter's Fury in a tour de force. FBX looking to pace change a little bit. Uh, they're, they, they're rewarded for it. They've completely caught off loud with that pace shift. That gear switch up. Oh, and the follow up as well. FPX with the excellent read. The additional body was Sadak. They may not know about this, but even then, how much can one man do? Not clean enough. He's in trouble now. And Autumn going to back away, get himself healed back up to fighting force. And look on the other side, still keeping some grip on this. But QCK clears the back lines. I don't know if they noted the spike. I think that's around the corner. But still a little bit of a blow for blow here. Ultimate in hand now for QCK. But FPX with the right read once again to switch things up. Knowing Loud are posting up pretty deep. Outside A lobby, catching them off guard here at the start of this round. Fortunately losing out on the other side of the map. Life's in a position to cut off this rotation here. Oh, oh. timing. I mean, if they keep... No the problem is, yeah, Sadak's hit. walking this way as well. Has he just got the god read on the timing? Sadak, uh, with with a second opportunity yeah. at this, right? Left. You think about that timing, he was almost... They didn't really expect him towards that A-link side. Uh, this could but be disastrous here. The timing's everything. It, this time he's got the job done. Takes down life and leaves the last two. It's so indicative that they're going towards A now. With only 14 seconds, they have to commit. They've got to get that spike down. And everyone's here, but Autumn going to keep the plant safe for a second. Sadak finally draws in closer. Lysor can't do it. Loud. Getting proactive there, even after losing those first two players towards A. They still push that B main side. Another situation, just a half second either way. Would have sniffed out this flank coming through from Loud. Yeah, well played from Sadak here, not getting too greedy, no overcommit. He does find that kill onto life. Like I said, the flash catching both of them. You see, obviously, Berlin just off screen. But it's unfortunate because FBX, I, I think, read this perfectly with what Loud are trying yes. to achieve early round outside eight. Look to shut it down here and, and send a message, make a response. See how that's going to change things going forwards, actually. Looking as if it is a deeper hold this time around, but maybe a set up here around the fault line. Yeah, potentially going to play in QCK off this. Big information, but he's not alone. So close by. Yeah, still didn't get affected by the flash. Slows down the roll. They're very close by, and he wants in. Two quick kills, but it's going to open up a chance. They're going to know there's two more players here. They've seen that utility. They've got to know they're on short. Life going to try and slip a little further ahead, and now here comes the problems. This should be shooting fish in a barrel, but Life still good on value. Still going to find one. Look at the damage. That's rough. Double swing, and the spray is good from Sadak. Commits to it too. He's close enough that there is no escape. Right here. This is a very hard 1v3 with very little space gained around the map beyond this corner. Two he spots now. Paranoia will land. <laughs> a ton of utility to deal with here. Zadak will find the wall bank. And a message sent in response by Loud that we if are still happy to fight for this. Yeah. It's nice to see the adjustment too. Yeah, it's a absolutely. Different look yeah. From the previous round as well. Unfortunately, Autumn not catching really with that flash. 
Cowan's even knows how life did actually get that kill. Want to Cowan's in that. The FBX to pump the brakes first. Mm. Call a timeout. Loud looking a little more fluid, a little more reactive today. And that's that's kind of what we're looking at is what form allowed in. I think we've seen the highs and lows. And what? the question is how much can FPX push that? Can they continue getting in their face? That three round streak, they had a great read. They were playing very well. A couple of individuals stepping up. Autumn and Life with some fantastic moments for themselves. But as a collective now, you could already see Loud have adjusted, right? We just already noted, we kind of talked about it a little bit. That adjustment on A, it went from one player, I think it was just two he's holding it, to now three in two different variations. So what does FBX have as a read on that here? This is time to maybe mull that over. Sure, and I think obviously where FBX's uh, composition does excel is where they can get themselves towards a site. So you know what Berlin's utility can do to cut off. We've even seen the awareness from Tui's as well to play a couple of spots early on to, I guess, try and negate that as best as possible, get some information over the top of that. That wall coming through onto a site. But yeah, curious. Uh, FPX early round haven't really. I mean, one round where they lose out on B side, but it's it's been this pretty tame default we've seen time and time again. And now we're at round eight, so it's uh, there's a couple of question marks elsewhere. Do you start exploring mid now? It needs to be pretty well coordinated and invested. You want to do that this late in the game? This late in the half, I should say. Still options here. Hunter's Fury. And to run it back for FBX, and it might just be, yeah, exploration towards mid, as anticipated. You can see the protocols already hitting into place. Tui's going to shut the door. But it looks like a top mid burst, but already quite a deep hold from Sadak, so probably won't get fully affected by this flash. No, dips away on the corner. Should play in Tui's now. You noted that paranoia coming through. Caught a couple of them. Going to draw in less as well. This three-man kind of pressure towards middle. Not rewarding, but maybe looking at the extremities to find that pick. The problem being now, Lysol will be called upon. QCK and Kalanzine posted up pretty deep here, but they're going to hold their position. Come on, let's go. Oh, they're trying to make a scramble. Oh, the spam. What is going to obviously keep going, but... Again, it's, it's well controlled ass. by Loud. They've held on nicely to this point. A little bit of danger going to be coming in. Sadak has connected towards life. First did go towards Berlin, finding Tui's, but that was on the other side of the map. Less valuable towards this A hit, but it now falls to less. Do they check this? Does he get played in so perfectly? And again, oh, wait, oh they must God. have seen him. He saw him, yeah. Autumn turned. And now it's uncomfortable. Oh, it's so good from Less. Punishing Lysor as he tried to bail them out. And then drifting back towards B, a correct read from Loud to get back to the side. And FPX trying to scramble again. 15 seconds, the cross being watched. And Les is just looking so on the money here. He does get denied though. QCK, Kalanzi nearby. Oh my god, but time! Six seconds. Does he know how close by Sadak is? No. And heartbreak at the end there, because FPX almost thriving in that chaos. But Loud controlling it in the end and keeping that three in a row going. Beautiful damage control from Sadak early on and Tui's as well to really shut down this mid push. Comes out as a curveball, I think, early on. The information gathered nonetheless. Yeah, FPX switching things up just when you expect them to. Problem being, they don't have the benefit of the economy to fall back on now. Couple of ultimates, yes, but. Right, loud with those three rounds in succession. I feel like they are in some control, but life still chomping at the bit to find an opener. And rewarded oh, this time come around. On. Let's go in walkabouts as well. And around like this, a misread potentially. You've given so much opportunity to FPX. Double stack towards top middle. I'll make it three. Just kind of roaming the map, and they're oh, reading God. this as a B take correctly. So the utility not so subtle on the way, but can FPX continue along this trajectory? Berlin with a rifle. Still in hand. Ayang still has one as well. So there is a little bit of threat to this. And the Viper's pit on top. The pit definitely causes some problems for Loud here. Need to step the pace up a little bit. Find a kill ideally here, but FPX is going to tuck themselves back in towards main. Not risk anything. They've got to get a move on. they got to get going. This Viper's pit's not going to keep going anywhere. They're going to be sitting on this one. And actually, maybe 
feels over the top to use it there in very good control here. Berlin's position is excellent. Gonna punish the barrel that just showed through. One Gonna put himself remaining. on the line pretty much just to make sure no one's trying to go for that defuse. And FPX lap up the opportunities that are left for them. Loud with a mistake there in my mind. Giving away two openers here. And FPX pounce on the opportunity. Yeah, I'm with you. Hunter's Fury, maybe not necessary, but to convert a round like this after three him. unanswered, absolutely. Get themselves way, back in the game. So a big boom in terms of the funds as well. Look at that coming out of a, a purchase like that. Most players sitting around, what, 2,300 and above are in Lysort. Yeah, uncharacteristic of Loud. Less. We'll do the same thing again with the security of his wall, but just can't TP away in time. Now noting a second here. Fox and noting a difference down. in the setup, because it's, it's typically Ultimate Life over towards A side, being the ones to push and prod and try and find an opener. This is the telltale signs of a B hit. More contact made. Careful now. UCK is going to show his hand a little. Stalling out towards B main, but there hasn't been any utility from SP FPX committed towards the site, particularly more individual no, from Autumn. This doesn't yeah. feel like a sight hit yet, and it's not moving loud. Other than it being these two on this side of the map. Now they're probably happy after the previous round to sit back and, and look to respond as opposed to be decisive. And they haven't noted two with that operator either. No. That's been quietly waiting over towards eight. They're still going to have to use a fair bit of utility to clear close, which they're doing now, so this should be ringing the alarm bells that loud might know this could be APs, but look at that top mid timing, Berlin yeah. and Autumn. This could be exceptional, but it's a one for one. It's still valuable enough that it's pinned in Good loud. They're in it. trouble here. So now they need to win out on the site, though. There's still a fight to be had. 20 seconds, all eyes turning towards Autumn, allowing safe passage, but Tui's takes him down. 15 seconds, they don't know about Salak until now, and what a horrible surprise it was. And he's just spraying <laughs> a brain, and it works. He had a smile on his face before the round ended there. A bow and arrow is old well handled by Loud. Old ways like best. I said, after the opener, happy to sit back and without having, I guess, the tangibles, the information they they've learned so far in this half, <laughs> making the numbers work. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the little smile at the end. That's rough for FPX. I feel like they're starting to get some of the rhythm. Right, they're getting some of those reads. They're starting to try and pull the attention, pull those fakes. But Louder, a very tricky opponent to do that to. But Life has been very good at some of these entries, some of these openings. But look how deep Louder's sitting now. What a, another adjustment coming out. I'll clear through a little bit pacier this time around. Mm. Maybe on the back of Autumn's ultimate. Yeah, we'll pop this. Clear a little bit of space. Don't expect anybody from Loud to really be challenging towards this drone. Or the running back, but oh. ease. That's it from the top of the box here. Finds a kill. And the paranoia's. Good enough. Made sure he was being kept safe. Toying with expe expectation on the TP. But this is a plant. So for the first time in a while, yes, they lost out on Berlin, but they do get themselves a plant. They do get the time on their side. But can they hold this? Couple of ults here. Nothing critical, but a lot of utility still with Loud. That's the issue. Sight looks rather clear. You're going to see them try and flop this now. Cowanzine cracks it open. Counter swing from life. Oh, but Cowanzine popping off here. This is a problem. That's halfway. And the defuse isn't stopping. There's nothing to be done about it. Out stretching their legs a little bit here as we approach round 12. A pace change from FBX. Life previously the hero in this sort of situation on the post plant, but not this time around. Oh, too easy to even see anything. Had no confirmation on the other side of this. Beautiful adjustment from Cowan Zine to find the trade with the operator there. Purchase will struggle a little bit for FPX coming in, but a judge in the hands of life, it's all the force available. Expected to round things out for Lysor, at a very quiet half, one and 10. So it might be rinse yeah. and repeat here, but I, I'm pretty sure the camera connected to everyone. Yeah, and County trying to be the one to capitalize on that, but didn't quite have it in time. You're gonna see the sort of force out for life as well. So a bit of a rough battle there for Cowanzine, who's gonna try and drift away. 
And they're expecting pressure towards top middle, potentially. They're unsure of if this is a fully committed A piece, but it is. Five players on this side of the map, and a very similar look to that last round. Same kit, same utility, yeah. but eyes towards Sadak. Is he going for that late fact-finding mission? He wants information. He knows where they're coming from. That's going to be relayed to Tui's. But can Sadak hold the line as well? Can he be a problem? He's going to dip away, and actually the right read here. Right call from Sadak. Why hit it now? He can take his time. There's still no rotation from QCK. The Kalzine gets a kill here. Does have the Rolling Thunder, which will open up the retake for Loud. Not really going to slow things down yet, yeah, potentially try and get him a kill. Trying to play him in. Oh, too Shut many down. targets. Really nicely handled from FPX. There is a trade for Tui's. And now we look at this fully fledged retake. Gorgeous from life. Holds him away. Needs some more QCK, though, coming online here. And you still got less playing towards CT side. Almost One caught Berlin remaining. in the heels, but it's like Yang to go down and Loud. Breaking FPX hearts there. That was a really good attempt, but it just wasn't enough. Difficult for them to really find repeatable success here. On this A side post plant. A couple of times it's been shut down. Like I said, life previously, the hero with that 4K. Loud, a course correction. They find themselves an 8 4 advantage here in the first half. Yeah, big turn of events, loud. Putting themselves up to eight gives them so much more leverage. A little worry early on, I'm sure, with those three rounds connected. However, let's hear from Loud themselves. Let's hear from Tuis. Oi, eu sou Tuis e sou jogador da Loud. Acho que pecamos muito no primeiro mapa, que custou muitos rounds. Eu acho que a gente estava uh, indo muito bem nos treinos. Acho que a gente se adaptou bem com as coisas que a gente tinha e ele encaixou bem. Só que infelizmente a gente não conseguiu mostrar nosso jogo, nosso verdadeiro jogo, essa série. Acho que com certeza, tipo, pra mim a derrota é sempre boa também, por... porque mostra pontos fracos seus, então pra mim todas as derrotas eu vou ver como aprendizado. A gente vai ver os pontos que erramos, ver como a gente pode contornar essa situação. Approach. This is now going to get scary, right? There's the Hunter's Fury, going to be drawn out from the tap of the spike. Spray from Tui's is good. Follow up is better. They're holding on to this. Munch kick going down and Tui's. Exceptional work there. Uma derrota é sempre importante para mostrar nossos erros e ver como a gente pode contornar a situação. Então, vocês podem esperar que terá uma loja muito melhor e muito mais constante para o próximo game. looking for more consistency, looking to be the loud that we know they can be. A lot of doubts coming into this, a lot of question marks. But now at an 8-4, at least in this first half, Mike, they're doing quite fine. I, I don't think we can oversell it because there was some fight back from FPX, but yeah, absolutely. Still, they'll be comfortable with eight. Like I said previously, allowed, I mean, both loud and FPX, no strangers to elimination games, no strangers to losses on the international stage, but uh, it's good to hear that, that's kind of characterized as, yeah, we know we made mistakes yeah. here. And, yeah. um, like I said, obviously, the, the follow-up uh, series from Gen G does give a little more additional context to that. You, oh, absolutely. You feel a little better about yes. Loud's uh, loss in that series, but Good. But, uh, back today, we're, we're, we're looking for a lot of those, a lot of the sloppiness that you don't expect from Loud to be cleaned up. And yeah. whether or not you can attribute that to, uh, I mean, earlier on the interview, saying that, you know, there's jet lag and stuff. And, hey, uh, it happens. It does. But uh, at this point, you've got to also look at FPX when Carmine Core hit a 2 0 on them. I think a lot of people had exceptionally high expectations when it came to Carmine Core. So seeing that, it, it wasn't a, a huge shock, but I want to see more depth to FPX. I want to see more from some of these players who I, you can see the mechanical capability there by a country mile. There's some of them incredibly talented. So let's see if that can be brought together at the right time here, potentially get them. A first international win, as the desk was talking about, is is a brutal one when you're facing the likes of Carmichael uh, uh, yeah, and then Loud. And it's, yeah, it's awful as well. The longer that goes on, the more elusive that it win does feel. It feels impossible, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like I said, you, I mean, you got a tough draw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one's going to doubt loud. that. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely tough. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay, the recon this actually communication? did. Yeah. But maybe there was a little off there. Should be planned who's going to deal with the dart if life's going forwards like that. It's Looking not. to potentially re-aggress, though, yeah, behind I mean, the wall. I mean, Kalenzin's <laughs> eyeing this up. I'd... It's almost a game of chicken. Who dares to go first? But you can already see how proactive FPX are being on the rest of the map. Oh, okay. come on. QCK, quick as hell. Autumn. 
just left to rot. Now, the one, I guess, more benefit outside of this, you've already got a clear in mid, you've already got Berlin checking on that. There is no late lurk up middle, there is no presence there. Maybe that could help him out in the end, but life desperate to do something, trying to find some impact this round. But loud with three and potentially a plant have the numbers. But nice draw could be bad. There's a little window of chance. Nope, it's shut. Less still diligent. Gonna make sure that's checked on. And and now yeah. with the lack of presence from Berlin, they're gonna be looking yeah, for that flag. Yeah, definitely. It's Two, too long. Two is look curious to start off with. Now obviously retreating back towards elbow. Yeah. yeah. Not, nothing really for Berlin to do here. And find it. Blind Way in. And <laughs> two is blind through the wall. We'll find it. Okay, clean. No more. Yeah, so again, it felt like a miscommunication at the start of that round there, Mike. Maybe, hey, maybe there was something in mind that just didn't work out, but... Maybe had an awkward bounce at the yeah. end of it. We didn't see, but... Um, it makes you question, Mark, it when that's happening early. Yeah, definitely. Because that, that was kind of the pinnacle of FPX's game plan in the first half, is to put life and autumn in a position mm. to really deliver at the start of a round. Sorry, bro. Oh, what is that? What is that? That is actual filth. <laughs> See you from both perspectives. Thank you. Replay yeah, production. What, what Whoever it was yeah, observers. There's nothing to, to be done. There's nothing. There is no winning that. Oh, I've heard it was actually all Kevin. So anyone else involved? Not on you. Thanks, producer Kevin. Um, early look. No reward for it though. And I've got to say, I'm I'm out of the if I'm talking about kind of you know silver linings here, have been enjoying watching life. I mean that previous series against KC. It, it put him, you know, a little on the radar. You're like, okay, maybe there's some more value to that later on. Maybe he's got, you know, something cooked up here. But I, I want to see if he continues on this trajectory throughout the rest of this series. See, early on, loud, a decent read on the situation. FPX are rotating, but a little further behind this. There will be a free plant. Uncontested for the time being, and an opportunity for potentially less to farm up here, but... He's only got the Sheriff, though. Yeah. Which is a little tricky. Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. I want to see more of life. The problem is that will be... Surely everyone turning attention. I think there's still a consideration that maybe there's going to be a late presence towards CT, but we know it. They don't. A little bit of a nuisance here for FPX. They're going to have to try and close that gap. And Sadak... Yeah, there, there's, there's them putting the foot down. Not going to let much more play happen. That is Sadak having none of what they're trying to sell. Did lose two in the process. But rounds around, that's double digits. And we need to see FPX get back on the board here, Mike. It's yeah, been a drought. Need, need to see a response here in the buy round to shut down this early momentum. Because, I mean, look at the rolling thunder. Look at the Hunter's Fury for oh, loud. close. Yeah. See a timeout called ahead of this. No surprises, really, because this is very pivotal in terms of FPX's potential to work their way back into this half. Salak's reaction's just so good. So good, he's just a happy chappy. Um, yeah, I, I think, I'm glad you noted it as well. I think we all note now, looking especially at the timeline when we get a glimpse in game again, how much of a string of rounds it is because there was that one back, but outside of that, this has been a run for Loud. This has been them turning after those three in a row that FPX were able to yeah, go like on I early. Said, I mean, early on, early on in the half, we, yep. we credited FPX for having a good read on the situation and, um, mm. Like I said, reading exactly what Loud wanted to do in terms of preventing FBX from taking that space. Yeah. Happy to take the fight to them, but uh, I mean, after that, it's it's when kind of Loud sink their teeth in a little bit, get a grasp on what's going on. And unfortunately here, uh, I mean, with the scoreline coming out of the first half, there's, there's few opportunities after losing the pistol, losing round two that um, FBX are going to really have here. So whether or not them getting proactive once again mm. feels extremely uneasy to justify doing so when you have such a pivotal round yeah. to get on the board here. And also, it did, with how kind of linear it was around life and autumn, I, I think Loud are, are kind of reading into massively what's going on around the map by who they see. You oh, see in the previous yeah. ad, the immediate responses to, to disengage. Do we get a ball at the start? Uh, I said there might have been a brawl, there wasn't. It was just a straight up execution. Berlin finding County, and I assume through the wall just spam, but QCK closing the gap here. But I don't think he expects the additional player, no. Lysol was a surprise they didn't expect. Autumn holding towards top middle. This is good from FPX. Oh, God, maybe not. Let's is still alive. That's two. He needs three more. 
And there's two, yeah, not gonna happen. Good work from life there. I get nervous sometimes, even with less, especially. But life keeps them where they're at. FPX keep three alive. And that was a critical round, Mike. That was everything yeah, they needed. Definitely. And they went for a challenge on B as well. Yeah, the confidence still there. They're happy yeah. to post up and prevent Loud from walking around the map. That's always a threat. Unfortunately, 1v5 with life flanking through. Not really going to happen. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, I mean, the ultimates are still here, so a previous round, Loud still carrying on to some of that inventory from the round two win. And Autumn's got his, though, so I want to see if they, they, they dare to invest it, right? Do they get a little bit more creative now? That one break, that one little bit of respite, that one round, does it spur them on? Not quite in the early round, and in a, a very early exploration from Cowanzine to take a glance towards middle. Already clearing through tiles and looking towards top middle. It was less last time. We got the punish on this. Really trying to give away a great deal, trying to show a lot. I mean, effectively drawn three sets of eyes here, but FX very quickly dip away and try and close the door on A site. Give Autumn a little bit of security here. But Loud have created an opening. They're going to have themselves a 4v2 onto B site. And life is here, though. If life is on the site, and they're going to note that. They're going to know he is over towards this side, close enough by. Alt's going to be invested, going to force away Lysor. Should allow for safe passage towards the site. Life's been caught. Life's dead. Burns alive. Left Beautiful awareness. in a crisp. Just that one piece of utility noted, seen early, relayed through, was telling enough. Heads up work from Lau, but can the four players pull off a retake here? You've got the ult on Autumn that could be key. QCK, though, still proactive towards that CT side. Still being a thorn in the side. Good flash, couldn't quite get the kill. Autumn now takes a step towards the site. That's the ult now going to be removed. And the smoke's going to be put into place. Problem being, though, Sadak, he's got the recoil. He's got a couple of shock darts as well. So it's going to be difficult for FBX to try and stick this here. The Cove has to find some value. Does he get them the half? One enemy. It doesn't. Ah, that might be it. Yep, I think Iang even knows that as well. Going to back away on this one, Loud. Look in control, even in that post plan that could have been dangerous, could have been deadly. But again, that read on the positioning, the noting of the player, they absolutely had life dead to rights. Absolutely. Beautifully done. The hot hands go inside the, uh, the yeah, smoke here. Force your life just left to cook. And not in a good way. No, My ultimate's ready. Yeah, back in a similar situation now. Uh, I mean, not much left in the bank behind this purchase. Life one away from the Tour de Force, but have to get that online here to make use of it in round 17. Pretty much everything else invested here. Need to see this duo cleaner though, Life and Autumn. Yeah, this time, Dart dealt with no problems with that. But I mean, that that's the... That's a big indicator to yes. Lau, because they know what happened the first time around. They died in there. I think they agree with you. They're drifting right back towards B. These setups being sniffed out very easily by Loud. Put them firmly in the driving seat, but not as decisive this time around. No, still aware. Wait, yeah, Maybe wait. that push up. Or, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. There was a couple of positions they, they lent upon before, and you can see it looks like FPX are trying to read this as a mid-piece, but that's not the case at all. Maybe just going to allow for the plant to come in and play for the full retake here. QCK going to try and take as much space as possible. Not going to know anyone might have seen something on yeah, CT. So that's going to be Elise Ayang noted. Sanak has found Berlin. That was over towards Market. Maybe just a spam through the smoke, but a likely position nonetheless. Going to leave Cowanzi on the site. Good clear from Lysor. First step, they've cleared the site itself, but that deeper hold. Problem being now, Sadak can drift deeper and deeper on this with the Hunter's Fury. Less still with two snake bites as well, so asking another difficult defuse to come Ooh. through here, but Lysor found one blind. That's enough, though. Pulls the trigger. They've got to be careful on this for two. He's in Sadak there. It is in unison. Careful now. Fine margins. But fine work from Loud, holding on to this one again, showing that composure in these key rounds. And Lysor having to back away. FPX, they haven't got a grip on Loud here. No, it's difficult really to break apart some of these post plants in B main, but the lack of map control Man, elsewhere, what? limited options for FPX. Almost when you want to see Life and Autumn really taking advantage of a lack yes. of presence shown by Loud over on the A side of the map. 
maybe not feeling comfortable enough to justify that in a full 5v5, but tough to see here. Seven round deficit. Yeah. A couple of rifles here, well, three rifles to come through here and some key ultimates. One away from the pit as well for Lysor. Uh, you heard it. QCK willing to fight on this. Sprays and gets Autumn. Berlin down to 29 as well. It's rough. That's really rough. Right here. They're trying to stay close on this. Maybe trying to play in Lysor potentially? Maybe trying to bait him in, yeah, but... You almost don't want him in that situation with the pit as well. Well, one away from the pit. Looks like Loud won't continue to push through. He's going to try and set something in motion for two E's. In these early fights, there's plenty of time for them to still explore the map, right? They haven't really got a glimpse towards eight. You do have a deeper hold, though. Les has been holding that. So if anyone does right go here. for very, very long rotation routes, deep fact finding, he might be rewarded. But timing's everything. Does Lysol get this? Oh, God. They've walled him in here. Give him a little cubby to play out of. Well, maybe. It's enough to stall. They're banking on this, but the barrel. Oh, it's a downfall, and Les opens the gates towards a life. Got a pit as well here. Oh God, they that cut cuts off everything off here outside Link. Berlin just got caught as well. This could be it. The yeah. downfall of FPX on this map, thinking they had a little bit of an opportunity there. And it comes crumbling down in front of Les, looking to close, and he does. Thirteen to five. It's clean work for Loud. They are looking very sharp here. Very decisive performance here. Bouncing back from some question marks in our opening series for sure. Definitely looking like they've they've tightened things up, cleaned things up a little bit here. Fortunate for FBX to really have to now bounce back from that elimination series. Yeah, this one hasn't been what FBX would have wanted. That's only map one. We only get one night like this. <laughs>
Hey, what's up guys? I've got HTK here along with Arthur to help with some translation and we'll pull him in for a quick interview. interview. Now, um, Tuiz mentioned earlier about how it's been a very exhausting schedule for the team. What do you as a coach tell them in order to get their energy up, especially for such an important match like this? I think that's really good for us, this tournament for our development, you know? So, I think that I say to them that like, uh, you have a great opportunity here, so let's make our better. So, if we lose, we need to go home, so we want to stay here in Madrid. Nothing to lose and uh, all of Madrid to keep you motivated, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see if uh, Loud can close this out. Well, they're certainly looking quite good if that's going to be the case here. 13-5 conclusion here for the Brazilian super team. And Mimi, uh, it was just impressive at the beginning of it just to see the way that Loud really approaches methodically and really just shut down FPS. Yeah, on their defense side, they were getting a main control pretty much every round with this breach. That line control is just so powerful to fight for that space. And in the late rounds, they were absolutely dominating on their retakes as well, Mitch. To me, this game felt like so much of it came down to that agent drop and having that breach for the extremity control on both sides, FPX on, on both sides of the map really was never able, it felt, to get that space. I think that's fair to say. You know, looking at even then swapping to an attack side for Loud, you saw them deny life's early aggression with constant flashes. He couldn't post and hold angles and find the value that we'd seen before. Couldn't get as aggressive as in the past because every time he tried to take map control in the first couple seconds, there is a flash. He is forced back and again set into these deeper plays where Loud have constantly been able to take advantage of the space taken. Yeah, Loud showed why this comp actually does have a lot of depth, even if it looks weird in the agent select. They were 9-1 to one in gun rounds in this one. Absolutely dominant. And as we look at the same lab shooter, I mean, Sadak, I, I don't even know if he needs to warm up more. The guy, the guy was doing great map one with the calls. You know, I, as, as an elder statesman myself, I just like to see what the what the big brain Sadak likes to do, so that this way I can learn a little bit for these aim lab shooter rounds. But in any case, though, yeah, you're not wrong, man. The, the I really just feel like Sadak, this entire team, they're just playing at a comfortable level right now, Mitch. It's quite scary, and FPX are going to need to turn this around. Yeah, we can talk about pistols as well being coin tosses, but Loud still came out winning both of them as well, which just puts another nail in the coffin for the side of FPX. I think there's not a lot that they can look at in that last map, but with positives, yeah. at least it was over quickly. And really, that's the question now. Moving on to the next is can they, can they make that recovery? Of course, of course, we'll see. But let's actually uh, jump over to hear what FPX's Nathan has to say heading into map two. Hey guys, Mika Fabs here, and now I'm with Nathan D and Luna to help with some translation. Now, um, Coach, uh, we did see that FPX, of course, struggled a little bit. Is the team more confident now that we're going into Breeze, which is your map pick? What's the game plan? 其实刚才看到有一点点的小挣扎吧，但是在第二张图就将进入到我们的选图微风岛屿。你们的计划是什么？啊，我觉得来到我们自己的选图上，我们应该会打得比较从容，比较自信一点。图一输掉就输掉了，我们不会去管图一到底发生了什么，我们就专注到图二，打出我们自己想打的东西就 OK 了。I think we in calm the map too. It's our pick, so we're definitely gonna be more confident. We're gonna forget what happened on the map one and play our own thing. All right, let's see if FPX make a comeback like a phoenix on map number two. 
Yeah, that is, that's going to be the thing that they need to do here. They need to find that next gear, Mitch. How do they get back into this one with a loud team that really just looks like they are poised to move forward? Okay, well, let's give, let's give you a little bit of hope, right? The next map up is Breeze. Give some okay. hopium. This is somewhere that they've actually looked pretty good. EDG were pushed all the way to a 14-12 in overtime up against this squad regionally in the finals of kickoff in China. That gives me some hope that we're not going to see this same deflated team. Also, quick series, easiest ones to recover. Mm -hmm. They're going to be backstage thinking, we didn't even play that map. Nothing happened, nothing went right. The next one though, like I said, is comfort. Now, the one thing I will say is in that series where they got it real close versus EDG regionally, Berlin had 26 kills, Autumn had 24. They were fragging out. They're going to need to fire off today. And we did see some moments in the first half from FPX, from those individuals, but it definitely tapered off towards the latter end. Breeze is the upset map in the pool. It is the map where if you have some incredible individuals, if you're having a good game, you can upset literally anyone. The, the difference between top and bottom teams on this map, very slim. The variance, very high. This is a great opportunity for FPX to come back, especially with a very disruptive comp like this. Playing with that Yoru, playing with the Jet on their attack side, those double dive executes are super strong and on defense honestly they'll show some pretty good retakes with the flash silver dark combos with the astra smokes and those pulls to help get back in as well and one other thing to note, Tui's moving over to the Viper. Last time we saw that, he hasn't played a lot of it historically, but he played it here at this event. I think he walked out with 26 kills himself. He was looking unbelievable, and I don't expect him to do any less than that here. It's going to be a tall order for FPX, and also Mitch has got another less reference in there. I hate the man. Let's send it back over to your commentators <laughs> for this one, Pansy and Hypox, so that they can ridicule him appropriately. Oh, I don't know. I, I can't. We're, we're in a good mood today. Yeah, you we're guys are cheerful. throwing us some negativity over here. Like, don't come over here, GB. It's looking some I'm wrestling things about the guy. Other side of the fence. Other side of the fence. Yeah, you keep, you keep over there, all right? You be nice to Mitch. He's, yeah, he's sensitive. He's a sensitive boy. Um, oh, this, this map, this game is worrying me, Mike, because uh, I, I wasn't in that Yeah, I mean, cause, yeah, because Loud just hit the Uno reverse with, with Breeze, <laughs> yeah. basically. And Pretty like, much. Yeah, we'll we'll bust out like the most boring run-of-the-mill comp and look really proficient on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rely Reasonable. on the fundamentals, people basically just walking around fighting. But basically, a deathmatch lobby is what it felt like last time, and Loud excelled at that. Yeah. Why would you entertain that concept? I mean, don't get me wrong, Autumn and Life are very good, but they're going to need to do a lot more than that here. Let's see what they got. Loud on the attack, of course. FPX on the defending side, and already it's looking like last map. At least the start is. Autumn, you got something for us? Okay. Good connection towards QCK. Can't deal with Kaunzin, though. And again, I'm waiting for that plant. I don't think anything's going to stop it. No, that flank gets called off from Lysort. Ayang did find a connection. So down to three Static. now. And yeah, look at the HP. Maybe Sadak's just going to leave himself as. A body on the site here, forced to swing and does go down. Game back on here. Two v two. Oh, that was a maybe a little individual from Ayang there. But I saw what have you got for us? Not a uh, defuse. Yeah, upgrade to a ghost, but we'll dig both loud players out of this position. Not going to be very easy. And the worst two to be left in the post plant against. Yep. Really, very difficult. Where they can buy time, free information. I saw desperate to try and get something. You can't blame the man for trying, but yeah, Loud not going to let this one slip. Again, didn't really see Loud rely too much on, on sight hits and, and full on executions previously versus Gen G. No. Pissed around if it is any sort of indicator. For an adjustment in their approach here. But yeah, really looking towards life and autumn to be uh, very self sufficient as well in these roles both the Yoru and the Jet. To pull a fight here on Breeze, obviously not going to see it necessarily in round two. No. Going to see any sort of investment coming through. So it will just be classics. Three rifles on the board, though. And a Bulldog in the hand of Cow and Zine. But, you know, same old. Same old when we talk about it. If you're loud, you want to be very clean in this. You want to maybe try and opt to build ults in the right direction. Your FBX, you want a little bit of mayhem. And um, they didn't get what they wanted. Attempted a pop flash and a swing off the back, but loud, nicely spaced, handling it well. Not going to fall foul to that. You've already got a player right up tube, so that's going to be a problem. If he even comes to it, you can see County just standing there, wants to fight on it. And yeah, less claiming Lysor. So unable to make too much of that first foray there in towards a shop, towards a main. 
And that's uh, about all she wrote, at least for the first two. Now we see the buy-in, though. This is potentially where FPS can set their own turn, or, or tone, should I say, to this, because Here. first map, they did do Here. quite well initially. It was the uh, ability that they you couldn't adapt beyond that, though. Yeah, for sure. And I think the problem lies, obviously, on the previous map that you could see FPX wanting to be proactive. There, there mm. just isn't enough tools, really, within that composition to, to you know, set life and autumn awesome in motion. Here, we have two way more self-sufficient duelists. Obviously, only really the Sova utility Ooh. to set them up. But Autumn going to open things up here onto QCK. Now, not letting off gas, though. Now, that's what you like to see, but there's a lot of players here. Life going to get the follow-up contact, going to smoke it off, but Kaunzine going to get that pick, I believe, over from Main. Yeah, and he's still going for it as well. That's not bad from Autumn. Right place, right time for him. That's the spike noted, and another player followed up. He's starting to heat up. Two already in this round, potentially a third. No, Sadak. Now does him with the Bulldog, so the plant looking like it's back on the cards. Ayang has a lot of utility to bring into this, though. Playing in from CT, he does have that split through mid with Lysol, so they could potentially really isolate some of these players. Buckley got away, but there it is. caught on the retreat. Exactly. Just Sadak left now. Rechallenge. I saw will punish. FX answered back with two huge kills here from Autumn. Slow it's things down. The open onto QC take take a little bit of bite out of that execute, that split through mid. Mm. I'm not even sure if that was ahead of any intended that count C. Okay. <laughs> That's unreasonable. And Lysol's timing on this was great. And you were able to snap back to Sadak at the end. But keep in mind, that was a bonus. Certainly not a fleshed out purchase. No, missing in areas. Drew blood as well. So, you know, if we're, talk if we're talking in this game, great for FPX. If we're talking if it's anyone else, you're looking at, okay, there was still a lot of casualties yeah. in that. There's still going to be suffering in the economy. You're already looking at life down to the Guardian there. So, again, there are some. Some takeaways that still look quite good for Loud in this, but got to keep our eyes on the main man, Autumn, who was pivotal at starting off the last one. Spotted here. Has to get out of dodge this time. I've spotted one, though. I'm still there, but actually catches Cowan Dean. sticking ahead of the doors there. Nearly loses his life. Yeah, down to 17 HP. Oh. Nearly caught on the retreat as well. They've not had the early success they'd want, right? This is this is quite good from FPX holding Loud a little further away, not getting that mid-access they'd like to maybe try and split in towards that A site. Now, Force close towards Lysor. Forced in towards Life. Kaunzine down low, has a lot of kit to play with, so wants to try and use it to facilitate this play towards Site. Life's in danger here, but he's still finding value. QCK goes down, and he's dodging just about everything. How the hell are they alive here? Ayang as well, finding Sadak. This is much better, thriving in the chaos and still holding full control. That spike didn't make it out of main. Loud being held at the door. And Lysol just ensuring that by playing up a little bit closer. And Berlin becomes the pivotal player, has he? No, it's Sadak, Autumn. She's trying to TP over toward B side. I saw, might be dead here. The pop flash, gonna buy a couple of seconds. And speaking of seconds, they're down to 15. Yeah, Lysor on a platter, they've got to know about Autumn, but he's still firing. Great One work from Autumn, and I am there. That's much better. That's what you want to be seeing from FPX. Really well played, Berlin. Move in after Noting I Noting there the rotation, whether or not Autumn was gonna be the one to cycle back across, but he becomes the hero here on A site. FPX digging their heels in early on here on Breeze, keeping things two apiece. Fortunately, I, I don't even know if the, the Hunter's Fury, I think, caught the first tag, but ready. nothing on the second there. You tried to be As you noted, Lysol able to thrive in the chaos. Cutting through. Still coming back in with some investment here. Kaunzine, a Guardian, yeah. rifle in the hands of two E's. We have the null command, whether or not we do see it this round. So we'll be called upon once again. QCK. Oh my god! Nearly getting the kill. 24 HP left on yeah. Autumn. That was a labored spray, but just pulled it down at the end. Autumn is... I, I'm enjoying watching him on this map much more. I want to see more from him. Lysor going to deal with Kaunzine. Really? Looking at two, he's here to crack open some space, but haven't really been having much of an attempt towards B site yet. It's been relatively untested. 
Maybe Sadak, the one to punish, and he does. That's a problem. That isolates yeah. some of these players. Now, where do they opt to go? But look at the backfill. Look at the timing on. on this. Does Berlin? Look at my saw. Both of them, both yeah. of them. Audacious play, and it worked really well. They've got a good read on this now, but again, Sadak. Did you forget about Sadak? How did they forget about him up there? He was earlier up towards shoot. There was always that potential. He could have drifted back. A yeah, lack of awareness here. I saw punished, obviously down to sub 50 HP regardless. Almost a perfect pinch here between Berlin and Lysor. All the way towards bottom mid. Walter with the last bullet here. Yeah, QCK got to be kicking himself after that. <laughs> Man, nonetheless, Loud able to recover here. With minimal investment, able to get a third round on the board. Very aggressive start. Look at what? that! Look at that shot. He looked blind for the second, but what an absolute ripping start. Taking away Kanzin and Sadak. And this is a way different look to FPX, who weren't as proactive, at least to this extent. In that previous map, this is quite something to witness. QCK less than two, he's left with very little here. Yeah, let's try to catch somebody on the retreat back towards A site. Two's in QCK elsewhere. Also posted on this angle. Crisp on the first here. We'll spot the second, doesn't overcommit. We want to give away an opportunity to allow it here. One enemy remaining. Two's will fall, let's respond. Mid. Well, there's anything less than, yeah, oh, second here. Okay. Suddenly, you know, that, that you know, it's, it's, it's code blue at the start. You know what I mean? You're starting to get a little nervous now. You're like, what's, what's Something going on? Something might be happening, don't move. Literally, don't look at them. They're understanding the process. They've gone, this is up to something. Let's hold for a moment. That spike is within touching distance. He's got to be careful of Berlin, who is, I think, jump spotting, but yeah. not particularly left. deep. He has left the spike up here, so oh, back go. And where do you go for? You know that generally the spike. Berlin had been over towards that B site. Well, Lysol was spotted earlier on, mm. on the pillar, so well, that's still going to be the end goal for him. Lysol just needs to play time on back site here, not give anything yeah, away. But, oh, God. Oh, nearly caught in the open here. But he's got to get the plant. Yeah, that's, that's not. He, he's letting yeah. go too far. A nice attempt, but they are a million miles away. The time will be the factor to tip the scales over. I am. Rather impressed with what I'm seeing from FPX here. Look at that. a little more of a commitment to some of these, or to this open. Yeah, fully blind on the second. But yeah, a little bit of a further commitment here on this early round aggression that we didn't see on the first map. Sunset looks a little laboured. Maybe lack of tools like we already noted. Didn't feel too comfortable. Fully committed to that sort of play style, but again, a breach can get away with it. There's so much freedom here. And an early pit invested, so that's the B site. Looking unapproachable, at least from main. So maybe you're going to have to opt for that play up through middle, which is what Les is trying to test a little bit for now. But progress towards the tube, it's something that has been left somewhat vulnerable. But Autumn slowly coming back around. It's going to be QCK again in the fight in Autumn. Here. Just uh, his his form individually is really starting to heat up. Yeah, I love this from Loud though, spotting him over towards Nest, and setting up this flash, reading that he's going to be the one to pick up the slack at the end of Tube here. Sadak still posted up. Doubt we'll see a regress here. Down to 56 HP, might fancy his chances. Go on, Sadak. Curious, isn't he? Yeah, he's fancying it. Zalak being tested, and it's not just Zalak. Look what's behind him. There's other players trying to follow this pathing. Less waiting towards middle, but you've got Cowanzine here too. It's a pressure point they want to try and explore, and a weapon they want to get into hand. But there's still three players to clear on A, and they can exchange goods, right? They can go, okay, well, you can have Tube, we'll go take main, but there is a player there as well. So a battle on two fronts, not a comfortable one. Live gonna spot two, he's, that was a little sketchy, but he's losing his support system. They found the player in CT, they found the player at the back of site, and now they've got to fight on oh, two no. fronts, and FPX win it out, 13 seconds, it's a scramble. I Berlin goes exactly down, but Life's position could still be devastating. Where's his support, where is Life's, oh God, he's got a judge. And uh, the position gonna be seen, they now know where both of these players are. There's still a question mark for Cowanzine. Does he double back? But Lesser's position could be pivotal. Lysol does get an upgrade here, so a rifle in hand, but 
HP on life, definitely a concern. Recon Bolt available. Oh, wow. That's going to be caught in this snake bite, oh. but Kalzeem with the bailout. What a saviour of the Light Saw, though. Out does less, and now it's game back on, but time. Kalzeem can disconnect it. from this, yeah. This is, this is really difficult for Lysol. He needs to find a pixel out of place or a shot for free, which really Kalanzine isn't going to give. And look at the plant position. It's something that Kalanzine can play, and Lysol, yeah, Lysol knows it. Time to back away. A really, no ooh, ooh, a really nice attempt there. But still, Loud just scraping that through. A very close round, though. Tui's unable to really hold down control there of A-Main. In life, once again, I mean, alongside Berlin. Making things work here. Beautiful hold initially, but uh, like I said, once you remove that one player from A main and Lauda forced towards the backside of A site, fortunately lose out elsewhere. It's Lauda uh, ultimately have no recovery factor. There's, there's no safe spot to fall no. back to after losing that security of A main. Oh dear me, Kalanzine. He's going to take a little nap this round right off the rip. Life going to get to work. You can see the purchase is missing some elements to this as well. Ayang is down without armor as well. So the money was getting a little close, and Berlin actually falls. That might open up a huge chance towards this A site QCK. Yeah, that confirms it. Can Autumn be the one to change this? His position will be considered. He's been there more often than cool. not. But Life bringing death against Loud QCK. Joining Kalantine on the victim list, and away they go. They fancy their odds. They're not going to let him escape. He's hunting them down, just losing out on the knife there, but still want to do some damage. Lights all working off the back of the information. Autumn putting down, and they're still going to try and get that pressure, but no start on the plant just yet. No defuse to begin until now. Autumn stands his ground, takes down less. Two is what he got. Anything, he's going to take down only one, and that is nowhere near enough. FPX heating up now. On the back of both Autumn and Life it. here in this Just, round. You know, from the front. Beautiful fight back through. Loud unable to convert this position. No surprises to see a timeout called after yep. that. A little bit of a pace change here, but. Oh, planted. I didn't even see the switch back from the knife there. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, I mean, Sadak obviously falling to the, the snake bite here. Can't really be avoided. Well placed by Lysor. FPX clinging to life here, and Loud, I gotta say, not having as much as an, uh, of an easy time no. in terms of these opening engagements that they did versus Gen G. Oh, you're right. Like it, it was very, very cut and dry, very vanilla the way that Loud mm. approached this map last time. No, you're on the money. Um, I just. I'm really liking what I'm seeing between Autumn and Life. I can't stress it enough. And, and don't get me wrong, it's not that Ayang, Lysor and, and Berlin aren't doing well. They, they're doing very well at their jobs. They're, they're playing the roles that they need to. But I'm loving seeing that kind of combination, that duo between Autumn and Life working here in comparison when it didn't on Sunset. Absolutely. And if you let a Yoru and a Jet perform like this on the defense, you know they come into their attack in half oh. feeling way better about themselves. Especially coming out of a, a map loss to open, in, open the series, sorry. Yeah. And a dreary loss, it's not pretty. Five rounds, you're not going to feel happy with it. Yeah, sometimes a quick loss is easier than one that's But not out. in an elimination series, nah, you, you, uh, you, you, that's you not the case. That. <laughs> so to bounce back like this is, is really quite something to witness. Now, has Loud got the chops, though, to find a little bit of something to work for them here? They've been finding it very hard to handle both of these pressure points of life and autumn. Get out of my and the test begins again. Oh, Autumn, this guy is just out of this world. The only real threat to that round was going to be QCK, and he is gone in the blink of an eye. Kalanzine, yeah, he's got a guardian, but beyond that, you've got a sheriff and a ghost. Basically trying to mirror life from the previous round. Find that opener in mid. We still have a guardian in the hands of Kalanzine, but... You're right, the blade storm was really going to be... Well, to actually found a headshot there. That was only 66 HP left on Tui's. Kalanzine found a time in here. A fine okay. death. That's a rifle. If Tui's can possibly cross up to it, I, I don't think he's got the time to do it now, but... He's got to wait for his toxin yeah. to rebuild. I mean, the, the end game looks like Lester eventually creep towards A, but this is a really hard fight for Kalanzine because the timing's rotten. <laughs> yeah, life. Perfectly played looking, that. Yeah, looking to police that weapon. And there's still coming through. 
so aware yeah. of the possibility of less. 30 yeah. seconds left. Not much left for Loud to really do here. A sheriff and a ghost. Is life going to give this one away? Yeah, he's drifting. Did he get spotted? No, I don't think so. No, pin coming through. Oh, he's cleared, though. And now two is with 13 seconds, and the dream doesn't even get to be started. FPX, look, the early attempt, the early goer for Loud was going to be off the back of that ult invested from QCK, but he's had a quiet performance so far. That could have been a nice way to you know, push him up in this map, at least, should I say. And uh, not oh, to get it. There it is. Know. Look at oh. this guy. Yeah, Autumn's very nice to watch. This is what it should have been about, right? That timeout that came in, probably not for the last round, but, you know, the, the one between. This is what it was for, the buy round that's coming in now. At five to four, loud need answers because FPX have been meeting them every step of the way, and it's been individual, it's been punchy, but it's been damn good. Here. Gonna note a couple steps. Bring the alarm bell towards middle. And a further adjustment here again from FPX. Obviously posting life up. So won't expect to see him getting too aggressive here. Especially with nobody on the side allowed on the other side of the the halls to him. And, and, and if you're allowed, you're so conditioned to be worried about, okay, yeah, to make yeah, the yeah, exactly. is life they're, gonna be here? They're where waiting to they? see who shows where around the map. Berlin drifting a little out into the sights there. Left I concealment. wanting for HP. But he isn't alone. Autumn by his side, and we noted it early, and as did you now watching, Life creeping closer. There is a player watching, Tui's. Who gets the timing right here? Life walking in. He's been seen, and he gets to keep his life, which is the more surprising part. So now the three-play stack that was on this side of the map going to be rewarded, and he's actually just going for it. Berlin's fallen, as has Life. It's all on Autumn. What can this man do? Nothing this round. Put down, and the site plant should be coming in very comfortably here, as the other two players quite far away. Yeah, punchy reaction Spike there player. to the pressure coming through towards the loud spawn. Unfortunately, that sight hole just crumbling under the pressure. I saw it was a little curious. I'm gonna try and find an exit somewhere. I mean, looking at the funds on the side of loud, if you can remove a rifle, could cause some issues. <laughs> loud seemingly aware of his General, yeah, general <laughs> position there. Yeah, it's enough that he's gone. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a second attempt. Yeah, and in these slower rounds, it's it, it's really less to be the ones to. I guess if there's no early round aggression from FPX, mm. it's less that becomes the pivotal player in terms of information and sifting out where that threat is. Some round life left unchecked. Allowed have shown a lot of presence up to you, actually. Yeah. It was one of the first rounds we haven't seen them explore it, so you, you almost feel bad for life in that regard. Yeah, like, he's not rewarded. Yeah. But this much more patient play, much, you know, a, a much longer held default as well by Loud. That was extremely patient. It was, I think, it was two who sat at the, you know, very back by spawn, basically watching for that tube, tube pressure, which is maybe just a nice counter read because they had been exploring that so often. But still, Loud find find a little bit of a solution. But adding on the back of that, we've now just seen the operator. I was going to say, what's really curious is actually it looks like FPS is going to continue to slow things down, hold a little more passively. But the operator noted off the rip here, very start of the round, so giving Loud the information, not necessarily an advantage just yet. And Autumn can TP elsewhere. He's going to post up here, maybe show presence to the operator, potentially catch. Time in ahead of a rotation, but no, his TP's just expired. Time to jump. I'm gonna have to go for this because there is pressure coming up towards the tube. I don't know if that Aldrin actually managed to spot out the players, but Autumn's digging quite deep here, and he's found his reward. That's two he's dropped, and the spike a. found. So this should spur on the attention towards tube, but Iang is on the case. Got to be careful though, two players and that's Chris from Sadak. Life does well to find less, that removes the middle threat, but still there is pressure points to this. You can see the gap being closed, but another spot for Autumn and another body to add to the list. Cowanzine trying to drift in, but Autumn's exceptional at what he's doing. An absolute monster this round, and in this half. I mean, that's just so tough to watch. There's two members allowed tucked into main here, and Autumn's allowed to swing all the way. Dry, by the way. 
barely saw anything from Tui's. No utility to set things in motion. Out of charges. He finds three on the round with the operator. <laughs> Pretty pleased with himself. Should be. And the adjustment, again, what I love about this is the variety we're seeing. Very hard to get a beat on. Now you've got life with the operator instead. Another little switch here. So if Loud thought they had a plan before, now it could be adjusted expectations being diverted. And there isn't... Bodies behind this. Uh oh This might not commit it just yet. I mean, it's life. The last one you want to be trying to pin down with the Hunter's Fury. Nothing Sadak's comes through it. Sadak's in deep here. Yeah, but it's just Sadak. There's no one with him. They're, they're trying to maybe find the rest of them. He's put his life on the line for this, but he's getting nothing for it. It's just Sadak so far, and individually, he's not going to be able to outdo four of them. They've drawn all the rotations. The spike's still in spawn. Where's the value? Is it trying to bait out this B play? Once they get the spike, they're sure. I mean, yeah, Lester's got a very deep position, but they haven't caught anybody in rotation. So, Kusuke oh, nearly rewarded for his patience, oh. but now noted. There goes that position, he has to fall off it. This plays in, I guess, Tui's, but they need that spike down and safely. They, I, I doubt Lysol's gonna play ahead, so that should be fine. My mind goes to Tui's here. Yeah, he's in a lethal position. Four to play is. spoiler here. He's gonna hear all of these rotating. That's at least two players. You can see the pings coming through now. Yep. When's his time? Some awareness, a couple of members of FPX actually looking it's back here. They've slipped ahead pretty well. Berlin <gasps> is having... Oh, what? Berlin breaks! Two is in half. That was the plan. This is the fallback, and it's worked well enough to take down life. Automo, with his presence unknown, going to find the frag towards Kalantine. And QCK, nice attempt, but not good enough. Less left in a 1v3. And FPX looking like the real deal here. Less with a spray, but look at them facing him down. FPX with the lead coming into the half. Didn't even notice it there, but the divide creating a pocket for Autumn to get behind Loud. Beautifully constructed. Retake here. Heartbreaking for Tui's. It's just unreal wow. from Berlin. This is what I wanted out of map two. A closer affair, a better game. FPX showing us a lot more caliber here. Loud, no way out of it with five rounds to their name, but this is the perfect opportunity to check in with FPX. That was a bold statement there. Yeah, I can't believe he said that. I know. Caught in 4K. Gee, I hope someone clipped it. Yeah. Very, very interesting insight there. It, it was... I, we should stop playing with them now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's all good. There was nothing played. Don't worry. Um, of course things don't work <laughs> when we're here. <laughs> Look, we've got to bring a little curse to it. Otherwise, you know. It's been a while since we went to feel a halftime match. I feel a bit uh, lost. Yeah, I'd say, like, what, what, what do you want to talk about? You're the analyst. Have fun. <laughs> I was hoping to get someone from the interview there. <laughs> That's a lucky, isn't I mean, it? I'll, I'll come back to the same point. Obviously, uh, after the first map and it, it being very, very one-sided, now with this performance on defense, you've really, really got to dial in and hope that ultimate life can, can be the deciding factor here for FPX to force a map three. I mean, less, uh, sorry, I was going to say less. <laughs> uh, loud, looking a little quiet in areas, but I guess looking a bit more coordinated than what we saw yeah. versus Gen G. Gen G felt very, very individual. And like mm -hmm. I said, it, it felt almost at times like a deathmatch lobby. People were running around yeah. just winning gunfights, which again, on Breeze, you know. Hey, it's Breeze. Odds are you're going you're gonna to win out a few series that way, but doesn't really seem to be the approach from Loud. So I'm curious to see how they apply this composition to the defense. Um, obviously, Autumn's going to be the slippery <laughs> one, the one they need to pin down here and, and keep in check early on. I can't wait to see it. Couple seconds to go now. Was this a flash in the pan, a death rattle from FPX, or was there truly some life to them here? I want to see it. I think this first half has got me excited. Loud having to scramble for some answers, which 
again, leaves you wondering, what does this second half look like? An early work from life. He's straight up middle. Yeah. And doesn't get spotted. Going to be checked on and outdone. Cowantin with the first. Going to draw blood here and put loud at least one man up to the good. Despite not committed just yet by FBX, so really relying on life and autumn. Speedy wants to find an opener, but too easy has got himself into a, a strange position here, completely unconsidered by FBX. Almost behind this mid push, and <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, two he should be dead, right? Should be. Yeah, he's dead. Quick little pop flash, spotting out Sadak, and Autumn's feeling himself, so he's going to stick that fight too. 12 HP, but he's done so much damage. Do FPX continue on this path? That they could turn heel potentially. 35 seconds. Use the on the flank, though, so they've got to be careful about an open plant here. Players on site for oh, now one just HP. need to run the clock down. The life saw down to 1 HP, yet. Yeah. Berlin still pretty healthy, but did get tagged by the spy camp. Lucky not to die to the wall bank. Now the problem is QCK. Look at the position Last he's in. Standing. Yep, I think Berlin knows his chances are fading here. There was a little bit of a moment in middle where maybe they could have done a bit more, but with 10 seconds, players left, Ten right, and center. Left. Let's hold the ground well. And again, this will be a bit of a reminder. Some of these players, I'd say, are very, very good, almost specialists at holding these sites down, being those kind of stoic members that can be rocks of the team. And this could be one for less here, already towards the top of the board for Loud, but could continue Anyone on else? this trajectory. But La uh, Autumn had a real opportunity. He, he gave him a solid start here. Definitely finding two follow-ups after life did fall. Unfortunate. Cowan Zine on the other side of that with a sheriff of his own. Now we'll get the pistol on the board. Still Second smiling. Half. This is... Well... They're here. <laughs> Quite a few of them. Help. Um, it isn't just less, but he's got to be a little careful because there is that kind of gap close on Autumn, right? That could be an issue. Same with life to an extent. And yeah, they found him. So <laughs> quite the um, audacious attempt. Here. Yeah, how has he gone here so quick? Spike planted. Hello. Oh, that looked on. That one is. Second time of asking. And loud, looking composed. Not falling until then. Less going to go down, but that's not the end of the world. They'll be able to get themselves. The defuse and close up the scoreline here, but again, keep in mind, if I'm not mistaken, first half Loud did the same as well. They got the first yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. QCK looking a little rough around the edges, to be honest, from the first half. But yeah. So you're hoping for him to uh, pick things up in the second here. And his hands full, whether or not he's really going to be the one to take the fight towards Ultimate Life or try and slow things down with an operator. Oh, there's your answer. Here. It's almost like you know what you're talking about sometimes, Mike. I mean, I didn't know if I was going to see it round three, but... It's it's very early to go for this. Yeah. It's a, a hefty investment. Uh, and and this is where I, I want to see if it works against Autumn and Life. Who aren't afraid to get in your face, they, they might take a challenge on it. I want to see what the reaction is once they know this has come out. Oh, what a big investment here. FPX with two players at least heading this way for now. QCK only on four kills. He's not had the impact he'd want here, and he can feel that pressure starting to mount. Life gonna cop a fair crack of damage, as does Autumn at this point. So both of them suffering. Yeah, Good start tough. for Loud. If you'd be happy with that, and obviously for FPX, that's gonna take the wind out of your sails. Yeah, both duelists kept in check here. Definitely gonna make a, an explosive execute feel a little more uncomfortable. These deeper trips here may be designed to catch off Autumn, but. FBX okay. still looking to find the way onto B site here. He's, he's trying to ignore the one and look for the others, but the TP's been taken. QCK's in a little bit of trouble here, opting for the third rather than the first or the second, because he's really banking on Kowenzine, but he was surrounded by the end of it. Even with lower HP, life's still able to do enough damage, but they haven't got that spike across. They haven't been able to ferry it forward. So even though they have the site, they have no ability to do, and Lysol going down is devastating. That, and there's a surround, right? Like, what yeah. can Berlin do about this? He's lost in the lurk. Just not enough progress made early on here. Left. Spike not committed. I mean, I guess this was the long con for FBX to try and make something work, pull a rotation and play in either Lysol or Berlin. But it just doesn't happen. Loud, too decisive on the site. Just going to try and hold on to this rifle here. Ten seconds well, actually, left. Tui's might catch him. 
on yeah. the retreat. Oh, I don't know. I don't think Berlin's all right. They're really clean. Okay, in a shot like Berlin that. Berlin just has two easy number, man. Like, Apparently. It's just the awareness towards him. Absolutely unreal. My people are ready. Operator obviously retained, carry the cross here. Loud kicking things off with three unanswered. We have a team flash catch in there. Defeated. Sure how effective that was on the other side, but. Believe us. Oh. And yeah, fairly indicative to see the spike not committed there. So kind of giving away the plan for FBX of what they want to try to achieve with those sorts of rounds. Maybe because Life and Autumn were tagged up and they wanted to try and formulate some sort of fake and like I said, catch somebody right in rotation, here. but seems a little disjointed. Well, this is the first time we get to see this A take. Now, it, it's really kind of top loaded, right? Life's the only one with the rifle. Everyone else on Sheriff's. A little bit of kit to play with, but not as much as I'm sure you'd normally want. Now, they do have sight control. Louder respected them enough. They're, they've given up sight, and they've given up their first life as well. QCK going down is a big loss here because life can continue forward. Now, it's not a recovered rifle. It can't fall into the hand, but he needs to be such an influence so they can buy time. Snake by land, but no combination here from Cowan's in shock dart, so they won't get a kill off this. Life's got to be proactive. He's got to be in this one. Oh, he's gone down. That rifle's just a step too far away. I don't know if they can get it back into hand. Also needs to get into the action now. Also tagged up. This is a problem. He's still going to make some value out of this. Two left now. Oh, Berlin, Berlin from mid. Where the hell did Berlin just come from? Oh, it's just Autumn left alive now in a 1v2. Maybe a charge to ease. Takes a lot of damage. They made something out of that. But the defuse going to be coming in and loud. Weather the storm. Causing some real issues on the way in, though. You see how much respect now they're giving to FBX. Yes. Almost to their own detriment, to be honest with you. FBX capitalizing. Berlin unconsidered. He saw two easy this time. <laughs> on the way back in. Okay. Full purchase this time for FBX. Yeah, a, cru do, a crucial buy round. Go back for that A take. They kind of got a test of it last time. Do they feel as though they maybe found I mean, something? Here. Stacked up and actually yeah. holding on to the spike here, so it might be a pacey hit. Alt with Autumn as well. This could be huge. This could be really, really valuable for them. We'll look at the fake here with the TP being sent away. That's going to be, I'd imagine, quite a few of them, yeah. Two, three, potentially. You can see the reaction almost instantly from loud towards middle. Starting to close that gap. You're going to have QCK on the way. The ult is going to come in, and already it's a site being evacuated. They're already sitting a lot deeper. FPX will get oh themselves God. a plant. They are so close by here. Autumn, got to be careful about this one. TP, when he goes back, look who's waiting. Whoa, he got QCK. I, I was watching that on the minimap. <laughs> so unfortunate for QCK. Now Autumn, left on the long, long flank here. Not allowed can get anything done on site. You're going to have the lineups coming in as well. Lysor just invested that, so that's going to be a time buy up. He's counting, he's going to get half on the. And the pop flash is really good. Zadak just goes in, takes away life, and wants to remove Lysor, but he can't quite do it. And now you can see that back for Lysor is just going to get his body on the line here. Is it going back to the defuse? Oh, well handled. Berlin closes that down. A crucial recon sent through at the right time. Heartbreaking for QCK. You see the TP sent all the way down to the beach. Auto running down the clock with his ultimate. Let's try and maximize that information. One enemy. He allowed to almost get ahead of the curve here in terms of getting the half defuse, creating enough pressure on site. The pop flash is beautiful on the way back in from Sadak. Unfortunately, he doesn't kind of stick to his guns there and hold on to that space, but yeah. tough to do nonetheless. Time to jump. Different approach this time from FPX. Eyeing up middle. I want to see QCK activate, if I'm honest. He does need to start picking up the performance here. Sadak with a army on the other side. This is going to be everything. The timing is going to be on the wire. Perfect play from Sadak. Meets life on the challenge. Follows up with the nade on Autumn. And he has just broken FPX's back this round. Berlin, that late positioning he's been kind of known for, isn't going to be a surprise now. He has to play this forward. Not going to be able to do it. Nyang, nice connection on towards one. And the follow-up. Hold on. Oh, OK, there we go. Easy now. We'll find it through the smoke. 
Yeah, Salax absolutely breaking the ankles of FPX on the way in through mid split. Leading by example in that one. Healthy ultimate bank. Everything except the blade storms here. Yeah, I love this as well. Dips his toes inside the smoke. Fantastic stuff here. We allowed to call a timeout. Actually, no, sorry. My mistake. Did just change. Just got debated. Not your mistake. Nice I promise it wasn't. It did say loud. Maybe they both called timeouts. They could have both. You never know. It's a mystery. We'll start with the FPX timeout. Talk to me. Talk to me about what the game plan is here, because Loud have, even in, let's say, I wouldn't say the ideal way, because I would have liked, I, I don't want to harp on about it, but I would have liked to see QCK a little bit more involved. He has been somewhat absent this game. Um, Ultimate Life have had his number. But yeah, I mean, the, he's got his hands full on the front line, right? Mm -hmm. So previously, uh, a concern coming out of the KC series was FPX's inability to convert first bloods into round wins. They were winning out on the opening duels, but it, it, things were kind of slipping through their fingers elsewhere. And I, I feel like that's kind of the same here. Maybe not being statistically as good with the opening engagements, but yeah. FPX definitely causing enough of a ruckus to make loud sweat. Yes. Now the force back into recovery mode in some of these. And unfortunately, I think QCK is the victim of that sort of play style. FPX, you've had one round in this half. Your first half, we, we, we were back on board. You need to show a little something now. Time out for the check-in. Still got life on the ult. They still have a purchase around it. So this is a goer. This Get should be a way. big round. But Here. early exploration from QCK. Kaunzin this time with the operator. And it is going to be the speed piece. Last time, they evacuated the site. Dipped away early. This time, sticking around. Life on the way, though. Can he close that gap? Can he find a target? Find someone to play towards Autumn's right by his side. And Autumn's already claimed one. They could do with a little bit more or less. Still lingering around. And Autumn just bringing absolute fury to this side. Less left walking away. Wounded. Five bullets to play with. And he thinks it's enough. And it is. Autumn is audacious in his work. And he's got them the sight. But the flank, QCK finally Last makes it here. Standing. Have you got a 1v2 in you? Have you got the ability to do something about this? Oh, he was on for it. But Autumn just that bit better. And keeping FPX in touching distance of that scoreline. Not going to suffer financially coming out. I think two, maybe three mm. purchases available. Still got the Blade Storm, so an opportunity to force back in here. With an old commander, almost perfect at shutting down. I guess the second leg of this execute. Once Autumn TP's in, the Astro Smokes come up and create a couple of pockets for FPX to work out of. Nonetheless, FPX find their ninth. Going to switch things up, back over towards A once again. Same setup, same TP for Autumn, so expecting them purely dedicated towards information gathering. Pick that up, no one saw it. Oh, oh dear. QCK over the top found life. And Sadak with a ghost just got Iang. What has just happened here? Well, Hunter's Fury here as well. Yeah, they can clear out a lot of A. Yeah, Lysol has to play much closer. Not the lineups he'd probably be wanting to go for. They have to play right next to them. Lysol is panicking, surely, in this one. He's got an army against him. Bodies on bodies here. QCK trying to play ahead. Gets a little bit of a glimpse, but it's Autumn. You've got to be worried about He makes his appearance known. Oh, and that's just perfect again. Sorry. From four kills to three kills in this round. Autumn yeah. is just out of this world. What a player. Elimination on the line, and he's stepping up to the plate. 25 and 15 right now. Keeping the hopes alive for FBX. I was going to say, Mike, you know, that last round, call it a good round, but also got to know Autumn got four kills there. And I said, well, surely you can't do it again in my head. I was thinking, well, can you depend on that? Apparently you can. This adjust through middle was Sorry. just really rather godsend. All things tied up now. Operator in play for QCK. He's going walk He's committed. Abouts. He's committed He's on this one. He's so deep out of here. Oh, Lord. And Dash is expired. Oh, He's punished. He's desperate to make up for He's, it. You can feel it. Yeah. He's trying so hard, almost too hard, to try and be the difference maker, to pick up the scoreline that's just not sitting well with him. And he's been punished thoroughly on that. A little ambitious. Cowan Zine. 
Also, half exploring here. Might hear this. We'll definitely hear Lysor invest the wall. Always an awkward angle, though. Loud. A little ahead of themselves. And a misread. Here. They're responding to what yeah, they're FBX seeing. Sold this, yeah. Yeah. They, they've seen utility. They've seen players. And they've got life on the site. FPX. Now they lose the camera as well. That would have confirmed that this was a fake. Louder falling for this hook. Line and sinker and life looking to be the reaper on the site. But he can't quite close out to his. Nor could he find Salak in time. But by now the round. Just, your, your heart almost drops when you hear that spike going down. And you are on the other side of the map. Can they at least recover the operator? Is it even worth it to keep into hand? I mean, it's not been going well for them. Opting for it here. FPX going to be taking the lead now. Really activating. Yes, individually in a couple of these, but now we're seeing this kind of, I'd say, across the board effect here. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> have to consider things in the next round as well. You look at the funds available. Oh, yeah. Yes, there will be a rifle and the operators carry across, but. FPX finding 11, potentially 12, off of the back of this round 21 victory. On the brink of guaranteeing a third. Yeah, you see, it looks even worse from Lysor's perspective, just how deep QCK is looking to, to dig for that opener. I think you're right, it almost feels desperate trying to put something up on the board. It's time to check in for Loud. That's three in a row for FPX. They found the solution. They found something that's been working for them. It was, it was a little bit of a drought for those first four, but again, hey, call it a pistol, call it what you want, the kind of knock-on effect, but it was what it was. Brought the score line right back. But Loud need their own answers now. Looking outplayed here, if I'm honest. Yeah, I mean, a standout performance from Autumn. Mm -hmm. Loud unable to really pin him down in certain situations now has allowed FPX to find a way back in to this half after, a, I've got to say, a very impressive first half overall for FPX. Hands down, this is, this is a rude awakening for Loud and a much better performance from FPX. The first map, I, it almost feels like a lifetime ago now, right? You can, you can put it where it is. Yeah, this is the point of the series now where you can say, yeah, Map one's out of the mental. It's not. It's not a yeah. consideration anymore. Ten to eleven. It's still close enough, right? It's the the issue of money. This looks like it could be twelve unless QCK and Tui's can find some big value here, and they're going back to this A piece. That's where Les is. That's where Sadak is with a sheriff well, and a ghost. Struggled as well. I mean, obviously the previous two rounds, FPX did find right, success yeah. on the back of Autumn's ultimate, not available not here, but. FPX fans in their chances nonetheless. Two awkward tripwires here. Drone might not even spot these. See if they get some value off it. Sadak looking for it. Uh, he's been tagged up though. Berlin going to get towards sight. That's going to be the plan coming through. Is anyone going to try and deny this? Anyone going to put their life on the line for it? Looks like they're trying to. Sadak on the gap close. Gets towards Berlin and gets out of there with his life. Two E's finding Autumn. Hold on. Loud, where the hell's this coming from? Life from up above, though. Gonna remove Kalanzine from this. You still have QCK, you still have Tui's with the weapons. And Loud still have side control, they're creeping the back counter closer. Counterpick gonna come in, but there's still a gap to be filled here. Lysa is still a problem, as is Life. And now Tui's and Les, what can you do? Desperate to try and do it for time. 24 HP. They've got to play the time as well. Trying to draw out that last bit and get the drop of the pit. pit. And now I hang down to one HP. Could this be the clutch of his life? Not gonna happen. Less keep it loud alive, the defuse. Far too close, but it's there. Tied all even, 11 apiece. What a crazy exchange. So nobody in a position to really punish off the back of these trips that are placed. I'm not sure if both were activated. One definitely by Autumn. Less and Sadak making that Sad side look full health with a pistol. Another, well, the first kill, the second. Absolute madness from him. The response is there. In a round like that with that buy? And it wasn't even the operator or really the rifle. Absolute lifeline for Loud. That was heaven sent. 
and a total switch up here. here. Less now far more committed towards this A side. Does that then? They're looking to put him in, into the line of fire. Play him in. Yeah. QCK holding down a ton of space here, but he's going to have his hands full. A very, very strange investment of the drone here towards bottom mid. They must be paranoid about something. Maybe, come on, QCK, this is your moment to shine. They're going to be close here. He's not looking as confident now, trying to sit he's in a little deeper He's relaying this information angle. now that something's Be happening. Because look at the rest of the team. Look at where Kaunzin is. They're so far back. Q QCK has to find... Oh, God, QCK! Honestly, he's lucky to be breathing. He's lucky to be alive. Because FPS will have that B site. They've got the divide up. They've got life on the site itself. Shot done. Oh, this is, this is on a knife's edge, Mike. It really is awesome. That's it, almost TP in ahead of the wall there. Uh, ahead of the divide, sorry. Will be a full 5v5 in the post plant. UCK still looking for something towards elbow. That 12th round being the prize possession here. Pop flash being held. Anyone yeah. gets contact. Berlin going looking. It's QCK on the other side. And it's just nightmare after nightmare until then. An answer found over by Pillar. Sadak on the site with a tap on the spike. He's down low, but he's still going to find value for the trade. Two, he's still good for it. Man to the advantage. Autumn falls. It's on White Saw in a 1v3. He's got one. He needs two more. But up above, brutal angle to break and less. Pushing loud to 12. I haven't seen Loud have to dig this deep in a while, but they've just about got to the 12th round. Able to steady the ship. Find themselves now, now on map and series point, Lauren. By the skin of their teeth. Beautiful retake, though, to pull off. It's, like I said, yes. a full 5v5 here. With the amount of utility that's available on the B site, that wall paying off, though. Sadak able to create a little bit of paranoia with that first spike tap, draw a couple of people from FPX out. Yeah. Oh, man, this is so tense. There's still a buy here, it's just not a great purchase. What can they do? Life has his ult and he's looking for that opportunity in middle. Can he close down on QCK potentially? Not this time! Connection found! And a man up. They're looking like they want to explore that B site though. Already seeing a bit of a drift away from Tui's. Playing very safe here, willing to give up the site, respecting what Autumn's been bringing. He's too much of a threat. This time playing with the pack, not playing ahead. They've got, oh, there we go. Now's the time to start coming alive here. QCK with the finest of angles to find a shot, and I think he wants a bit more. Why not let him? Maybe he played in off this. Ian gives away his position. And it's precarious now, they need a plant, Mike. We'll get it here, but the timing a little awkward. No command invested here, loud. No secrets about this on the way back through. Sadak just stomping onto site. But a one for one trade, the number so favorable towards loud. Gowanzin closing in, it's all on Autumn. This guy has been a rock star for this side, but a brutal position, a brutal round to potentially go home on. Has he got the heroics in him? He's got so many targets, so many threats. He can't do it, it's done. FPX will be going home and loud. Live to fight another day. There are no strangers here to elimination series. Yep. The resilience on display from Loud once again. Heartbreak for FBX. Incredible performance from Autumn and Life today. Definitely some positives to take away. Look at between Autumn and Life, 11 first bloods yeah. really leading the charge. I, I, my main takeaway here in Map 2 is God, I want to see more of Autumn. Yeah. You know, it, what a talent. There, I mean, you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Les, who's arguably one of the, you know, the, the best out there, right? If you're going to talk about just kind of firepower alone. He almost gave him the opportunity in this. And FPX, got to say it, map one, not good enough. But map two, God, it makes you want to see more. It's, it's heartbreaking that we only get such a small sample size of what this team could potentially do. Absolutely, that elusive victory remains, but Loud will continue. A little bit of a course correction from that opening series from Gen G, yeah. sure, but I gotta stay it still some concerns really here. QCK really, really struggling to get into that second map. Yeah. Being punished time and time again. And I think you notice as well, it's it's key to note the the desperation 
It's that, that sort of uh, that, that pressure, the scoreboard pressure, really dictating some of the plays being made. Yes. Obviously, we don't know what's being said internally, but uh, definitely a concern for me, Lauren. No, and, and I'm with you in that, and I hope that's something. Again, if you're an IGL, a coach, though, you could look at that and you're, you're going to instantly identify it. And they'll need to start identifying those issues if they want to make a deep run here. But they are still alive. They are still kicking. And we're heading back to the desk. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Great cast, as always. Uh, and, man, that was, like, I, I totally agree with them. Autumn really was impressive. We say goodbye to FPX, unfortunately. But, you know, they, they fought their heart out there. Loud moves on in this competition, showing why they are a force to be reckoned with here on the international stage. But, Mimi, I was very impressed by what I saw, specifically, like Lauren said, from Autumn. Yeah, map number one was a struggle. But map for two sure. for this team, we saw a lot more. Both Life and Autumn as individuals, I think our names people will remember coming home from Madrid. And as well as that, I think they showed a lot more depth, really implementing that Eurocomp very well, in my yep. opinion. I, I think this is really indicative uh, of the fact that the, the Chinese region, the new league, it just ki kicked off, but these teams are continuing to grow and expand and, and getting better and better each event they attend. Yeah, I mean, for Autumn, he was so involved in those early fights. My guy comes out of there with, what, seven out of nine opening duels going his way. Yeah, So important in so many of these clutch situations as well, buying the way back through. I've really enjoyed watching this guy play, but well, we don't get to watch too much more of him. It's a, it's a little bit sad, but that's ultimately how, the, how these tournaments work, how the stakes work here. But yeah. a lot to learn from for this squad now going home to apply to the regular season to try and bring into, because the next time we have a chance to see them internationally would be at home in Shanghai, getting to represent China there. So definitely a great opportunity to improve and try and re-qualify for that event. Yeah, that will be awesome to see if whether or not they can make it there. And, and I think uh, indications definitely point in that direction when you say, Mitch, with EDG and FPX being so strong. Yeah, I think so. Home field advantages as well. If we do end up getting there, you would be delighted to see the, this team be able to play with someone behind their back. All right, folks. Well, with that being said, we have Dryad who's standing by with Sadak for the Verizon post-match interview. Let me hear the loud fans in the back as it is... There you go. It is loud who takes... The win is loud. Let's get the victory in contra de FPX. Estoy aquí con Sadak. I'm here with Sadak for the post-match interview. Sadak, lo primero que te quiero preguntar es, tú has clasificado más eventos internacionales que ningún otro jugador del mundo, de cualquier región que piensen. Y en situaciones de eliminación como esta, ¿hay en algún momento en el que esa frase que ustedes siempre tienen de sin miedo, a veces se haga más difícil, a veces sí salga el miedo? Mira, creo que nuestro, nuestro equipo Cuanto con más presión tiene, más, cuanto más las cosas están difíciles para nosotros, mejor performamos, ¿viste? Es mucho la cultura brasilera, queriendo o no, eh, siempre que las cosas están difíciles, continuamos para adelante, continuamos dando lo mejor de nosotros, así que esto solamente nos hace más fuertes. Yeah, the question that I have for him is, he's made it to more international events than any other player in any other region. And so my question was, in situations like this one, is there a point where he does feel that fear, that uh, Loud always have that phrase of no fear? Is there a point where he feels a fear? And he says, in pressure situations like this one, this is when we are able to thrive and shine the most. And it is that, that Brazilian culture that, that shines and, and allows them to come out out of situations like this one. Uh, now, the second question that I'm going to ask Sadak is the, the changes in compositions that we've seen recently, and not only for Loud, we've seen a couple of things here and there, but also this is a tournament that's building up to be very explosive, very in the phase, double duelist, Reina, your whatever it is. Is he expecting more of that, and are we expecting more of Loud to bring that? Eh, Sadak, por lo que estás viendo de las composiciones que ustedes traen, han traído algunos cambios pequeños, de pronto algunos cambios de rol dentro del equipo, pero también el Yor, por ejemplo, que veíamos la primera partida, um, y en general todos los equipos jugando bastante explosivos pensamos en Carmen Core pensamos en Sentinels en todos ellos que están en tu cara eh, crees que van a seguir trayendo esas sorpresas ese factor explosivo y ustedes también van a traer un poco de eso nuevo y yo creo que a medida que, el, que la master se va, se va desarrollando eh, Va, va a pasar mucho más antitáctico, entonces los equipos a, van a tener que quizás eh, variar, tener variaciones tácticas, ¿viste? Y jugar solamente apretando la W va a, ser, va a ser siempre un poco más difícil. Pero lo que hace estar acá entre los mejores ocho es eso, que ellos pueden tener muchas variedades, igual que nosotros, a veces jugamos más rápido, a veces más, más lento. Y creo que, bueno, eso. 
si les está funcionando ese juego explosivo o que continúen. Yeah, you know, so that he's telling us that as the tournament goes on, uh, you're going to see a lot of more counter shredding coming through instead of what we're seeing at the beginning. Uh, it's uh, something that has happened over and over again, but also mentions right at the end that if uh, there's an explosive factor that is working for a couple of those teams, then they can keep running it. And uh, my last question here is, how is he feeling for the teams that are left? And especially when it, when it comes to a tournament that is so almost unforgiving, only eight teams and only one that gets to make it till the end as it is uh, the crowd and the only Hispanic that we have here. How do you feel for the que in the tournament? I think we have asked a lot of players, a lot of players, and even the best players give us different opinions. How do you feel? And especially with a tournament es, no te dan muchas segundas oportunidades, ¿no? Y mira, yo me estoy sintiendo con mucha confianza, el equipo está con mucha confianza. Eh, sabemos que tenemos mucho talento, sabemos que estamos muy bien y vamos a dar nuestro máximo, ¿viste? Así que el que venga, vamos a dar bala y que sea lo que Dios quiera. ¡Vamos, Marito! <laughs> I know that, you know, uh, he's telling us that he's going to keep bringing uh, what they've been bringing recently in is uh, just shooting in the faces, doing what it takes, and, and continuing to, to have this live performance that we've seen recently. This is all that I have for this interview. Once again, que se escuche para Sada. Give it up for Sada. And we're going to break it ready for the second match of the day. It's a classic David versus Goliath. FPX, they're facing off against some stacked talent in Loud. It's safe to say this is going to be a tall order for the Chinese team. But if there's anything that we've learned from this tournament, it's that this squad can do it. One of these two teams will be going home. But now he has to go. He's got to take this challenge halfway. Not achieved. Awesome. Plays it well. Life's now pretty questioning what the hell's going on. No idea about two ease, but a fantastic clutch from him and they don't know about Salak until now. And what a horrible surprise it was. And he's just spraying and praying and it works. This could be it. The downfall of FPX on this map. Bless looking to close and he does. 13 to 5. It's clean work for Loud. They are looking very sharp here. Autumn and Life are very good, but they're going to need to do a lot more than that here. Pins are down to 15. Yeah, Life's all on a the platter. They've got to know about Autumn, but he's still firing. Great work from Autumn, and I am there. That's much better. His position will be considered. He's been there more often than not. But Life bringing death against Loud. Less two, he's what we got. Anything, he's going to take down only one, and that is nowhere near enough. So even though they have the sight, they have no ability to do it. Lysol going down. Autumn, you've got to be worried about it. He makes his appearance known. Oh, and that's just perfect again. Has he got the heroics in him? He's got so many targets, so many threats. He can't do it. It's done. FPX will be going home and loud. Live to fight another day. gives you wings.
Welcome back to day four of Masters Madrid and our second elimination match of the day. It's going to be the hometown heroes of Team Heretics going up against Paper Rex. Of course, I'm the current man yelling at UGB, and I'm, of course, joined on the desk yet again by Mimi and Mitch. They're on the schedule, so we just decided to commit. Uh, so, guys, uh, this is going to be a fun one because we have two teams, two very different trajectories as they have found themselves in this point. But uh, what is really fascinating about this is like it's weird to be talking about paper x in this context given the year that they had last year but even one player being removed from this team really has changed the complexion of it yeah paper x right now really reminds me of where they were sitting at the beginning of last year when they were still finding themselves at the start yeah. of that pacific season but they're playing a bunch of different comps some of their maps look really good the ideas look fleshed out others look like they're trying to slot Monet into a role that's not fully comfortable and they've really lost a lot of the consistency that they had here as a result and on the other hand mitch uh, heretics has been 
been uh, their stocks have been rising the whole year. Yeah, absolutely. This is a roster that even has to play with a stand-in as well. Remember, due to age restrictions, this is somewhere, and they've had to play with a player online, regionally as well, yeah. which you could talk about advantages hurdles. or disadvantages to that. The reality is, though, they've exceeded expectations. Young guns like Mini Boo should be facing their, their shaky trial on the international stage, or at least even regionally, coming up against some big names, big teams, but they haven't stumbled the whole way through. They have just looked like a better and better squad as time goes on. Yep. It's kind of what I expect from a team with Benji Fishy. He's a guy that has his eyes on the long game, and it looks like they've already found success yeah. early on. He's got on. that fish in him. <laughs> he has, sure, yeah. <laughs> he does. That was a guttural laugh for me, I'm sorry. I was going to make a joke about the fishmen, no, but no, instead we're, we're going to talk about the Boo Bros instead. I am glad you mentioned them here because I definitely feel like this, This one thing I love to see is, you know, brothers on the stage, you know, having each other's back, playing at the level that they're playing at. But Mini Boo has been outstanding. Boo has been unreal. Like yeah. this team, like these two brothers are killing it. Yeah, the way they're comboing, you're seeing a lot of examples here with different pieces of utility. The neon stun and so on has always been fun to watch. But this here, ult in the backside on the back of an astral wall coming out of it. They had no idea what they were walking into on the other side for Sentinels. This was one of the more uh, inventive plays that we saw out of these brothers, but they were doing this all tournament long. That's what some of the first clips were showing, the way that they were constantly looking to open up space together uh, and combo their util. It's a similarity to Paper X in the past, where I look at the strength of this team being the yep. little set util plays they have, right? It's not a squad where you look at them and they're gonna have a lot of like super hard sight hits where they're fully investing into something, but they have a lot of ideas in the mid round for these little combinations that they execute on really well, and they're finding the timing to use that seemingly always perfectly, and it has a lot of depth to their play. Yeah, of course, we'll see whether or not this uh, this heretics team can, this, excuse me, this heretics team can, can, oh my God, I'm like stumbling heretics on my words team. here. Heretics team, can they continue it? I'm the sure they definitely team. can. But for now though, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's actually go ahead though and uh, continue on this conversation here uh, because it does feel like at the very least, uh, you know, they need, all the pieces of this team in order to click here, including the coaching staff. And you saw that happen in that last matchup, maybe. Yeah, you absolutely did. I mean, uh, during that halftime interview, Neil Zinio was talking about the fact that, hey, they, they came out here, they weren't playing confident enough the first map, they were letting Sentinels exec on them every round. He gives that feedback. They come, come back into map number two, and they look so incredibly confident. They're executing perfectly. Yeah. Mini Boo on the Neon is being so incredibly proactive. Th this is a team who's showing up on their, like, first line match for one of the, their players for the first yeah. international event for the majority of these players. And after just one map, they looked comfortable against the team that I think most people are considering the forerunner right now in Madrid. Definitely after the results that we've seen come through, right? Coming in, I, I would have brought my EMEA bias to have an argument about no, that. But the really? reality is, you know, I'm facing facts now. I'm starting to think maybe, maybe NA looks famously. pretty strong. I mean, one of the better players we have in <laughs> EMEA now is an NA player. I don't know. It's a... It's, Everything's it's upside down. Heart. It is. But you know what? Good value. That's what's most important here. And I think what makes this really uh, interesting is that it's a Heretics team that, you know, had a lot of changes that they needed to make uh, going into this year. And not only did they do so, but they did so in a way that just brought all these different backgrounds together to really try and create this almost like a international super team, if you will. And it has been working out very well for Heretics. I I'm, I'm excited to see what they do in this matchup. Maybe. Yeah, they have a lot of ideas around like global control as well, which is interesting yeah. considering some of their comps, like what they ran up against Sentinels had no Sentinels. They ended up getting flanked from, from extremities constantly in those matchups. But at the same time, then you look at their bind composition, where there's this constant harassment between yeah. Astra. This is another element that I was trying to find the clips, but you know you don't want to pack the show too much. It's the fact that you have Astra stars go down, smokes bloom, and then the, the decoys or, or the gate crash faked out inside of it, where your opponents now have to be worried about their back because there could be a Yoru about yeah. to flash out and exec a play. And in fact, a lot of the time it's used just for for those rotations to draw the, the players off site and allow the Just actual execs ideas. to be cleaner. It, it, I love a lot of the innovation that Heretics have brought to the table in that aspect. Yeah, great ideas across the board. And it, I mean, of course, we can only expect some more great ideas as we get ready for this game. But for now, though, let's actually send it over to Mika as we jump ship to the other side to get a word with PaperX's coach, Alex. Hey Alex, really important match coming up. A lot of people have noticed that there's less W coming from W Gaming. I was wondering if this is something that the team is still adjusting to or is this like the start of um, a new style of Paper X? Yeah, I mean, W Gaming is 2023, you know, so we've got to try and figure something out for this year. All right, well, I'm eager to see what that is. 
not wanting to give away too much here. Completely understand that. Paper X playing it close to the chest. They absolutely are. And yesterday in their game, we saw the anger from Coach Alex coming out. Because let's be honest, that game was a bit of a mess, especially on map number three from this Paper X squad. Yeah. They, they rock out with this composition with no Sentinel. They're, they're leaving gaps. They're getting flanked. We're seeing so many of these mistakes that I think we've seen from Paper X before. This is really a team of highs and lows. And you can see how invested they're their coach is when they're struggling. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to see. You wouldn't like to see no passion up there, but at the same time, his poor desk. <laughs> that poor desk is it's getting a it's run for its money. That's for sure. The reality is, you can understand why this is a coach that's so invested in in the success of this squad, considering the success that they've had in the past. But going through an identity change without Jing, we always knew this was going to be a thing. Nobody on earth plays the game the way that Jing does. So you're going to have to find a new identity. Yeah. And the question is, how long is it going to take? Because they don't have much wiggle room anymore. Yeah. Well, of course, it's in. Uh, uh, talk about heretics real fast here as we get ready for this one. I think, you know, as the players start to uh, make their way in, this is certainly going to be quite the challenge here for both squads. I really want to see if Paper X is going to just give us something just a little bit different coming into this one. They're going to need it. Yeah, they absolutely will. But I, I think at this point, it, it's not going to be time to, to, to change comps, to change big ideas. It, it's going to have to be a lot more about the adaptation. And quite honestly, individual form on the day, I think we absolutely need to see more out of Monyet in this match match. He, he's being put in positions where sometimes he is expected to play similar to a player like Jing. So we need more from Paper Rex. All right, folks. Well, let's see how this all pans out as we get ready for this match to begin. It's going to be Paper X taking on Heretics. Let's go ahead and see where we're playing. All right, welcome to Map Select presented by Omen for match two of the day. We'll go ahead and jump in. Heretics, you are higher seed. Team A or Team B? Team B. Team B, so PRX, you will be Team A. We will start with your first ban. Uh, Breeze. Breeze? Yep. Your ban? Ban Ascent. Ban what, sorry? Ascent. Ascent. And then map number one from PRX. Sunset. Sunset, side on Sunset. Defense. Defense. And map number two from Heretics. Pick Lotus. Lotus, side on Lotus. Attack. Attack. Next set of bans starting with PRX, you have Bind, Icebox, and Split. Uh, Icebox. Icebox. Your ban, you have bind and split. Ban, bind. Ban, bind. Map number three is going to be split. PRX, side on split. Attack. Attack. All right, good luck to you both. Good luck. Good luck. front of the hometown crowd. It's going to be a difficult task for Paper Rex, but this team is no slouch when it comes to fighting in unfamiliar and some might say hostile territories. They had to do it against, uh, you know, an NA favorite crowd in EG when they played them in, you know, years ago. What was that? Last a year? year? A year ago, excuse me. And now here they are again, having to potentially take down, well, the heretics here in Spain. You got to think about Masters Copenhagen as well. Same sort of situation up against FPX. You're in a U, you're playing That's in a right. U team. That's and, right. And, and they were able to do a pretty good job of it. I think this is somewhere that this team is so experienced. I don't really expect nerves to play a big role, but 
I don't know. It depends how loud that crowd gets. That's right. Yeah, it absolutely can apply pressure to a team. I, I think for them, Paper X is still trying to find their identity this year since losing Jing. I feel like, it, inarguably, the yeah. most impressive player on that squad from last year. I mean, you have he something to it. It is, it is actually arguable, but he was incredible. That's a big pair of shoes to fill for a guy like Mon Yet. But on the other side, it, it, it's all happiness for Team Heretics. You know, they lost that match to Sentinels, and they've got to be beating themselves up over it a little bit. But they played them so damn close. They were counter straddling them on some of these maps. They had excellent game plans. Their players were executing. It, it was Rian's first land match, and he was dominating. In another world, this could very well just be Sentinels. Yes, Honestly. absolutely. And another, like, you run that match back multiple times. Different. Exactly. And I think that is what makes it so scary for this Paper X team, Mitch, to go up against a Heretics that is just gamed and ready to go because they got that confidence in them. That's the thing, right? And from what we've seen, that confidence is only built series on series over this year. So there's a lot sitting opposite that stage that they're going to have to deal with in terms of shutting down players like Mini Boo and his brother backing him up. Like, that utility combo is scary. And I, I didn't even add to it at the time. All of the other pieces of utility, we're probably going to save that for the post maps uh, <laughs> when we dive into it. But Rians, he's been uh, he's been consistent on the Sova. But Patatek's flashes are out of this world. It's so good to see him back in a support role because he was born for that kind of that kind of play. Let's talk about our maps. We're starting out on Sunset here. We've seen this already from both teams in mm -hmm. Madrid. For Team Heretics, they looked really good, honestly. Playing this Neon comp, stalling out with those stuns, and they're gonna obviously go back to that one. But I want to focus a little fences. bit here on Paper X, because this is pretty much the only map this team will ever play no duelist. They're playing something on Gecko, and that's what I'm looking at. On defense, they had him opping a lot. They had him picking up a side anchor roll, and it really felt like to me they weren't getting the maximum utilization out of his utility. He was out of the fight so there, many times. There's so many rounds where Paper X was fighting for didn't have that gecko flash because he was offing, because he was changing something up. But they did end up winning that map, and it was off of a really impressive attack side, which they're starting on now. However, Team Heretics has tape, they've had time, and I think this comp is preppable, especially with the trips and the stun that can really punish an O-Dive comp. And we talked a little bit about Neil Zinho, but I think Weber deserves a lot of credit for what we should see oh. coming into this server. That guy has had time to look at those those VODs, and that is really where things get scary, like Mimi said. Guy's a big brain player. He played on the server, and he's going to help them play today. Yeah, well, we'll see, of course, how this works out as we have a heretic squad that really wants to put on a show for their hometown crowd. Can Paper X silence them, though? Let's send it over to your casters. Give a warm welcome to Brent and Sideshow. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, let's get to it. A bit of a barn burner for our opening map here, yeah. Sunset. The best map, arguably, for both of these teams, Heretics and Paper X. And guess what? It's elimination time. This early on, you wouldn't think it if you look at these teams, but they're both naught and one. And honestly, expectations up in the air for this one, really. You might think that maybe Heretics might be favored, given the fact that they barely lost out to Sentinels. But we are fast off the rip into this pistol round. A very quick beginning, but slow and cautious by Paper X. Just well, no noise cues. Yeah, they threw a knife over towards A at the beginning, so still three Heretics players committed to the A fight. Only the two of Benji and Rians holding over towards Market. So this is where we're going to see that Team Heretics retake. Their retakes have looked fantastic, but they haven't dealt with a Sage Wall yet, which is a really interesting kind of flavor to how you're going to play the post. Tends to funnel people all in predictable directions. Money a second guessing himself there, where decided to send out a paranoia. What is the call to be made? Stunned up, Monyet might be in a bit of trouble. Still, Smoke up in his face, wants to play the angle and timing around it with the util damage. Definitely done to a few of the players around the back, but the Heretics are still alive and kicking. Swarming now to sight, Smoke down and out. Benji sticking through, half on the defuse, but he's the last one left and a couple of shots. It's all it takes to seal the deal. Pistol around here for, pi uh, for, for Paper Rex. Excuse me. Yeah, pretty nice, fast paced, got somebody in, aggressive. You know, a lot of disruption there, actually, to the way that Team Heretics were trying to play the retake. The Sage Wall, as well, does not make things easy there. No. You're, you're on the pistol round, you cannot afford to really spend the entirety of your ammunition breaking so it. And especially if Device going to be able to get kills like that. That's two, just threw that crack in the wall. Yeah. Looking caught on the camera, but that's devastating, actually, for Heretics. That that's the way that it ended up going. But we are going to see so many of those kind of rounds, I think, where Paper X group up on one side of the map, hit the site with all of their utility. And I think Team Heretics might find it a little difficult to pick the mid-round timings that we've seen them get against other squads. 
Doubled up with the trips, though. Can't claim the kill, unfortunate. For old Benji. A very similar look to the round again. Get that plant straight down. Out. Oh, this is even more unfair to Heretics, though, isn't it? With the weaponry on the other side of things. Yeah, bits and pieces of util. I mean, if Paperx decides to take the fight straight to them, which they have. Okay. Oh. Throwing away your lives ever so slightly. I mean, four players still left standing. Any guns to reclaim? Oh, well, not for Divide. He's still got, just got a pistol to try to span the spike. Yeah, and now they're gonna be playing it from this main position. Still, the wall smoked to at least carve their way through. They found it, placement here. This is looking really precarious right now. Paper X in a world of hurt. They have to manage themselves and find these kills. One player left, it's mine three. And here it is, Patatek half on the defuse. And time, he's got it. Might be just barely, it looks a bit rough. No, just about. Second to spare. Wonderful, wonderful eco round for Heretics. Yeah, amazing. Once they got themselves up into the player advantage situation, that's where you saw the Heretics kind of system thrive. The stun from Mini Boo and that swing from Rians could not have been better time. Paranoia, Boo with the follow up. This smoke that Boo lands as well, really lovely for making sure that the retakers only need to focus on one area at once. And the half that they got on the defuse, so crucial, so important. Now, Take a look at Paper X buying back into this one. Yeah. They are not happy to just let this one go. They have got plants in both of these rounds and a fair amount of kills. So the money's not dreadful here. Still that danger towards it. Flash fours with well, well, that thrash. It's gonna be setting this one up, so clears through into market. A couple of players backside. Detainment. Line there. I don't Benji think you can follow up on this. No, surely not. I mean, he's being bodyguarded basically by two of his teammates and Forsaken, not sure if that was, just trying to follow it up. Paditek takes him out anyway. Holding at the ground and still Munibu left to contain. No gaps left into the play, Munyet. We'll get the gun though. And Munyet's position here is difficult to root out. The Sage Wall. Two players not looking, twists and turns. They can't really find themselves an easy kill, but there it is, okay. Toppling, two left standing, making just one again, Mind Freak. Close to the pillar. Damage definitely done to a few of them. Still, how the shot's just landing. So, investment getting punished here by Paper X. And I got down again. I gotta say, I'm so impressed with Boo. The way that he runs these retakes and as the IGL, but also the way that he paths and he uses his utility. You saw his smoke being absolutely crucial in the pre previous retake. The paranoia too. This time, as you can see, Rians and Paddy defending Benji. Mini Boo comes around the back, and then Boo goes for the reflank in market too. That's his paranoia you see there. Onto Monyet. Just making sure that all the gaps are solved. And they don't just have to run into Monyet over and over again. Finally, this is going to break the economy of Paper X. Struggle as they might to try to keep guns on board. Heretics are going to be able to stabilize perhaps just a little here, unless the sheriffs can sing. One suppressed. And for the first time, we see Paper X going for more of a defaulty approach. Throwing that knife over towards A. Forsaken did that on the pistol as well, and it ended up in a B group up. It's fairly similar to what Paper X are going for again here. Yeah, contacting, removing the first layer of the trip. Out in the open with the util, no punishment. Onto Forsaken. Group up towards B, but it seems like Heretics have got good awareness of it. Benji Fishy's holding it down just with the rifle. The spam damage, no punishment in sight though with a counterplay. Another one of these rounds. And they want to play aggressive. Look at this, straight into market paranoia. Push forward, blinded, flashed up. Round to the side. There's no real guns and no real danger towards that cheeky idea, nevertheless. I mean, I think that was a team flash, though, wasn't it? That was Forsaken's flash that came through and ended up blinding some of the Paper X players that were trying to push. Feeling a little bit improv -y towards the back of the site. Traded Dart gliding his way straight to Divine and points him directly to the target they were looking for. And look at the confidence on the Heretics players. They're not scared to try to take these fights, especially when they can group up together. Yeah. And I think that's such an important part of what's making Team Heretics flourish on the big stage. Remember that they played and qualified without dropping a map, but it was all with ping, they had to play online because Rians couldn't get there to play at kickoff in person. So this was their first time, for starters, playing on a stage this big, playing in front of a crowd like this, but also playing on the LAN servers and getting used to that. Yeah. Does it seem to have made uh, the slightest bit of difference? <laughs> nope. Not at all.
No. I wouldn't expect it. There's a lot of talk about, you know, rookies and how they perform when it comes to the big stage like this. But to be honest, there is no clear-cut correlation. New players don't always crumble on the big stage. New players don't always dominate. But Heretic seems to have those kind of people that love to step up to the occasion. Oh, yeah. And this is yet another example of what I think is kind of the theme of Master Madrid, which is the old guard taking on the new upcoming talent. And Paper X here representing that old guard. The old gods can fall. Team Heretics took down Na'Vi to be able to get to this point. They qualified over Fnatic, who are not here. They know that these gods can bleed. Absolutely. Seen it firsthand for Paper X. Been quite some time since they've really just kind of spiraled out of control at a tournament. I mean, Champs 2022 comes to mind. Paper X are no strangers to it. It's not like they've had dominance throughout their entire existence as an org, but based on the tail end of 2023, there are you know, some relatively high expectations, I think, leveled against them. Absolutely. But for the players, maybe not so much. You know, they've spoken. They said they were playing in a six exactly. out of ten compared yeah, six to out last of 10 year. is what they were rating themselves. And yeah. Just kind of going into Madrid, I think, yeah, expecting cool. to just have a bit of fun, which is the Paper X way of things, a bit of style. <laughs> well, it seems like they're scrimming yeah. the BXX at the moment, Brett. Yeah. That Force knife Force. caught all five players. I don't know exactly. It's a refight call. Panatech forwards. That flash is magnificent. The Paper X are the ones coming out on top. And the res, too. The skirmish, the res, yeah. We're already a fast flank. As soon as the knife tagged on the five, boo. He's fast behind him. Will he get the punish? Wise round is traded. One for one. Yeah. But that's not good enough. That just opens up the A side of the map. Can Riens read it? Can he cut somebody off? Because otherwise, this looks like a round all wrapped up already for Paper X. And, and this really begins because they expect Paper X to stop when they get five person knife. If you remove all of the abilities from your opponents, you expect them not to keep hitting the W button. And yet, Paper X. Nah, they don't care. Nah, they so, do not care. And that's why that flash timing doesn't quite work. Paddy's assuming that they'll have put a pause into their play here. Now let's have a look at Rienz and Benji though and see if they can recover this. What to do for them. Now, Mind Freak on the flank is actually a wild ways off. He's going to have to work his way up through mid here. There's one opener still. Something shuts that down to Benji. Last one left and it's the trade. So. He breaks the second one. And that round, maybe a bit of a preview of things to come if Paper X can find a little more success. Because I think one of the biggest ways that Paper X are going to find win conditions in this is going to be by disrupting the timings that Heretics want to take. It's all about a tempo. Heretics have played against a lot of teams that play quite standard Valorant, where you can find good timings to re-clear, you expect them to slow down, the set plays that Heretics go for need a little bit of time and space to set up. And Paper X, are they going to give them that? Unlikely most of the time. Well, Boo, TP close to tiles. He's holding a flash, but guess what? Mind Freak's already off front contact. Of him. No, it's a smoke as well. He's holding the next layer of it. Mind Freak, disgusting work, but Mini Boo still active, still kicking into the fight. Back out of there, using the wall. Not quite. To catch him on the heels. Another situation again, Brent, where the cam contact that you can see them pinging out right now doesn't anticipate somebody going for a wide swing. If that's just a shallow little jiggle to spot anybody in mid, the cam takes contact, paranoia can be used, and Team Heretics can crunch the mid players. But instead, they just swung out fully and took the fight. Purely W gaming. So these setups that Heretics are using, not really optimized for the pace and the aggression that Paper X are going to throw in. We'll see how they adapt over the course this series. Spike planted. 2v3. Getting that info that everybody's playing towards main there with a neural theft. Wall broken. One last, one less thing to really worry about here. But still one hell of a task. Need to rebound. The is going to be forced out wide. Shots need to be landed here by Benji. Flash to set it up. Everybody evacuating. Magnificent once more. And everybody topples. Beautiful supportive utility by Panatech. Incredible stuff from Heretics there. That's the thing, if you give them the space, if you give them the time, these setups look immaculate. I think you were talking about it when Sentinels played against Team Heretics, that it looked like the two best teams in the tournament playing yeah. back when you were on the desk for that game. And I think when, it, when Heretics are allowed the space to set these things up, 
God, the nade into the back, the flash to clear, catches on to everybody. They read that the teleport's happening. They've already set up the cage. It just looks so good. And that's why I'm saying the win condition for Paper X is to find timings to disrupt those setups, to try to catch Paddy with the flash in his hand. Weaponry is a little bit uneven for Paper X. Again, grouped up as five. Really, not too much in terms of changing the game plans with an old man sent flying. Rips its way through, so not have to worry about our setup. But this is a fight towards the back of the side, actually. Something has been changed now. Smokes dropped into the corner. Will they check it? Not quite. It's a half clear. It's oh Benji. He's blinded. He does not care. Three falling. Hunter's fury. Clearing up the remnants, the pit's down, but really, it's just a matter of time, and Mind Freak, you can feel it. Despair settling. Dread in the bones, tagged up by the drone, no chance. Benji looks amazing, man. <laughs> he just looks amazing. He was talking all this tournament about how he wanted to grind his way up through Valorant, didn't want to use his clout to hop onto a top team early. And he really did put in the work in tier two. Oh yeah. Even when he joined this squad, people were not immediately saying, oh, the characters are gonna be superb instantly. I did not expect them to be here in Madrid, but now that they are, what is this? Yeah, just disgusting work. Anticipating the timing of those players so perfectly <laughs> to even catch something afterwards. Uh. Nuts, absolutely nuts. The new era, that players like that are ushering in. 2024 looking exciting for Valorant. Danger in this round with Mind Freak. He's managed to work his way in, just walking past this. Does Boo expect it? I believe he must have called it. No, his head's gone. Oh my. Mini Budo returns it with the stun back around the side using the wall. Good vein like he's. Dipped out of the side, but still continues to play into this in a one and done angle. But there it is. Thrash in connection. Detained it. Mini Boo's there, so it needs to be protected. Paditech flashed up, though. He has to back away into the smoke, and there's the kill. Secured. Follow up. Sheriff is online. But yet, disgusting work, and everybody just being traded out. Benji got a 3k in the previous round, but it wasn't as difficult as all of this. He has no great information about where Paper X are playing and has to break this wall, giving away exactly what angles he's going to be fighting on. Prex not leaving this one to chance. Doubled up, high low setup, crouch, but they don't know where he might be coming from. Peeking for the info. I was a believer. That's unreal. I was a believer for a second, yet it's barely, barely scraped through for Paper X. The metal box ends up being the MVP there for Paper X. Oh my God. As it took half of the bullet, headed straight for Divai. Nevertheless, an example of why Paper X's A exec can be so dangerous there. Heretics got kind of roped in, pulled in to trying to fight as one player at a time got put into bad situations. And Mini Boo gets caught and they try to bail him out and then Rienz is tempted to swing through the smoke to try to bail the next layer out. And here we see the economy finally in a good enough spot. For something to pick up the attack side off. Isn't that interesting? I mean, they do it a lot. Yeah, Doesn't matter do. what role something's playing, they really do favor this, just trying to slow the rounds down and, and find th those picks. I think the slower you make these rounds, the more you open yourself up to Mini Boo re clearing areas with a flash. He's repositioning here. Danger, yeah. The crosshair placement wasn't online, and as the reswing of Boo, it's punished almost immediately. Pad attack is forwards in front of the util, in front of the slow. It's but there was a the timing. There was a ping, there was a beep from the Dizzy, and so they know. know that there's someone around. Yep, using a paranoid. Yeah, that's just pure <laughs> timing based on that. As soon as the flash comes through, pixel angle for Reins, not enough to clear the head off one of the bodies. Plant will go down without any problems. Spike planted. 2v4, doesn't look doable. At some point might be starting to think about the call to save this now, surely Reins will even be allowed to exit. He makes a good go of it. Got to respect it. Yeah, the players are still looking sharp on Heretics. It's a good job that Paper X were able to swing so readily there to try to trade out. But it's the two picks they get at the start that really open things up. And that was a little unusual from Heretics. They did not read that the op was online here, I don't think. Yeah. They went for a dry reclear.
no utility used. Usually, heretics are the king of cooking up these on-the-fly set plays. And they're going to take a timeout here. The coaching staff clearly not quite happy with what they saw in that round, and I bet it's something to do with the way that Minibu and uh, Boot, the brothers just kind of walked into those angles at the start of the round. And Normally, I, I mean, listen, I'm talking about something with this operator. I'm not a huge fan of it when I've been watching him play with it just prior. They really got punished hard, I think, in the EDG match where they just weren't showing presence. They weren't given the opportunity for pickoffs. And Heretics themselves could play more passively, trying to play for retakes. I'm not sure that that would be the best strategy, though. Paper X have been known to mix in some of those contacting plays, especially in the rounds where they have the op online. Yeah. Uh, and that you can get into some really uncomfortable spots when that's happening. Forsaken ready to go with another null command. So that could end up being quite important here. We've seen Paper X leaning B very heavily at the start of this half. And now swapping over to mostly doing A executes. The option now going pretty rapidly into B once more. That's what they did last time they had the ult. Despite all that prior conditioning, but I imagine speed probably not the name of the game. Something opping said. Set the sights towards mid. Flash play to set up early on so Minibu can get onto that. Minor side angle sets himself up nicely. They do the show presence. Yeah, and if something wanted to get set up with the operator over towards A, then that would make it a little more difficult for him. But instead, Devise escorting something up mid. And these players that were falling away from A could have fallen prone to it. Instead, here comes the B split. Hello. Yeah. Benji's you still offline. Two different directions. So, all being used to clear out through market on top of the wall. It's anticipated. Great read. Reads. Nasty business. Nasty shot. Osh, in through the back. Just the slightest of gaps. Something's head's gone. Clean off, rolling off the shoulders here. Through the back of the site. Once more paranoia, but no. Doesn't expect the deeper angle. Mini Boo is playing so passively there, patiently, making sure he guards all the available openings. Munyet. Forwards now, he knows he has to take risks. There's a slight gap, he's seen the cross. But there's a lot more to do here. Needs a bloody miracle. Holding, there's one. Can he get any more with six bullets left? Smoke fading, paranoia just in time. They're tracing and chasing down the fight. Mind Freak, he's there. Battle taken up close and personal. Headshots found, but still 11 HP. Monyet, he can't do it. They know he's low. And all it takes is a few stray bullets. A lot of danger in that round too, despite the fact that a couple were play picked off over towards Market. Great recovery though from Heretics. You could see the anticipation with the way the Divide pushed into Market there. They were so ready for that swing on top of the Sage Wall. Here it is from Rians again. As soon as the wall goes up, Crosshair gets adjusted. And this, the Mosh is thrown to try to set up the Mosh paranoia and try to put pressure and fight really aggressive for Boba and stop Team Heretics going for that retake style. And instead, it just exposes something's head for a fraction of a moment. And that's enough for Heretics to get an even larger player advantage. <laughs> that operator, now in hands of the defending Sova. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't got enough of your initiator op from something's attack side, have a look at this one from Rienz. Still the contact play style. I mean, this creates openings. Rienz is only just getting onto the line, though. Nade into the corner, that's to remove some of those unbreakable trips. Only gets rid of one. Wall up once more, Rians doesn't get the pick. Mines off the Please shot though. Man, fully revealed, spamming it through, stopping off the plan and the damage done with the Hunter's Fury. Has to be an escape from Meunier, he will TP just to the side to narrowly avoid it. But this has thrown a lot of oh. chaos into the mix, lovely shock dart. And it all really relies on Mind Freak, he's in mid right now. Someone's going to be watching him though. Mosh pit into the corner as Benji survives. Pushed out wide. Mind Freak and oh, something. Like they both get it with the res online. Suddenly, this player advantage. It's flipped onto the other side of things. Heretics. They don't know which way to look towards right now because Mind Freak is deep within the spawn. They have to try and contain this one, plug the gaps. Before they set up for these big retake executes, still 37 seconds. They've got the spike back and they're running all the way over towards A. I mean, it is just pure mayhem in Madrid. That one is bizarre. Left. We're watching the fight as it happens in mid, and two players in back sight went for a swing on defense and both fell at the exact same time the res went up. Now, from Spike our planted. perspective, I can't tell whether the res baited the swing out, and that was a really nice coordinated play, or whether Team Heretics just ended up trying to face that 
Yeah, and I it mean, offered an opportunity for Davai to get the res. Maybe just facing with Benji getting pushed out by the mosh pit. Yeah. Having to, having to protect him, you know, maybe just super possible. stand the ground, see if they can survive by just taking the fight with more players. But it's left just Mini Boot reeling in this one, has to save. Yeah. Forced back with the rifle. I mean, a really, really odd round. Just those strange timings being thrown into it. Uh, and actually, Davai's Resurrect getting really large value the two times that it's been used. Yeah. Uh, it's not often you say that about a Sage Hult, actually. So... Heretics, the bonus for them is that they'll be given this round as like a little mini timeout. They can talk about what went wrong there, what they're looking to readjust for the final round. But Paper X have now crept up to five. Last a reminder, this the was the, the better half for them. Last time we saw it play. Um, but I think this comp should have theoretical value. So yeah, they went for the res before the peaks happened. They were, as you said, Brent, just trying to get that... Uh, Punish onto the mosh being used backside. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mindfreak got the kill in mid. So that's just a battle of multiple fronts. Here we are, final round now of this first half. Big ult online, thrash for something. We'll be opting to use this. In fact, Heretics want to take the page straight too. It's in doubt with the paranoia, all offloaded, and three players found. Main control. Yeah, with that knife deep into the angle. So Paper X are calling the fast reaction into A, which is where Benji is playing. With a kill trip and a vandal. It. Yeah, kill trip and a vandal, but the thrash surely clears the way here. Spotting a multitude of targets forwards into the smoke. Trips, he's waiting for it, the right time to strike, but Nade pushes him away. Plant is online, out in the open. Strange with a post plant scenario, but plenty of using an angles. Here it is. The same war being played. Now they should be aware of this, yet it still gets value with the flash setup. All online, and yet it's not cleared off this angle just yet. Still wants to play up top. Still wants to combine it all with the aggression to buy through the back of the site. It's Paper X, even it flawless for the final round here of our first half. Love that setup too. They've got Devai even pushing a link at the same time so they set up the, the highest of high-low setups. One player in the skybox while the other <laughs> swings. Awesome setup to draw things level at the half. As yeah. Paper X won four out of five of the last rounds. Absolutely treated here. The best map of both of these teams, arguably. Seen evenly matched. I mean, who knows what we've got in store for the second half. <laughs> Oh, they are loving it. They are loving it. Just here to have fun at the end of the day. Well, absolutely ridiculous so far. Still on the floor, let's send it out to Mika. She's standing by with a special guest for an interview. What's up, everyone? I'm here with a very, very special guest. We have Mixwell here, and we can hear the crowd roaring. This is electric, and how are you enjoying the match? Uh, the match so far is insane. Uh, I think that Paper X is playing really, really well. It's the best maps of both teams. So I think the best of three uh, is kind of decided in this game, and both teams are playing at their best, so I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah, well, on behalf of Pacific, Kitty Heretics is playing very, very well as yeah. well. You guys are making us sweat over in Asia. <laughs> and speaking of which, EMEA, and Pacific, we have very, very different styles, right? Um, which team would you rather play against? Something more structured or something more chaotic like Paper X? I think uh, playing against Paper X for the first time is maybe uh, more scary. But after you see them playing once, I think uh, Team Heretics has a more complete style. Um, so I, I think I would rather play against Paper X and Heretics, yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the crowd agrees with you. And of course, Nilzinho is somebody that you have a very close relationship with. You know him for a while. What do you think he's thinking right now at this very moment? I think he's calming the players because it's important to start strong on the second half. He's someone that reminds you what he has prepared for you before the match. And he's probably just saying, guys, keep playing like you're playing. You're playing really well. Uh, remember what we talked about before and just enjoy the moment because the crowd is cheering for you, something like that. Speaking of the crowds, really quick, say something to our fans. Chicos. Tenemos que ganar este partido, sea como sea. Y vosotros sois el sexto jugador, así que gritad como nunca, por favor. ¡Vamos! All right, let's get back into the game. Mixwell's got a future, I think, in crowd work as well. I mean, this guy, he knows. <laughs> get, him, knows. get him paired up with Zekun's mom, telling you, yeah. I mean, they know the right things to say. Me, <laughs> I am an idiot, only know the one language. So, well, as they say in Spain, they most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfectly executed. Yep, Gracious. Never inviting us back to Spain. Uh, first round, pistol round for the second half. Let's see how it goes. It's fast off the rip with a flash play. Mini Boo! 
the forwards up front taking it to the fight straight. Two to many targets to face him, but guess what? His team's got his back. There were to the follow up. Finally, something now with a reposition. Doesn't really want his back open to that spot. Wingman being broken down. Look how reluctant Paper X are to actually rotate fully over to A, and they've been rewarded the for it. They find the lurk there. Team Heretics had a 3v1 on the A site for like the last 20 seconds, and they, they paused, allowing opportunities for Paper X to come back into this. Oh, the space, look at this, down in two, bottom section of mid, but they are fully grouped up. It's three players holding hands. They don't want to leave any mistakes open here. Dubai. <gasps> Missed he the timing. It, the timing. Does Mind Freak look left? Does he look left? Yes, he does, and he spots a hole. Oh, the juicy targets once more. There's one falling. Boo. Down and out, but now they know it's B. Jig is up. And are these players, they are going to get crunched here. I mean, Mind Freak's going to be coming behind at the same time as pressure is applied through market. This is going to be so tough for Heretics. Brilliant. He's got the dart. Oh, seriously, man, this is just wide out into the open. Ghost moment certified there. Pissed around. Another one for Paper X. They're going to be kicking themselves for that decision making. After managing to find two picks at the beginning and setting themselves up with such an advantage, deciding to put that pause into the round. As soon as Benji gets picked off, you lose all info and control over the rest of the map. And Paper X, it is so unusual to see a team still playing 1-1-1 one, one, and one after Elbow's been destroyed. But yeah, ended up working perfectly for Paper X. Anticipation, perhaps, of that pause coming through. They were not scared. Yeah, it's all smiles, man. They really are just here to have a good time. Level their own expectations. Here's a deep knife. Forwards with the dizzy. I mean, where do you think the Heritage players are? I've got more than a good guess. They're just holding, expecting maybe just that re-clearance, re-push. When we saw Paper X playing up against EDG, when Paper X won the defense side, outside of the pistol and the follow up, they only won two of the rifle rounds. Ooh! <laughs> so, even though these are absolutely plastered, it remains to be seen how they're going to get it done once rifles are on board. Do we mix it up? Double down? They did struggle. Even though they're, you know, 8 6 in the lead right now, you need to see it working in rounds where Team Heretics can fight back. There is only one player on the other side of things, still with light armor, that's Rians, as we head into the next round. So Forsaken's Outlaw is gonna struggle to get a little bit of value. That respect being showcased here. And for Heretics, there's no spread default. A rapid take of B main control is what's called and ordered the Bulldog. Well, just all bark, no bite there. We'll lose us out the dual mini, boo this guy! Outrageous. He's just ripping him to shreds. That's so strong. I mean, aim punched as well by the Bulldog in the first fight. Okay, well, weakened enough though. The Forsaken does get value with the Outlaw. Tagged up by it, Mosh Pit forwards. Still another plant down, by the way. Really being pushed back. Trying to get everybody to get that time, but finally it goes through the window with the Dizzy up Fight over the top and no connections. Now the Paranoia and a flash underhanded to clear it forward positions. No way are they going to start winning this one out, surely not. Heretics doubled up. Close to the wall, Rians side by side him and Benji Fishy, but a position of being squeezed. How are they managing that? They just win both the duels in that situation. I paper except their pick of the timings. Monia and something have done such an incredible job up until that point. Something managed to turn a, a double face into a 1v1, got the kill. Monia kills somebody, B main. Yeah. They can't close it out, even though they're coming from opposite sides, can pick the timings. Look at that kill through the aim punch. Utilizing the flash to force his opponent into the corner and then the recon to be able to get nice. Bravo. the illumination on his opponent. Good response right when they needed it. Something has picked up the operator. Onion's gone walkabout. Okay. Throw the kill onto Boo. Might throw things into a bit of disarray. There's a deep smoke. This was placed down early. I mean, Heretics. They've cooked this one up, they were pinging it out just into the pre-round, but they've all got to contain. Paperx following through with it, and Mind Freak's there! They've just got to watch for. Top mid, mid. spike drop down, Rian's the last one left, and he's gone! In the blink of an eye, round finished. Team Heretics are going to go for that mid play quite a lot, where they smoke the right side of mid and apply some pressure. Sometimes it's going to be fake, sometimes it's real. And Paperx there threatened like they were just going to walk through the smoke. 
And that actually pulled the crosshair away quickly enough for Mini Boo. The Paper X were able to find really easy timings, even if they hadn't taken down Boo at the beginning, like an absolute freebie. I think Paper X had a great protocol for what to do against that. And you can see the market pressure got dealt with instantly too. Just a wall in the face of the drone. And that is such a difference to the way that, for example, Sentinels would play this KO Gecko comp. Here's that same smoke again. Like I said, heretics love this kind of setup. Smoke, instead of blooming in mid, just cuts off one side of it. Stops any crossfire setup. But it's not always going to be real pressure. T-pop angle as well. Something getting all sorts of mid-round information. And yet it's the really one in danger. Yeah, here it is. I mean, the jiggle peek for information gets the head clean I'm off. Got to be honest with you, I didn't even see Mini Boo. Saken now going to be tucking, cowering. He's a bit of backup, and he's got it. In the form of Devai. Top round of guns. Set Mini Boo up for success. Flash repeat. And it is good. Damage there. And the kill. Still it's traded. Hunter's Fury negated. Perfect. Yeah, beautiful work there with the ult. Good timing from Forsaken as well, because he was tagged up. He was the one who was really in danger of going down here. Tagged up by the cam, backing away. And it's a lot of chaos strewn into the mix. One player. Can, can Boo. Boo dodge it? Yeah. Does that make a difference? Does he perhaps call them back over towards A? It looks left. quite committed. And he's just spotted him, Benji Fishy out wide. Does he expect another play? Yes, he does, Mind Freak. Unrelenting from the spot. Will not give anything away. Boo. Earns the ult, but no time left, surely. 15 seconds left. Is he really going to make a go of this one? He's getting the move on. Listen, I know he's got the new knife set, but it doesn't actually make you move any faster. Nine seconds. He wants to go for it. Seven seconds. Shut down. Predicted, dealt with. Little disappointing the way that Heretics were posted up in B main there, just one at a time, swinging forwards, instead of trying to get somebody posted with Benji. There are multiple angles there that need to be covered. This play, though, great idea from Forsaken. Seconds really left. nice punish of that ultimate being used, but it's this moment I'm wondering about. Paddy is just kind of looking at the wall while Rian's yeah. sets up a dart. I feel like he could have been double holding that. Nevertheless, Paper X are squeezing away, and, and I was setting expectations for this defense half based on what we saw when Paper X played against DDG. Right? And we saw that the defense half, actually, they weren't able to get those rounds on the board very easily. But here, it's looking great at dealing with what Heretics have. There's been clear improvement and awareness of the kind of things that Heretics want to do, that mid play in particular. Yeah. Have the right answers. Almost everything that's gone thrown their way. And this is now the final timeout for the Heretics coaches to try to have some of their own input. And we're pretty far away from the finish line. It'd have to be another six rounds that Heretics get on the board, twice as fast as Paper X, to be able to get the win here. And you heard it from Mixwell's mouth earlier on. He said the winner on Sunset is probably going to win the BO3. Now, I think Heretics still has win, uh, win possibilities on Lotus and Split, but if Heretics end up getting stomped here, puts a very different flavor on the series for sure. Really does. Team like Paper X stepping up at the right moments. I'm out of here. here it is, fast. Through with the paranoia. Through into elbow now with the dart. Careful here. Couple of waves of that util, making Careful sure all here. of it is clear, but it's given up entirely for the retake. Paper X, look at them, happy for it. And this comp is really good at retaking too. You have a lot of utility to throw out between the Gecko, the KO, and the Paranoias, it can be overwhelming. One way smoke blocks off one yet, so we can't actually fight into that angle. Still, a chance for the buy. He's not smoked off at all. Mini Boo, no way, drops down. Damage done, but still hits the head. Here, traded forwards, detained into the corner. Left cowering, forsaken, can't adjust the aim in time. It's good movement from Brienz, but he will fall regardless. Man sent flying, cage in his face, something not to be deterred. Molly to set that one up, out through elbow. I think Boo just spotted the tip of the operator there. Now oh, it's been called, a bit of a pause, pump the brakes. Wait, it's out. out. Smoke online, mind freak. I know exactly. I'm guessing it's the right timing, wants to take it with a neural theft. Forwards there. No danger with the mosh pit. Second burst and a neural theft as well, so the position's revealed. The shot fired off, something. He's so fast. He's hoping to take a rapid elbow. reposition, isn't he? Yeah. 
He will have to slow down a little just to check these positions. And the longer he takes, the more Heretic should start to think about different angles. Here, Boo gets smoke over towards A-Link, allows looking. Benji to hold. He's holding the angle now. It all comes down to this one angle and one fight shot going wide. Repositions back together. Double up. There should be no danger in this round. Should be no danger at all. Should be no danger at all, he says still. And look at something. He knows it's over. Scratching his head, forced to try to save and reposition. Perhaps even a little frustration. I don't know how, but he seems to expect himself to hit shots like that. But it's going to be Heretics getting up to eight. Well, something escapes with the operator online. There was... There were plenty of moments where that could have gone wrong. Another situation, actually, where Minibu is still able to get the entry Spike going. Down despite the fact that he's been shot at by an opponent. He's like already so weak by the time he manages to land that kill on the VAR. <laughs> is that a little uh, nod of respect for how good the entry was, or is he looking at somebody else's kills? Something looking to set up an early peak here, perhaps? Often there's going to be a cam with a paranoia to go off cam info, but Benji's over towards B this time. Uh, something backs off. Didn't like the look of things early on. And Benji's got his cam actually inside Mind Freak's pit. Could end up being useful at some point. Oh, well. I've going to be at least taking down all the kit here. Osh pit held. Ready for some sort of play to punish. Where does it land? Not a clue. It's it's for an elbow retake. They're going to throw that in paranoia, I think, if Monyet oh, can get Monnet this and get out. Walks forwards. Not expecting him to be up there. Madness. I mean, massive gap in the playbook, at least in terms of the timings that he was taking inside his head. Right here. Yeah, the fact that there isn't a piece of utility for anybody that could be holding close there. I was really expecting the paranoia to be coming through, but he just, I mean, he just ran it down. There are large holes, and that knife gives good information. Minimum two players tagged up by it. Something's got the op. If they walk onto this line, they could be in danger. Now, Heretics do have util. Yeah, underhanded flash forwards. Alt M flying. Still the shot will connect. Drops Paditek down seconds. to his knees. Repeating Forsaken. You are absolutely nuts for that. But he needs some help and he needs it fast. Another shot missed and going wide forwards with the rifles. Claiming the territory, claiming the ground. Slow up. Bounding. The options are so damn limited. Where the hell is this one going? He's out wide into the open. Rians. Peeking into it. Footsteps heard. Another shot missed. Res online here. Wall in their faces. Res now here. Towards the back of it with something going. Down a spray. Just can't be managed. Can't be wrangled. Forward in time. Mind freak. 2v2. Turns it into it here. Still with the op. Sends him out. Wingman flying. Mind freak falling. That was the only rifle player. But now the upgrade. At least the side gray picked up. Something's here. Still, it's a lot to handle, a lot to manage. Doesn't know the positions. Minibu's playing tucked to really the safety at the back of the side. So, yeah, just got to give it up once more. Another round win here for Heretics. And Boo and Minibu, <laughs> they'll give their lives for it over towards the end of the round. But both of them played that situation beautifully. It's their duels that end up making the difference. You'll see that Boo was the only player ready to stop them. Here, this duel. Had the Vi got that, it's curtains. And Mini Boo on the other side held down a really important push from Mind Free. Two straight up 1v1s where Boo and Mini Boo are holding angles. They get the duel win and it pushes them across the line with the player advantage. None of the fancy set play stuff. Just guns out gaming. You know, maybe one day, Brad. We'll see x on this team as well, and we can have the Susana <laughs> brothers playing up against the Boo brothers, you know? Maybe. And Screaming I mean, the Vera come back. Yeah. And we have a tag team. The perfect world. I mean, the Susanto family, they run deep when it comes to playing video games. <laughs> they do. I've seen, I've, listen, I've seen the streams there, of his younger brother. There is an older Boo brother as well. Listen, just get them all involved, man. Yeah. have a family reunion yeah, on absolutely. the big stage. Yeah. Get Golden Boy to cast it like his WWE. <laughs> He would love that. Oh my he would God. Absolutely, he's looking at me, he's nodding. He would love that. Is that the Susano Brothers music? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would go crazy. <laughs> but what a game we've got here. Both of these teams wrestling with each other, trying to figure out the ways to be able to get past different setups. That round, it felt like it should have been a bit of a gimme for Heretics because they were offered that pick at the very beginning over through Elbow. 
with Monyet just kind of running it down. That's part of a set play, right? But it does make Monyet look a bit silly in the moment. And now the economy, not in a great spot for Paper X. Team Heretics favored to tie this one back up. Absolutely anybody's game on Sunset. Oh, deep flash. Just walking to set it up with the dart against the back of things. So nobody holding close towards B. Delayed knife. Good info. Surely gathered. Yeah, and that I think is going to cancel the hit. Everybody's pushed though from Paper X. Look at I, this. I think Heretics think this is a B stack. I am not sure they're going to anticipate three players being pushed out A here. You know, when it's quiet on B, but you end up getting knifed and there's a smoke in your face, you think, okay, they're going to start rotating here to stack the site. And it's only really Boo and Benji watching behind. They do have a trip. Things here should be somewhat safe, but they're stuck in B main right now. And the timing. Timing. Push off the angle, finally noise being made. Nade going, flying forward, something. He wins his fight with the jewels, at least with the rifles. It's traded out, falls, and another pause put into the play here with 45 seconds left. What do they choose to do? Forsaken, ADS. It's gonna be a bit of a demon with it here. Flash forwards as well, no connection stuck. from it. They are really stuck in place, finding it difficult to get through any of this. Stuns now. Flying and rip forwards with the wall on top of it. The entire team decides it. We're going to take back side. We're going to take it now. Together. Brute force is the goal. We're going to get that plant down now into the post. And even just stepping forwards into Boba. Divide. Didn't have a rifle in his hands, but at least Forsaken does still. Looking for the wraparound. Players, plenty of them. Ready for the targets here. Heads could pop and heads could come clean off. Still watching. The damage. Low enough. One shot in the chamber, Monier sends it! Holy! What is that? That's an unbelievable round! Paper X had them scrambling! Team Heretics just heads on a swivel the entire time. A lack of decisiveness there, I think. A decision had to be made. Do we go and push into the players flanking us? Do we commit to site? All right, in the end, with 35 seconds left, they decided to go towards the site. But even then, once they got to Boba, they didn't commit forwards. They went back towards the site and allowed themselves to get tangled up again. I mean, you could just see how uncomfortable that was from the Heretics' point of view. And frustration in the camp. That was their opportunity to tie things up at 10 to 10. They had the economy punished for Paper X, and now it's them coming into the round with Sheriffs. Disaster. They're going to need something similar, aren't they? And what a piece of Paper X magic just when they needed it. Now, as much as the triple push out of A, despite all of the B presence, did work for them in the previous round. This time, there's only Mind Freak home, and if Team Heretic step on the gas here, Paper X are going to have to play retake. Only given it up. Yeah, top mid, flash forwards with the rifles. Oh my goodness. How has that happened? Sheriff kills still, cleared out. He can't escape with the ult. Looking for it, three versus three though. There's still that danger there. Backside again, cool made, walking up for now. Mini boot and Padatech, anything to set this up? No, Yuto didn't just want to take it. Raw aim, raw gunfights. Rian's last one forwards. Presses the advantage, or at least he thought there was one there. It's Forsaken who shuts that down. So up to 12 now for Paper X. And Forsaken did everything he possibly could in that round just to get them up to that point. Had a flash for the first peak. His teammates fumbled it. He's there, the Next safety point. net, the backbone of the team. As he has been all tournament. Yeah. I don't think he was the best player for this team during kickoff, but at Madrid, he's given us that classic forsaken performance. So consistent and good for the multi-kills in all of these really big rounds. So up to map point, Paper Rex here, and looking like they want to start the round again with a stack on the A site. Team Heretics might be set up for a fast play themselves. It's the coin flip here with a util sent flying, offloaded. One yet though, he's deep onto the angle, deep onto the line. Another day, don't know if he's a tenant for that particular spot, but still he's there, fakes the TP, forwards of a slow warp. They have funneled them now. Team Heretics, they want nothing to do with this area. With the wall down, luckily, player remaining behind, just enough to break it. And Team Heretics, they do that same smoke in mid, and they have options here. Do you try to put some pressure in mid? Do you try to put some pressure market? Paper eggs. Playing passively throughout middle of the map, but actually getting a lot of information on the extremities. B main, A main, held by Mindfreak and Divide. 
the precipice now. No casualties, of course, but with slowdowns of this, anything could happen. Something, there's no way. Going for walking straight down towards it. Palatek stared there, as a trade. Mini Boo, fast on the response. Now forwards to the wall here with the draw, and it just fades away and breaks. Forsaken is out wide. Just round the ankles, walking for the mid round. It's Munyet out into mid, lost. Man's just in the source here. Dvai forwards, looks to just reclaim some of that ground left. here, maybe. Kill my two, it may be, it might, but still Team Herricks are too disciplined. Well drilled, they do not want to let it slip now. 4v1 for Heretics to be able to deny the first of the map points that Paper X have got. This round was so bizarre. Paper X really scrambled by the slower pace. Team Heretics didn't put anybody on the outer wings of the map, grouped up in mid and just waited for Paper X to push for information. But what confuses me a little bit, Bren, is they already had good info over towards A main and B main. They, they knew that nobody was trying to actually take space in A main. You know, after the drone came through, one of them could have broken it, maybe set up some play to gain info afterwards. But they just went for a walk re-clear of mid yeah. twice. Once with something and then once with one, yeah, I believe it was afterwards. So that's a lovely lifeline for Team Heretics to grasp hold of. There are still two chances here for Paper X to be able to close out map one. We've been hammering on about how important this initial map is. You know, the sunset, one of the best maps for both of these teams. And even Mixwell as well in that halftime interview talking about it. Whoever wins map one, he reckons will win the entire series. That's just how important it is. You can feel that tensions are running high here. The new guard versus the old guard. Chance of slipping away despite the early beginnings to the series. Now, Team Heretics have seen that Paper X have begun stacking the A site at the start of these rounds. So, if this is a little faster towards B main, I wouldn't be surprised. But Mini Boo's not there, so that entry power. What's with the timing? What's going on here? I'm broken. They want to try and fight this one forward. See, oh, they missed I mean, Benji. They're weaving in and out the smokes. Yeah, this is just a confusing round all in all. Mini Boo, he's through market. It's a wall through the window, man. He's already worked his way through and stuns up. Connects. My break. He's still stunned. Hunter's Fury, though. Connection wide here. Something back into it. It's chaos, man. Pure chaos. But can you expect anything less? Paper X, they thrive in it. Born in it, molded by it. Benji. Left to pick up the pieces and maybe forge something out of it, but it's a triple face. You do not stand, you fall against this team. And map one goes entirely their way. <laughs> In classic Paper X fashion, the final round. The thrash comes through, and I think I'll have to detain on both players trying to follow up on Mini Boot. And those rounds, one team looks like they're in a disadvantage. A couple plays in B main, stuck inside the smoke, my freak man yet. And yet, their team bails them out. An insane map one, but plenty more to go. Do not go anywhere, you know you're not going to want to miss it. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings. Hey, man.
Standing right now with Coach Alex. Alex, uh, I gotta say, I was sweating, and I pretty much feel like the rest of Pacific was too. At what point do you feel like uh, the tide was turning in your favor at that map? Uh, I think it was incredibly back and forth, honestly. I think uh, if I had to say one moment, it would be when Monet won his one v one with a sheriff against Batitek. I think uh, did wonders for his confidence, you know, in hours as well. So that's probably the most crucial point of the game. Well, uh, I think Pacific's awake now, so let's see uh, if you guys can close it up. Mika was worried about Pacific. I guarantee you Achilleo somewhere is losing all his hair right now with the way things are turning out. What a game that was. And honestly, I'm just going to flat out say it. Paper X just pulled that out of their ass. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely <laughs> did. Lovers of good, honest Valorant <laughs> screaming and crying at present moment. Because honestly, Team Heretic should have won this map. But they lost a few critical egos. They couldn't come through on their pistols. And Paper Rex pull off the most Paper Rexy win possible, relying so much on individual plays, on magic, but they make it happen. Well, this is it. If they've always been able to, but without Jing, who knew if we'd see the same explosive style out of them? Here, though, a back and forth battle, as, as you heard from Alex, doesn't feel like it was anyone's game right off rip. It was down to the wire. But yeah. in the end, I think the better team won from what we saw. I loved something's use of Gecko. I mean, I think everybody you, should be playing. Did you love something's use of Gecko? Yeah, everybody should be playing Gecko the way something No, 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 no. He was new. barely we using talked, his Disney. We talked about he was offing <laughs> the majority yeah, of the yeah, round. Yeah. Do, do you, uh, 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 he yeah. was barely yeah. using his utility. He's just <laughs> shooting them. It's like he could be playing any agent. Yes. They're not even doing the KO Gecko yes. combos most rounds. I'm the lover of Hanukkah. He's going to use the op on. All right. Jet chamber. Enough of this. Sage, they have a sage in their comp. Gaia Mimi. Let's go to the Verizon high speed moment of the match. 
love it's that. Gonna be, it's going to be mind free. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is free. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. But Thanks listen here, man. Talk. The magician pulled one from the hat again here, yeah. man. This guy, I will never. This guy keeps on impressing. I mean, I've always been a big fan of Mind Freak, so it's good to see him really just continuing to flourish here. But I still cannot believe Paper X pulled off this win. Like, it was looking oh. tragic, Mitch, at certain yeah. points in time. Paper X made the right <laughs> decision. This is a roster that for the longest time had this rule that they don't make more than one roster change at a time. And I heard talking behind the scenes a little bit, hopefully not leaking too much, that oh. Mind Freak was always on the chopping block with the one other player. Every time they made a decision, it was do we drop this player or Mind Freak? And every single time, Mind Freak survived. And now he's grown into this player that's recognized as one of the best in the world. And we said it was a close game all the way. Well, he certainly pulled it through in a couple of those rounds like the high, sp high, sp high speed moment. It's infectious. We got there. You know, everyone's got a frog under their throat apparently today. But for now, though, uh, let's actually hear what Neil Zinho had to say as we get ready for map number two. Mika standing by. Hey guys, I'm standing right now with Nilzinho from Team Heretics. Nilzinho, give us a preview. What did you tell the boys in order to get their mental back into the game, especially after that map one, and get them ready for uh, Lotus? Yeah, so for me, it's been awesome. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I think the boys are feeling pretty crisp individually. You've seen it from some of the shots that we're hitting. The reason we lost that was our fundamentals just went out the window. Um, and you do that again against a team like Cooper X, they're going to pick you apart. So it was a very harsh reminder of to get our fundamentals back. And, Listen to Boo because we kind of he kind of lost control there because everyone's doing their own thing. They're running around taking aim fights and our macro just completely it was abandoned. So that's why we lost the attack uh, and we're going to change that for Lotus. So well, the crowd's on your side. So uh, let's see if uh, Team Heretics can make a comeback. I think Neil's on the money there. For, for most of that map, it seemed like Team Heretics had control. Their retakes in the first half were yeah. looking clean. They were playing the structured Valorant that we they always expect from them. But paper X everywhere that they wanted them absolutely. to be. Absolutely. But, but like Josh was mentioning on the cast, once you give this Paper X team mm -hmm. space, or once you give them opportunities, they will push all the way through. They will shut you down. They make it so much harder to go for that set, honest Valorant that Team Heretics have really perfected through this season thus far. And that puts them in a brutal position now, GB, heading into Lotus, a map away yeah. from elimination for this team who we were just talking about is one of the best in the tournament with that close loss to Sen. Which is honestly mind-blowing to think about. W Gaming truly living and breathing here in that first map. But the thing is, though, is that you got to put that first map aside, Mitch. Now you got to focus on map two, Lotus, and we'll see where we what we end up getting as far as the agents are concerned here. Don't really expect too much shenanigans, but I think ultimately this is really just a, a Heretics team that now is going to be feeling the heat on that stage. Absolutely. And we mentioned Mind Freak a lot. His Viper is good. His Omen is even better. And we expect him to be switching over to that here on Lotus, having already fired off on all cylinders. I think he's about to add another one. This this could be dangerous for Heretics because I've, so. I've seen the side of Paper X snowball before, and I'm starting to feel it this time. Yeah, and it was a close game that Heretics lost on this map against Sentinels. I think their biggest issues on their defense was that Sentinels was fighting forward into oh. smokes, getting ahead of their retakes and really punishing them. But it has been a stronghold map for this squad for quite a while. Looking at the agent select now, thankfully, something playing Jet. I don't like a double duelist comp. I was going to ask you about for Paper X. <laughs> I was going to ask you about the double duelist. What do you make of that, man? I certainly prefer the Jet over Arena, which is what he's been running before. Although, considering that it is something, again, he's one of those players that could make the argument for it. But I think this composition, it can allow them to go back to that dive that they're so goddamn good at. The pressure is going to be applied to heretics from the second those barriers go up. You're sacrificing the Viper. So on your attacking side, you ha you tend to be a lot more telegraphed on these hits, and you're sacrificing that second initiator, which means re-clearing is hard. Heretics, a chance to stay alive here in map number two. All I know is this joint's going to be insane, and I just want to jump back into it. Let's see if we get a map three. Brand side show, you take it away from me. Exciting one here for Lotus, isn't it? My goodness, a lot on the line in this elimination game. Heretics, but the back's against the wall. Listen, the crowd might be behind them, but listen, all the sport in the world sometimes can withstand against the W key, which Paper X, they know perfectly well at the back of their hands. So when we saw Heretics play against Sentinels, Neil talked to them after map one, map two, they came out destroyed. Have Heretics tightened up those fundamental plays. What they felt like was missing here. One-way smoke boot. 
Adams tucks himself behind. He's got plenty of backup right behind him now, but they break, so don't like the they sight do not of like it. it. As soon yep. as that one way is put down, they're like, nah, we are not going mount. A very greedy turret there being placed by Benji, letting them know if anybody's over towards A at all. And they don't care about a util either, disrespecting it. Lombard triggered. I mean, listen, not even worried about the protocols for clearing for a tree. They're only just doing it now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a little bit, oh, here we go. They're going for an aggressive post plan yeah, as well. Trip broken immediately, one way. Up through, so Nate set this up as soon as the first wave is going to be sent flying from Heretics. Heretics played every single defense round on Sunset as a retake. And we're going stairs. And doing the same again here. They're all going stairs. I don't think yeah. Paper X are ready for this one at all. Look at this. They have to try and fight them forwards. The dash by something. Damage done. Look at that. No kills collected. It's all being filled up in the feed. A full of green. And greedy, maybe, perhaps, is what you would describe it for Paper X. Trying to play that one. Just misreading what kind of timing they can take. That is a great retake setup, though, from Heretics. Most of the top teams that we see play do put the pressure over towards Heaven. You think about how Sentinels play the, the uh, post plan setups as well. Same one way, as you list in position up towards there, somebody playing pit. I mean, usually there's going to be a pretty heavy denial in that area. And Rians just wanders in. Yep. I mean, he has such a free passageway to the site based on the utility that they throw from tree. And yeah, Alex head in hands there at the gap that's developed. And remember, last time we saw Paper X invest into this kind of uh, round. They went for some kind of force after losing the follow-up, but deciding not to go for a force buy here. Ooh. Whoa, chances there. Yeah, very risky timing to go for, actually. you got to be worried on timings like that. All up, all down, Marshall in the hands of something. Point pistol round, though, for Heretics, two of one. Didn't end up winning any of them in that prior map. It's part of the reason why Paperx were able to take it. You know they were losing in some of the other metrics. Cover going out. Okay, hell of a kill. Yeah, that's just a peek from Paddy Tech punished. Trailblazer spotted that, so Benji, he's noted. He is going to be playing onto that corner. 62 health, won't go down to a single shot off the Sheriff, but the Marshal might do it. Has to back away from this, surely. Still, took some south, but now backing away, respecting with a flash in his face. Out over the top, crouching and praying. You don't get your head taken off. Another retake round for Heretics. Every single defense round in this match so far. Executes for it. Osh pit. We're going to be landing towards the back of the side as a flash forwards. Mini boo's already there. Smokes cutting up all the available angles. Mind freak sheriff still not dissuaded. Beautiful flash. Forsaken. He's called himself two. 93 health though. He's working with a bit of a disadvantage. Spike over the top. The whale. Oh, just expecting the movement. Predicted with almost ease and finesse. And it's just a repeat of that first map, except on the other side of things. Paper X winning the eco. I think the big read there is that he doesn't go to try to break the wingman immediately. Yeah. And so Rians just thinks that he's not facing the wingman at all. Completely misunderstanding where Forsaken was repositioned to. And that's... Cerebral stuff, man. But, I mean, that's devastating for Heretics again. Neil Zinio is going to be screaming. Fans are too, apparently. Here we are. Exchange of the util. Skirmish time. Paranoia. Flying stun misses. Up, stun misses. Classics. Don't want to take it with the rifles. There's a lot of danger here, but okay, might just be able to bail themselves out. Benji forwards into corner, locked down. Something. With something. It's going to be handy with the guns in his hands. Doesn't matter what he's got. Couple weak players, but a 1v3 for Paddy to try to take when he's only got that Heretics classic. And yeah, just going to be watching for the smoke. Some mind freak. Just down. Any available options? Any weaknesses there? And so, again, Brent, I, I mean, this is actually one of the first rounds where we see Heretics not playing for the retake, right? They're actually fighting over rubble control at the start of the round. But I'm worried because in most of these rounds, they are just giving Paper X the plant. And I don't think that that's a feasible way of being able to play 100% of the time. It doesn't matter how good your retakes are, you're not going to win them all. Yeah. You're going to give Paper X too many advantages with the clock on their side once they get the spike down. And their positioning, able to adjust. See what they end up doing here. Alt starting to get online. Seekers could be potentially large, and something has it on. Hello. Yeah, he uses the smokes across here. There are many players waiting for this, but he has the dash to get himself out of there. 
This engages forwards. It's a call going to be made here by Forsaken, using the Seekers now on top of him. Molly at the feet there through the door. Padatek, a few straight bullets. Monyet was fast through with that satchel. One more, two hands. Going to be using it to try and cut himself up onto the gap, but this is a good call by Heretics, so or at least it was. Topple in the end. Two of them just trying to fight the one section of the site. Now backside control. Game for Monier, but he is alone. One man down and out here, just spamming randomly with the bullets going all over the place. Mini boot doesn't stand a chance of getting that trade. And if Neil Zinio was worried about the fundamentals, Again, he is not going to be impressed in that situation. Wingman goes out to clear one side of it. Miniboo still has slide available. They don't go for a double push through the smoke to try to make sure they can trade anybody who might be playing to it over towards the pit or the box. Rians just jumps out the smoke on his own. Discipline is slipping. It is. And this is one of the biggest things, actually, that has powered both of the EMEA teams through so much success. And if you can't hold it together when the pressure is on, you aren't going to be able to make it deep in tournaments like this. Never been on more than this. Heat up to max. It's elimination. Keep reminding everybody at home because sometimes the format can get confusing. But yeah, that play, I mean, listen, that call to just collapse onto the one section of the site almost goes their way. They get blinded up in the process, but yeah. And Divine finding big value out of playing solo initiator Sky, something that most teams have moved away from. This looks like Miniboo wants to take a timing. He goes for this kind of flash peek, looking to try and take a fight really early on with a smoke. He's normally good for it. He's just been so sharp. Go for it again. There it is. Plenty more where that came from, Miniboo. So good. Yeah, rings true. But on the other side of the map, Boo tries to find Solo over towards Mound, dies. That opens up the seaside. And it's only Miniboo that has a rifle online. Look how quick something is exactly to get into position. And turns, but he has to adjust here. Surely there's a high low goal. What is happening over here? <laughs> okay, for for apparently no reason, Mind Freak is taking a 1v2 and winning it because he has the rifle and you don't. Yeah, why not? Rians, by the way, got the oh, but okay, only had the sheriff anyway. And Mini Boo, who opened it up, is now asked to ace in order to close it if there was any chance of being able to win the thrifty, which it doesn't look like there is. Yeah, all over the place. Uh, and again, I think a lot of people are going to be thinking to themselves, right, we were just waiting for Paper X to wake up. But they have had some rough tournament showings in the past. Slow where they... start for 2023. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other side of things, I feel like a result like this, if it continues spiraling out of control, is gutting for Heretics because they were only a few rounds away, as the desk was saying at the beginning of this match, from putting Sentinels in this kind of position. Yeah. And we saw, if they're having close games against Sentinels, and they were the first team to be able to qualify through the playoffs, they should be able to be considered favorites in a matchup like this, you would think, with the current form of Paper X. Surely. But so much of the pressure that Paper X provides with their willingness to take fights and their pace is catching Team Heretics off and opening up cracks that other teams have not been able, really, to exploit. Yeah. Paper X, public enemy number one for the armchair analyst. It's already been through that whole <laughs> spiel, don't get me wrong, because you the get shot. they play. Yeah, you get shot, you die, Mind Freak, classic example. Thank you for showing me. And, um, you know, they, they don't play orthodox comps most of the time. This is maybe the closest you can get, but they don't even play double controller here on Lotus. No. Uh, but it's about the tempo and timings that they take and the confidence in which they take those fights, and it really does rattle some of these teams if they haven't played against a team like this. And listen, there's not many teams in the EMEA that are going to be playing like Paper X. And look at the amount of utility that Team Heretics are now conditioned to put into Mound. And Paper X, they're going to start to spiral off in another direction. Benji Fishy has a good retake ultimate here, but he's in a fairly committed position on site. Not completely. How do they want to play this? There are three players ready to defend. Round the back. Oh, it's watch for two players. They're onto the corner, so Munyet doesn't get away with it. In fact, Forsaken. An attempt to at least grapple some control of the map. He's alone, though, doing so, and he will be falling. So, great opener now for Heretics. And a change-up, right? They played that actually to hard anchor the site and flood defend instead of going for the retake. And I think mixing that up is probably going to be a bit of a win-con for them. Uh, you don't want to count Paper X out, though, still in a 3v5. Smoke props. Where is Big Freak off to? Taking risks, exploring over towards heaven. Something with the op. He just picks into that. I mean, Heretics are playing that with the most discipline, the utmost discipline. Two players, at least going to be 
Ryan trying to get into position to trade this one here forwards. They hear it. The dash. And now with a lockdown place down. It's all orchestrated in time. Something seems to go for it. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Still to his back here. Plenty of players now rushing into it. No detainment. Forwards. Mini Boo taking a fight. And it is galvanizing. Sticking onto the defuse, but a stray shot found. Half though. What it out. Mini Boo. What a time to come alive. Outrageous round from Mini Boo. His team needed it. That was almost thrown away. Heretics were up in a 5v3. Mind Freak went wandering out through heaven. He caught Boo, and something was producing Magi with the Operator on site. The first kill, he finds the timing, but the second kill... Benji knows he's there! <laughs> oh! It's a jump spot as far as Jiggle to bait out the initial shot, and Mini Boo, he saves the day. It's this final one, to me, that's the, almost the most impressive of it, because he has to yes, react to Divide being there and hit the headshot. So now we see more of this rubble pressure as we get into the round. Yeah, we are in the thick of things. Yep, something dashed out, already burnt that. Looking to try to take an operator shot early. And so Heretics have made this adjustment on the defense side. We are going to control rubble, even if it costs us the Mosh and the Dizzy at the beginning of the round. You know, we are just going to invest those. But I do like the way that Mini Boo is rotating instantly after going for that stun at the start of the round. So they just make it feel like there's three players over towards A, and they still have the Neon ready to go for a push like this. What's it called? Face it down with the smoke. <sighs> Shot going wide there for something. Look at out with his life, or does he want to go for seconds? You can never really tell. Deep up position as Boo gets spotted. Doesn't look like no. it. Yep, Monia's right behind him. There's no protocols in place for this one, and he's playing it patiently. Really, wetting it out. Could be a risk being played, but no, he's just lined it up for the two. And they are beamed down. No chance with the spike dropped at his feet. Lovely gift just granted to him. That's just a big mistake from Devi then. Not seconds, using the dog to try to check up top. Not thinking about that. Something. This spike into the pick on Mini Boo is going to get cleaned up by that swing from Rian. That's one. You do not see that very often. Teams not thinking about clearing top of rubble. Instant hit at the red button there. Alex, slam on the desk. Accidentally hit the timeout button. <laughs> but I mean, when you see situations like that, you do have to remind your team what's going on a little bit. Uh, and on top of that too, I really feel like the way that Team Heretics are playing their defense macro is working here. That's another thing that Neil Zenio pointed out in what was a fantastically articulate coach interview, where he said, yeah, our fundamentals are missing, but also, Boo lost control of the macro because everybody else is so frantic trying to take their own fights. And you need, a team like this in particular, needs one central idea. Yeah, maybe you can you can leave it to the decentralized nervous system of Paper X the Octopus, right? You can, you can let those kind of teams run a democracy of IGLs all meeting together in Athens <laughs> to decide where they want to hit the site. But for, for heretics, they need a hierarchy. They need a leadership figure that's going to put them all on the same path. And I think their game plan for the macro defense here is really good. They put pressure early towards rubble. You're going to see it again here, I bet. You know, a stun, a smoke, the uh, mosh being used as well as a dizzy. Rian picks up the dizzy. Mini Boo is already booking it over to C, expecting a reaction on the other side of the map. And you know, if Paper X decide to fight, Mini Boo will stay. Careful. And this time, it looks like they want to fight with the showstopper. Heretics might have to be a little worried. Divine with the Odin spam as well. It's going to be spam at a potential angle as well that they're going to cross themselves into. Here it is. Colliding, clashing, battle lines drawn, rockets set, fly, no! Denies! And it's heretics! They reign supreme! Don't you dare step forward towards a rubble. Full territorial control. But well, Paper Rex are not going there again. If that was the round called by Alex, he will have been expecting a very different outcome. How on earth? Did Monia get so overwhelmed by Mini Boo? I, every time I watch Mini Boo play the Neon, <laughs> I am outrageously impressed at what he does. He somehow manages to, to dodge, duck, dip, weave his way. What they pushing there off the back of the paranoia? He slides underneath Monia, shoots him. One enemy remaining. Right in the perineum. Go back, yeah. <laughs> Go back, yeah. Well. 
You're getting glimpses there, potentially just a comp getting outvalued. I mean, you don't have the same tools to try and take a pound for pound fight towards Rubble Control. And now Heretics with that in their back pocket, looking to condition again. Look at it, they sent similar util flying over towards the A side. But Paper some different ideas. They're in through B. Lombok, it's going into a completely different direction. Not sure what happened there oh. with it. You're holding util into your hands. Paranoia forwards. Boombot, though, he's still the target. Who is going out of there? Who was concerned about someone pushing even through the Viper wall? That's why he took so long to go for the TP. But it's let Paper X 2v4. And the score tied at 4v4. This comeback from Heretics has been lovely, and it doesn't look like it's showing any signs of slowing down. Wonderful beginning, especially for the defense side of Lotus. Certainly. You keep this uh, this lead, this should be lead, you know, You're expecting it. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. inevitable at this point. There was a chance there. The Forsaken just slipped through and Boo decided to watch something different, but he's on point with it. And Paper X, again, it's these macro ideas that they're now starting to struggle with a little bit. This time, they're like, right, well, we're not going to fight Rubble, but if they're committing three players to A at the start of the round, we're going to try and take that early round timing and pounce left. somewhere else around the map. B seemed like a good idea, but they just weren't able to capitalize even with Rien's peeking with utility in his hands. Paddy got a very fast response with that snake bite going down. And Monyet, the final one left for 10 seconds. Just has his aim in the wrong direction. Heretics take the lead. And frankly, they've already done a spectacular job on their defense. <laughs> and that's after going 4-1 down. I need this. Holt's building up for Heretics on top of it. It's all looking good. Final bullet there that Patty decided to spray with, God. where he catches Mind Freak. Not quite sure if Mind Freak himself was vulnerable, but there was a snake bite down there to try to put pressure on the players getting in. Squeeze being put on these Paper X players. What will be the answer? All the way over towards C. Getting a move on, getting a bit of a jog on there. Dash now activated. Something updraft forwards. They've beaten Mini Boot to the site. Yeah, right into it, aren't they? Towards the back of the site now. With the turret taken care of. Do they want to seek to try and fight this one? Surely Heretics might have some protocols. Listen to this. Look at this man. Just straight through the gap. Something flies his way out of there. Plant now down. First kill. Advantage now for them, but Thrash in through. No, broken almost immediately there. And the trip really doing the most to slow it all the way down. Trailblazer now being utilized. Device bots too. It's going to be called that for his team. Dizzy dealt with. Popped like a balloon straight into the sky here, but now it comes down to the gunfights, and something is unleashed entirely. This guy will not take no for an answer. Ace stolen away, but I don't think they care. It's a round on the board. And finally, Paper X find that early round timing. Right, They go over towards C at the beginning of this one and create themselves a lovely little angle for something to fight over. This one over the top of the smoke. Great stuff. And don't overstay their welcome either. Bit of anti-synergy, I think, in terms of Rian's uh, utility as he went to try to retake. <laughs> but Paper X will be super happy about that. They can still make a serious go of this attack half. Yeah, they certainly can. And everybody grouped up again over towards C. Listen, if it works, just keep running it. Apparently, it's the Paper X way. Right, but this time, Paddy is there so early, so there is going to be a vulnerable here. Yeah, this is the adaptation here. Nana Swarm, vulnerable, applied with the snake bite players. They are doubled up, moving towards it. Another flash here, just spots it as well. Glowing the halo ring around the head. Benji, Fishy, beautiful with the movement. Offsets it just enough and sets himself up for another one, but still spray down. <laughs> Mini Boom! Oh my god! So good with it! Just impeccable stuff. And already anticipating the TP. Mind Freak reclaims the spike. The players though have scattered to the winds. They are expecting it towards A, yeah. towards B. And this is where Mind Freak can absolutely. Freak their minds. I was hoping you wouldn't say it. <laughs> but I mean, the mind games here genuinely are so huge, right? Yeah. Everybody on Heretics backs off, anticipating that omen ult. Spike. And Mind Freak's tucked himself down over towards water. He's managed to engineer himself quite a good opportunity to win this. Yeah, he has. He will be facing against oh. Mosh, Wingman on Diffuse, Paranoia. So Heretics. These are the players that didn't actually have to flood defense C, so they still have a lot of util. Shadows traveling. 
First layer of it, Mosh, the fuse, sticking through. No, 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 the bullets do not connect, but he stops it onto half. They still don't claim the kill. What is the call? Paranoia forwards, cuts off the sound cues, Rians, he's just sticking it, he knows he can. That is immaculate stuff by Heretics. Beautifully done. Playing with the noise cues. And Heretics take themselves into the lead. So now Paper X, from a macro perspective again, Brent, what do you go for? Because you thought the C hit was going to work. You thought you could beat the timing of Mini Boo getting over to the C site. And instead, <laughs> it's Patty who runs in to help Benji. And Patty, he just goes in there as a utility sponge. Oh, yeah. But it allows everybody else to focus on Patty, and Benji gets that little safe spot to be able to pick up too. Same again, three players control rubble for the defense. Paddy immediately sprints over to try to help Benji anticipating the C hit, but instead, Paper X. Okay, we're gonna go for the late round reclear over towards rubble. Making noise over towards C. I mean, it does pull all sorts of players over. Boo, skip it a hop. He has to just try and tuck his head in, and he does just narrowly avoiding the knives, but he can't avoid the explosive. The bullets follow him all the way up here. Now, Rian's in position way ahead of the curve. That's something. Did not think anyone was home. Northraft will reveal the location of a few of these players now. Still, they set themselves up into the post plan. It's a good position for it, but Munya, or at least Mindfreak, has decided to play for backside on top of this box. Now, it's unusual, unorthodox. Last time the retake came from tree. Oh, it came oh, from stairs, sorry. It is again, once more players. Doubled up, Forsaken will fall. Breaking the util, though. Back of the site. Removing one, still with the judge in hand. Not enough can be done here. Mindfreak has got so much more to do. Can't do it. Can't withstand it. Pit down. Doesn't cover the diffuse entirely. It's not a hits. good pit. The sound. Q forwards. Damage. Just about. And half on it. Plenty more time as well. So, so Heretics. Much. That's a 7-5 finish here on the defense side of Lotus. They're going to be more than happy with that. Yeah, they're going to be so pleased with what they've been able to put together. Four out of five of the rounds for Paper X. We're right at the start. And Team Heretics win the pistol, and Paper X break that, go on a run, and somehow Team Heretics are still able to get back into this. And yeah, it all points towards the Heretics advantage. Well, we know they're going to be happy. Let's find out what the fans think. Hola, gracias. Estamos aquí con la gente del barco para ver qué opinan del día de hoy porque es increíble. How does it feel to be in front of this crowd in your town supporting your team? ¿Cómo te sientes eh, apoyando a tu equipo en tu ciudad con toda esta gente apoyando a tu equipo? Solamente tienes que verlo. Hemos venido aquí a demostrar que Queretis va a ser el club más grande del mundo y de la historia y para eso se necesita una afición a la altura y creo que en este evento está quedando claro quién es la mejor afición del mundo porque sobre todo somos el sexto jugador de todos esos, de esos cinco jugadores que están ahí que se están dejando el alma por nuestro escudo y van a levantar Master Madrid en casa representando al mejor país del mundo y al mejor club de la historia. They are here to show... They are here to show the world that they are the best uh, fan base in the world, that this is the best country in the world, and that that shield, that team, is the best team in the world. Solo me queda pedirte una cosa después de estas palabras, y es que puedes animar a esta gente a que le dé la fuerza heretics que necesita para ganar este mapa. Señoras y señores, ¿quiénes somos? ¡Heretics! ¡Heretics! Creo que con esto ya queda todo demostrado. Pues eso es todo con la gente del barco. Yo que os lo devuelvo a vosotros los castes. Gracias. I got most of that. Oh man, I wish I could speak Spanish. Because <laughs> that, listen, that chant was hype. It was hype. Listen, the fans, but of course, are behind this team. But I, I mean, I rolled a perception check there. Zero. <laughs> No understanding. Yeah, yeah, but listen, you know they're excited, you know they're happy. And they should be. This is a great position for Heretics to be in. Yep. Not the fact that they're down 0-1 in maps, obviously, but the fact that they put up seven on the defense side and looking towards, on the horizon, a split where Paper X looked a little dodgy with an unusual composition. Neil Zinio talk between map one and map two may be becoming the thing of legends. We'll have to see if Paper X have got something to say about that, though. Done wonders for them. Now, the Tizzy popped early here. 
Something removes it. Did have to use the stash, though, in response because he didn't want to get overwhelmed, but there's no follow-up, no rush afterwards. It's a fake pre presence over towards C-Mount, right? When something fights over it like that, it makes it feel like there's a big stack over towards C. And instead, the trap play is Monia hidden in a corner on A. Yeah, and he's about to give away his position. He's, I think. Flash, he's just opened the door, blinded up! And it's a complete collapse. I mean, listen, could go in either direction. Still, only two players left to stand. Withstand that kind of pressure. Boo's already stuck his way through, but he's being watched for. Understanding that fully. Benji, fishy, nade out and wide. But a couple of chances, but no dice. Not with the kills here. That is great. I love that pistol round play from Paper X. All right, when you're on a pistol round and you see utility and presence over towards mound, you're going to think that the stack is over there. And teams are normally going to play some kind of 1-1-3 on this map. And here, I mean, the frustration from Boo, because he realizes he just wandered straight into that trap play from Paper X. Important pistol round for Paper X. That's a definite silence across the arena. Madrid not happy. Sends Paper X up for a nice little slam dunk for the next round here. But OK, just slowly re-clearing out towards mound now. Cam's going to be spotting it. Here we go with the judge. You should be able to absolutely eviscerate. Take your pick, Forsaken. <laughs> Boo. Oh my, where's he pulled that from? Knife in the back pocket, shanking the opposition. But he's far too good. <laughs> 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 he's going for a knife of his own. Oh, that's amazing. What am I watching? That's incredible. Has anyone told the players it's in an elimination game? <laughs> On yet? You realize your tournament life's on the line, buddy? Oh. <laughs> oh, I love how much fun Paper X have with every game. It is so infectious. I mean, the knife play here makes sense for Boo, right? He knows that there's a play with the judge. Let's run out of bullets. That, that one is just mental. Oh, Alex is pissed, man. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, oh, God. You would not think it's an elimination match. No, you really wouldn't. So, bonus. Round set up, a lot of util now, an explosion out towards a rubble with the walls across themselves up and a counter play. They want to try fighting this, what? A shot, nailed it with the damage, the nade on top, it's all being overlapped and through and found. So many kills, all flowing, Paper X on fire with it. Benji, a nice go of things, but not enough to withstand the pressure. And oh my, oh my, oh my, that is a, a, a wonderful round to win here for Paper X. That's a bonus round conversion. Yeah, that's monumental for Paper X. Being able to crush Team Heretics there so decisively, their economy is about to get out of control. And it also sets that fear into Heretics. Okay, we're not actually gonna be able to contest Rubble. How? How have we failed to take Rubble against a team that, you know, is playing double duelist with a Cypher here? But they still have quite a lot of tools to go with and they're willing to fight, they're willing to commit bodies. Something might be able to just clean up here. Yeah, okay, despite the fact that he was blinded up, goop on his face. Angle played by Forsaken, he's stunned. They don't expect it. They don't expect it, yet they still find the shots. Forsaken, a bit of whiffage in play. Go, go, go. Reclaimed a gun, actually. That's a massively important one. That shot was very close to connecting. Miniboo does only have 125 health. That's going to take some of the damage out of picking up that Phantom, I think. No matter how good your aim is. Trailblazer sees two. That's a call now for the Paranoia play. It has to be used in response to try and push them back, but they want to push it and re-clear it together now. Angles watch. Mini Boo, you're the most to do. Maybe you can really stand and deliver the result you're expecting here. That is the danger when you hand this guy a rifle. He's been so incredible. 15-9, but just winning enormous impact frags. All calm and collected with the aim. Hands it over as well, knows that he's the lowest player. Now he's going to be the bait being played forward. Something! Oh, hopes and dreams dash to the winds there. And all of the tension sucked out of the round in a moment. And that's the power of the outlaw. I think we've seen a double kill like that in a high pressure round from the outlaw particularly, but those bang, bang, down they went. Paperx are definitely the team that's trying to use this gun the most. You see Forsaken something using it fairly often. Yeah. Coming into the next round though, full armor on everybody for Heretics. So they're not falling into the trap of ruining their economy, but if they lose this, they're potentially in a death spiral. 
someone watching him. Trying to take a timing there with the shots. He is pretty isolated. What are you doing? That's mad. What's going on here? Hello? Opens the door. Uh, plenty of players. There's a punish. What? <laughs> just snaps onto him. Oh, that's what he was doing. Oh, that was what he was oh, Okay, he was just cheating for a second. Okay, yeah, no, I, I get it. Okay, thrash, clear it through into the site. They know it's open now, but something towards the back of it again. Can be clear. Traded, eventually removed this guy. Pesky. A problem into the back of the site. Yeah, three Boot. players. Mini boost pushed up. Has the potential for a one boost. Boosters. Heretics are winning their fights at the necessary once. Rifles in the hands of these players. Locked down through. We're going to be forcing these Paper X players. They've got to take a faster time in, and this is only four seconds. They're going to get detained. Forsaken. Forsaken. There's nowhere to watch. I mean, to be honest, if he had been detained there, would anyone have even known where he was? Mind free sure. opens the door in a 1v3, but it does not look winnable. Thrash goes just to clear out his position, too. Over the top. Hello. Open door. Open sight line. I mean, he's got two fish to dodge in this round. Mini Boo's already on the flank. Look at it. He's rapid. Right behind him, so not even going to get the chance to save this rifle, or in all likelihood. There's no way Mind Freak expects it. He doesn't. <laughs> not at all. And how are we about to praise Team Heretics for such a great recovery when the round began by something? Being able to get two kills with an outlaw in a position where you just would not expect yep, just somebody to get any. Look, Look at that. Man. Look at that <laughs> shot. <laughs> and this one, a bit more of a gimme because Paddy Tech did swing right into the crosshair. And they got the punish early on. From there, Rian and Miniboo just holding positions, able to pick off both sides of that pincer retake. And Paper X are going to take a timeout here after only losing one round. I'm not exactly sure what Alex will have spotted. Maybe he didn't like the call for the next round coming up. Maybe he was uh, wanting to adjust the macro a little bit. Yeah, thought that, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he's just telling something to tone it down. It's, it's stop, possible. Stop toggling. <laughs> it's getting too obvious. <laughs> I doubt he'll have been telling him that. No. Uh, of course not. But here we go. There's a lot of tension in this game now because as much as we are getting, as viewers, rewarded by displays of magnificent individual talent, the tension for Team Heretics in particular is raised. They've only been able to put one round together on their attack side. Normally, this map is attack sided. Yeah. We were talking about how much we favored them going into the next half when they were 7-5 up. Talking about attention. Palpable in the arena right now. It's like we're back in Sao Paulo. Yeah. The fans that are here are willing Heretics to make a deep run. They talked about, it seemed fated that Heretics got to Madrid. Nobody was expecting this team to go out 0-2. and two. But if Paper X get another four on the board, that is going to be the reality. Pinged just an outline of a rubble with four players stacking. The guns aren't ideal. But they're holding for a refight attempt here. Yeah, and okay, it's baited out. Team Heretics seem to be aware of that fact, and now they are just making Great pilgrimage over towards the other section of the site. The other side, which Forsaken is holding with just a shorty. Benji Fishy, going to be familiar with the double pump, but and the, he'll be able to navigate it. The question for Heretics yeah. in a more general sense on their attack side is, when Paper X go for an aggressive stack like that, do we try uh -oh. to punish uh -oh. it by uh -oh. playing uh -oh. quick uh -oh. ourselves? Uh -oh. Oh. 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 oh, stunned. <laughs> Cage. <laughs> Bullets going wide. Because I think what you saw there is they add a pause into the round, just in case it's a stack on C. And they're rewarded for it. Oh, yeah. Players dropping like flies now. Of course, the weaker by for them, but this is going to be evened up in terms of the rounds. Rifle has to be safe or something. Yeah, he could actually send this one and build up to his ultimate, but he's going to decide to play it a little more cautiously. Not allow the ult cycle on the attack side to start building. Paper X there decided to go for a reclear of rubble without the neon wall being used. And I think if there's going to be any cue, as to where heretics are fighting at the beginning of the rounds, I would I would use the neon wall as a really big deciding tell. Just the indicator. Yeah, because I really don't think Mini Boo's gonna be sending it very often from the games that I've watched without uh, there being something behind it. Throws it there as a little victory. <laughs> victory wall. Cuts off some of the sidelines. Will something keep their eye for you? So. I think they are going to struggle a little bit holding onto this C site if only Forsaken is going to play there. I would imagine. I mean, l let's start here. The Cypher's very good against the Neon in general. The trips are looking to try and find really big value, any kill trip kind of setups.
but I think usually you're going to want to put one of them for oh, some kind of like nice mid control or info towards another site. And I also think heretics are just slow and diligent enough to clear common positions. Interestingly enough, the trips, I mean, laid down the B site. Yeah. Happy with something just holding space towards mound. He was pre firing for the dizzy, but it wasn't sent flying. Turret in the one way. This will give them a good indicator. Has to get broken. And Boo is on a high ground angle. This guy will be able to see the exit across the site if somebody decides to play out of that mound area. Not quite. Yeah, the angle just watching the push up. Yeah. And I think something's more likely to go for that if Team Heretics put any pressure towards A, but they've been silent on that side of the map. The disease there, paranoia with the stun. I mean, beautiful util. Can't fault that side of Heretics' game. Deeply familiar with it at this point. But again, Heretics don't go for something quick off the back of it. Once they gather information, they're trying to slow the round down and pick the right site. Against a team like Paper X, though, who are happy to gamble. That can be oh, a little wait dangerous. a second. False information, Mind Freak cancels. Did he hear the shots being fired at them? Seekers now through the wall. This is going to be breaking the door. Let's create an opening here, Mind Freak. Might just get to overpawn. It's 20 seconds, Brent. Yeah, this is too through. slow from Heretics. And yes, still has a nade as well. Why do they want to go to B? Do they want to go to B? What? Did they clear the corner? Oh, yes, they wow. do. Aware of it. Trips. Trips, though. Exactly so. Oh my god, that's precarious. Adjustment. Nasty for the spray. Something is looking beautiful with it. Odin. Spraying potential there with the neural oh. fetters pointing out these targets, lighting them up. Can they find it? Still scattered, dashing forwards. At least with the satchel in flame on yet. Yeah. Forwards! He wins his fight up, Benji. In Brumain, at least a spike is planted for him, but it's a 1v2. 1v2. Nano Swarm, slow it down. Still, he might have to just hit an absolute worldy. The time pressure, it's against these Paper X players. Monyet sticking, kill, needs to be found, half on it, defuse already gained! And a real chance for Paper X. They land their shots. It was favoured for them anyway in that particular spot. And a lead regained. Too slow, I think, from Heretics speeds? in this round. I may have down to Trying like to commit to a site with only 20 seconds left added oh. so much danger. You know, even with Rians being able to pick up Mind Freak there, they're going into a trip setup. Sure, something does hit. An unbelievable 2K there. Outrageous. But just on the balance of things, there was so much danger for them to navigate in that kind of situation. Oh. And I do love the way that Paper X played that retake up through heaven, diving Monyet in and swinging behind with an Odin. Last day, it's the call's mate. Gonna hear this U-turn now, Forsaken. Playing up close to the tree, he's got an Odin's spam. He's waiting for the door to be popped here. Pops the cage, doesn't feel like he can really play that position. That is a kill trip set up on the one side of the site. Stuns, rattled through. It's forsaken in a spot to really punish this kill trip if somebody does yep. walk into it. I think it. so, it's yeah. from heaven. But it doesn't look likely. Trailblazer. Push the players back. Backside control. Now a fight towards Rubble once more, actually, with that flash. Now a thrash. Can Benji stop these guys? That's going to be the question, Benji. Right towards the back there, updraft to avoid at least entertainment, but it doesn't entirely. He's going to be. Locked up, restricted, restrained, Dubai just catching a bullet straight to the head, the spam by Forsaken again. This looks like, just again, an even round for Heretics. Earn themselves up to 10, the call has to be made here, and they will back away, so Paper X giving it up. Back and forth we go. <laughs> and Team Heretics, they tie it up 10 to 10. I just want to explain a little bit about how difficult the macro calls are when you play against a team like Paper X. We've seen Heretics are trying with Boo at the IGL position, to figure out what the setup looks like and then try to slow the round down enough to make sure they're making the right call. This round, they decide, well, Paper X are just kind of rotating around the map to figure out where we are and gambling. So let's just send it A. Let's increase the pace. Let's not bother with these slower pace rounds. And let's just try to overwhelm them and hope that they're not four stacking A for some random reason. And this time, the stack isn't there. They get in onto the A site. Everything goes cleanly. Can you imagine if they ran that? And Paper X just decided to fight Rubble. There. Would have been a totally different situation. And now Paper X going for the mound presence. So once more, Heretics looking pretty good with this Rubble control. 
Second with Yoda, no, this time I don't yeah. think it's going to be pushed back so easily. Here's it, door switch. Oh my god, the guns! Running and gunning does not win it out. Knives in the face of Benji Fishy. Couple in the chest. We'll and that's drop big. It. That's big. Benji shut down both of the duelists in the previous round when they went for that flank. So now Team Heretics have to either push forwards to get control somewhere else or set somebody else up to watch behind. Might be their aim. <sighs> Heal online, something. Back up to 100. Doubled up position, holding in the pit. Boo is low, though. It's like Breeze might just topple him over. Here we go, a rapid offense approach into it. Not clearing the corner, not expecting it. And really only just spotting the one. They're not going to expect the second, surely not. Here, through into tree, satchel back and away. Boo, again, as I said, he's low enough. Still wins his fight, and Heretics regaining that lead right back. Going for a post plan set up there with two in pit. A little bait and switch, taking that space forwards on the site instead of all getting stuck inside tree. And Paper X didn't send anyone heaven. They all went through stairs or through into site. Nobody going heaven to try to clear out here. And once again, Boo finds a really important duel against Monyet. Everything being invested into this round. See it already, it's a C take with a U-Till. Monyet's in position to break a lockdown. TV into the back, he sticks it, he sticks it, Boo is in so much danger! Uh, judge close quarters, into the action once more, it's C trips, not quite dealt with, Moshpit as well, pushes them back and away, surely you break this, surely you break this and you do. Spike, not planted. And now that Monyet's dead, Benji can go for the lockdown. Do just that. Drops it down. It's necessary at this point. Paper X seeking to try and gain an advantage, seeking to try and take the fights before they're set up and ready. They're the other ones getting punished. Two still left standing. Welcome to my what can they do with the guns? What can they do with the guns into the pit? If Paper X managed to find some angles that work for them, perhaps they can get lucky. Benji would die to just some random blasts in there. Yeah, and the judge might be the perfect gun for the job, to be honest with you. Lights up, close, forwards, here, can't land it, can't snap and adjust it. Mind Freak, spamming away, it's a beautiful pit as well, it covers every single possibility. And even just trying to save the Operator Benji, knows that's his time to strike, up to 12, Heretics can feel it, this is their lifeline, this is their chance to continue the series. The last couple of rounds, I really feel like Monya has had a couple of chances to be able to pull things through and win this map for Paper X. And instead, you saw him lose a duel to Boo, trying to retake that position over towards Tree, and in this round, doesn't find the timing to use his showstopper. When it would have been game-altering. Yeah. And propelled his team forwards. The money, dire now for Paper X. Turning point in the map. This round right here. Guardian purchases. Here in the setup, push back, doesn't activate the dash. He's really going to try and overstay his welcome, potentially. Looks to get rid of that terribly. Can't, there it is. Finds it. Heretics are going to be throwing a bit of caution into the mix here, I think. They're worried about the showstopper that Munier is holding in his back pocket. Yeah, the more time they tick off the clock, though, it could be a round winning play. You know, if they end up going for a hit with 25 seconds left, Monyet's in the right position, it's game over. Throughout this all as well, Rienz is attack side opping. I assume he has a rifle there, too. It's just that they want to hold this really slow pace. Normally, teams will start moving at about the minute mark, which is just past. And you see Heretics take a little bit of rubble control, starting to group up. Rien's ultimate here. Right. Could be huge. To Monyet, though. Cross section with the walls. And the time is ticking. They're backing away. Something is still at mound. They've never dealt with this. 40 seconds. This is the problem with playing so passively. They haven't taken any map control. They haven't forced Paper X back. At least Monyet is on the other side of the map, but something is right here. Left. So that's a dash too. Here it is, head found, popped, right off. Where's the next one? Won't get it, but still he evacuates. He's out of there. He buy some time for the rest of his team. Thrash will try and lay the groundwork. At least a bit of pavement for this team to follow through. At least walk up back onto it. Attainment, not there. Up draft forwards. Mini boot. In the danger zone, 12 seconds left. Where is this plant? And is it coming online at any Monyet. time soon? They're What's choosing. The they want to try and push all the way through. Monyet to the back wall. He didn't Four get seconds. it. No way, everybody's fallen. Time. They get him with kills. Continuation. Extension of play. Heretics not willing to go out so early. This match deserves a map three. And we will be headed to split. 
How have they managed to pull that round of all of them across the line? Baiting Paper X into going for the denial of the plant and getting the punish down. The showstopper just threaded the needle through to nowhere. Absolutely insane stuff. Well, guess what? One more map to go. Elimination on the line. Paper X or Heretics, who will we be sending home? Finding out after this. With a white hot crowd behind him chanting, Si se puede, they in fact do it. Yes, they can. Heretics force a map three. And what an incredible final round that was. I thought Monier was going to blow them up with a rocket. It turns out nothing happened. That was nuts. Absolutely incredible stuff. Heretics cannot lose in front of this home crowd. They come out and look incredible here on Lotus. I think playing it up against the Paper X, who they, they have something, playing the best map we've seen from him this tournament thus far. But the man of the match was absolutely mini Boo. Uh, this guy's neon. I, I've really never seen anything else insane. like it. Uh, it looks like he's in the Matrix. Every time he's sliding into he's one playing of these a forward different game. plays, he's yeah. just so precise at avoiding utility. And, and isolating these kills. 
Well, this is the thing, you know, Mini Boo, you might even look at the kills there and see Benji Fish, he ends up with more kills than him, but it's the way Mini Boo's doing it. It's the impact of those opening kills when you're sliding into angles, when you're taking this map control for your squad. And as you can see there, securing it by not only getting onto a site, but then continuing the aggression further into their spawn. You know, we talk a lot about Paper X being a squad, especially previously, but still a squad that has that identity as being able to come out, like uh, GB says, and punch you in the mouth. But here, it looks like they weren't able to match up pound for pound on Lotus. Just look at, look at his movement. This guy it's is nuts. hes incredible at this agent. No one else in this tournament is playing Neon, and there's a reason, because I think mechanically Neon is the hardest agent you can play yeah. in Valorant, and he executes it so well. Beyond just being a fragger and setting up these plays, his stuns are also so incredibly impactful on their defense, stalling out these hits, preventing swings and trades from Paper Rex. It, it, it really is such an incredible agent that to Heretics build around incredibly well. Yeah, it, it really feels like he's playing a completely different game. Like, I, I'm just blown away by how many Boo can take an agent that no one else is really using to great effect and own it. Own it like a like a champ. That stuff right there, that's the stuff of legend, though. But let's actually go ahead and check out our HyperX Reflex moment of the day. Uh, of course, we got to show some love, though, to the other side of the field. Got to show some love to something. He's always going to do some silliness, though, right? And Mitch, uh, you know, again, it, it's you're really going to be looking for this output from something, especially going into map three. Well, yeah, absolutely. Especially if he pulls the gecko back out. That's when I'd be excited. <laughs> but this is this oh. is absolutely Jumping beautiful. Uh, even in slow motion, it looks a little bit too quick. He's jumping around, gaining advantages on top of boxes to close out that round and gave Paper X a heartbeat towards the end of the game. That could have carried them across the line. This time, a little shy. Yeah, this was a, a honestly not a terrible map from Paper X. The players like something were going really, really strong. And on top of that, they had some great ideas. Their pistol round in the second half for in particular really impressed me. This team is showing that, well, not everything is ready. They're not in their final form yet. They still do have a lot of these preset ideas prepped up that they've executed on quite well, which is part of the reason it's so difficult. And, and here's that round in question, right? They're instantly pressuring towards C, making it look like there's more pressure on that side. Heretics is drawn into this A site. And guess what? Massive stack ready to go here. A trap play set up with the paranoia, the flash, and the nade all coming out in conjunction. When Paperworks can get ahead on these calls and execute these set plays, they have the individuals to absolutely shut you down. It was some great moments from them, and yeah, just really impressive that Heretics are still taking us to a third despite rounds like that. Yeah, absolutely, because it wasn't just used there in the pistol, right? We saw the follow-up again, I think two rounds later, where this squad is trying to push out and tank control over mound, and you see this constant bombardment, not just the paranoia, not just the sky flash, but the nade as well, the door open for a player to take a fight inside of it. It's so difficult to deal with that many players and that much utility coming your way so early on in the round. We're going to split now, and you got to be worried for Paper X because this map did not look good for, for them the other day, right? When they were playing up against EDG, they were constantly leaving space on these flanks. How Dong was abusing the A ramp control when Paper X was on their defense because they're running a triple duelist, double smokes comp that not only has no sentinel to actively hold space, but also really lacks active info because you have no initiator to make those re-clears easier. I'm actually kind of curious to see what we're going to get out of Heretics here as we jump into this one as well. There's just really like, I think at this point now, we have, uh, it's a BO1, you got to shake it off, right? A Heretic certainly riding that high coming out of that last game. But with Paper X, what we've seen, even when we were looking at those pistols, even when you think like, oh man, Paper X licking their wounds, they, they will find a way to get right back in it. So Heretics can't let them back in. Well, you know, one of my concerns is that Heretics barely made it across the line in that one. And then you look at Split, a map that they played up against KC, they beat them, and when it came back to it, KC had them figure out. They demolished them. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the EDG game. I think it was a 13-9 loss for their opponents. Well, Paper X looked a little better because Heretics was 13-5 loss. Okay. Agent select in and Paper okay. X, I'm happy to see change. this. They're reinventing the comp a little bit. Switching to Vi on to a initiator here. The Sky instead of what was previously basically that third duelist in the mix. So they still don't have a Sentinel, but their re-clears are going to be a lot stronger on defense, and they're going to have a lot more utility behind the one-two punch of something and Forsaken. This comp will play a lot more similar to what uh, we, we've seen previously in this series with these double duelist comps. I kind of like this. At the same time, you know, for, Forsaken when it comes to a Yoru can be super interesting, but I think the problem with Split is you're much more boxed in in terms of what you can do. There's yeah. not as many open avenues and not as much space for you to sneak that gate crash in. Team Heretics.
Six in front of their home crowd, a chance to eliminate one of the best teams that have made it to so many international events before. If they could do it here on Split, what a, what a moment it would be for the Spanish organization. You're so right, Mimi. This is a massive moment here for Heretics to win in front of this crowd, but PaperX can leave them silent. Let's send it back over to Brennan's Sideshow. Very much, guys. Let's get to it, man. Elimination game as it's already been set up and we set our sights to split. Now, I was anticipating we've had some silly, silly rounds. Don't get me wrong, but I was anticipating something a little bit sillier. Maybe Paperx throw in that triple duelist once more. Hasn't been the case, though. Going back to something that's a bit more, I mean, tried and tested, to put it lightly. Yeah. And it, it reminds me of Alex's arrival quote when he came today. He said, W Gaming is 2023. So we've got to figure something out for this year. Yeah, and this really feels like Madrid has been an evolution process of Paper X, yeah. trying to figure out their identity, struggling to reinvent themselves a little. Let's see how good they look running basically last year's meta composition, except with Monyet not on the Astra. Many boo. Straight up through. Look at that. Smoke to cut off the at least backwards retreat potential for the punish, but everybody just wants to react into this one. Paperx through into B, they realize it's an open site. Just looking for the hard lurk player, but I think Paperx's comp won't have as oh much of God. a hard lurk. They're in back sign. Looks like they want to try and take a five. Paranoia. It's paranoia. Off of whose contact? Something's here. Let loose, let rip. Boo hits the deck. Now there's plenty more players just trying to scoop up and vacuum back up that space. Heretics are worried about it. They're using the flash there to stop the trade, not to set up the kill. Hyper confident that something's going to win the duel. Now just walking right into it. Look at this. Forsaken! Oh my! It's, a, it's another immaculate pistol round from Paper X. <sighs> These pistol rounds and the thrifties, the, the low buys in general, have been really solid for Paper X. It's been the major win gun for them, man. It's by, I mean, the reason why these maps have been so closely contested the pistol rounds, the bonus rounds, the ecos. Yeah. Forsaken even going for the shorty in this round, just so that he can set up a play like yeah. that. So good. Boo's scratching his head just a little there. Another round where Team Heretics were very much playing for the retake. They went for that early round aggression into the opposite side of the map. A kind of funneling Paper X into the B hit so that they could play retake, and it ended up just getting crushed by post plan aggression. Gotta be wary of that. Something is on a heater so far. It's popping off. Stack though. Nade. Stun. Flooding back in. Lines it up. Babu was able to just at least capitalize from the back lines. Forwards is the position of Rians. Round and around the pillar we go. The kills found once more for Boo. But that classic. Three versus three. They haven't given up over of the weapons though. They've been dropped down. Not really reclaimable. And I think that might end up being the difference maker. Paper X still really heavily favored despite losing people. Okay. Oh, very close on that timing. Stealing sight. Paranoia forwards. Just clipping the side of the head with the wall taking most of the damage. Something in the sky. He's feeling it. He's on one. Four kills. Against the eco. Farming up towards the blade storm. Yeah. And that's amazing because Monyet and Forsaken both didn't really invest into that round. They can start to buy. Something's getting close to the blade storm too. And this has got real power on the bonus round. And I think this is what, again, like you said, Brett, one of the biggest reasons why Paper X have been able to make this a really close series so far. Putting a lot of pressure on Heretics when Heretics have looked better in the gun rounds. Yeah. Looking a bit like a library right now in the arena, but a bonus round might just turn the frowns upside down for a Benji. lot of the fans. Benji is hiding in this corner. Oh my! through, hiding into the corner, but what can he really do? There's a cage, just to play anti-flash position. Nasty, nasty adjustment. Snaps up put. they don't know where he they is. Lost. They're trying to hunt him down. Lost as anything. Down and a. something did not even try to get the trade. He went for a react play into heaven. He's in heaven. Camped, tagged up. That's wild. That is wild. When the jet engages like that and pushes elbow, you expect, I would say, 100% of the time, the jet is going to then go back into sight to make sure you deal with that troublesome player. Benji oh. normally should be able to get one there and then just get shot in the back. And instead he gets three? Follow up. But my god, what a time to really shine. And okay. It hasn't broken the Paper X economy. Oh, I'm so good. I'm so good. Yo, sit down. Yo, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> I, I got to agree. I got to agree. Get out of my way. Benji's been a nightmare for them to deal with, but fast up mid. Oh, again, 
Can you anticipate anything else other than it? Mini Boo, he holds it down. Rooted in place at times, but he finds that kill against his adversary. Another player who's just been phenomenal individually for Heretics. They've had the firepower today to be able to go toe to toe with Paper X. It's just about being able to, you know, get the really important rounds across the line. Ball fade, spots it, one player, stun. Fault line to re peek. Flash through around the back. And a re clear. Something can tell the rest of his team there that clearly there's a stack over towards B Heaven if they're going to make a play like that. It's trips. Disgusting one out towards heaven. That's to punish a player who might be just trying to updraft, satchel their way up through main yeah. into that spot. And that's a classic play that something will go oh. for. What a read clear. Beautiful read. Timing could not have been better. Now it's left up to just a few stragglers, Paper X players. Nice movement at least the tip. Tap! Not enough! Benji! Precision! 30 seconds left. On display, fully in control. You dare set your sights or your feet whatsoever near his side, because this guy is on one. He looks amazing. I mean, he must have gone for the pop-off after that round two. If he's already calling himself, I don't know, what word did he use? Great coded? I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Throw all the superlatives out there. He is giving it. Some fuel to the fire here for Heretics. It wasn't already there, silencing them. Look at that. Get cheeky with it. But he is looking monstrous over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the trippy and broken G sets G up the recoil. G P C. G P C. <laughs> well, he set the crowd off. <laughs> well deserved, but early. This is the final map between both of these teams. Everything's on the line. To think that a couple rounds like that are going to rattle Paper X, even in a crowd like this, oh, you would be sorely mistaken. These are tried and tested players who've been able to get it done before with everything against them. And sure, there are other reasons why you might want to doubt them over here on Split. Their first time picking up you know, this composition after a, a while playing the Triple Duelist. But still, Heretics are showcasing they have a system that works. One of the downsides, actually, of Team Heretics' composition is that they don't have an info initiator. But if they can find good timings to flash re-clear areas and Paper X fall into it like they did in the previous round, well, that's not a weakness anymore. Suddenly, it's a strength. The back of the timeout, looks like the call's been made. Guess what? Looking like they might have wanted to send it, but no, just pausing here in the camp. Up above, oh my. Just some well-timed spam there yeah. based on the wall going up. Camera taken out. Benji's in the same spot again. Doesn't care. Yeah, by all metrics, I mean, that should be just a one and done. But the man's been making it a three and done. It's also really good because it pulls people onto really deep, committed angles that the rest of your team can play off. Nade, fault line. This Knocks is down. This is dangerous, actually, for Paddy. Yeah, giving up heaven control, Benji, though, still. Guess what? The same spot here. Yeah. Not really with the guns, though. The flashing is good, and the connection! There's a team flash. He maintains his composure. Locking it down and through with the riflesman, yet not too much more you can do. Even with re-ends, blinding the bejesus out of Benji there, <laughs> he still manages to deliver in that position. He's so comfortable playing from there. Seen him play that spot so many times in EMEA throughout the kickoff. One dead. But you see, even when Moniak goes for that elbow push, it doesn't pull his crosshair. He waits for the next player through. And Rienz is sending those flashes so that he can play off the back of it too, right? So, He's playing so, himself so, so, into the spot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something to clean up slightly. Early ramp at the beginning of this round. And this is the first time where we've seen Paper X, from what I can remember, play very spread across the map. They're fighting for both sides of the map at the same time. A ramp and B main. Control of both of them. 
I can't Still. believe Benji is in the they, same at damn the same spot. spot. But they also just keep wanting to go, hey, despite the fact that Benji's been doing this one, and they're walking out, they're walking no out. No way. Again, they don't expect it. There's no way. Again, a 90 degree snap to the side for Saken. That's a wrist breaker, but he doesn't land any shots in the process. And they're left stunned almost, reeling. The fact that Monyet, oh, uh, sorry, Forsaken, who is now playing the raise, is not clearing that position because he's like, right, guys, Benji cannot be there three rounds in a row. Right there. That would be silly. That would be silly. But sometimes silly is what it takes. Because a team like Paper X, something in the attack side up, reveals his hand. Everybody backing away, though. What you were talking about earlier, Josh, you know, that prior map control, they were gaining B main, A main at the same time. They're leaving something really to his own devices. There's so much danger here. But look, if something wants to clear this corner that Benji's been playing in, he has to come out so wide. Look at this, I mean, even with it. Oh, the movement. It's left. nice. No way. Committal timing! There's no way! Boom! Oh, boo! What? My God! No one spotted him, no one pinged him. Mind Freak eventually cleans him up. But listen, reinforcements are a while away. And with the spike drop down, it's a save. I would love to see that from Monyet's perspective. Is that the one spot? OK, so when you alter an omen, your vision slowly improves over time. And I'm wondering, was he just looking in the wrong direction at the end of the yeah, ultimate? Could know. he not see Boo? Is that a situation where the omen ult obscured his vision a little bit? Because often you will try to set up high, low peaks Here with the omen ult. You'll use it as bait to pull the crosshair. Let's see it from his POV. He just, he, oh. he, he sees him, but there's, it doesn't feel like he reacts quick enough or potentially comes it either. They're too late. Cleared way too late. That is a weird one. Wow. Paper X are genuinely looking rattled here. Not something that I was expecting to say right at the beginning of Split. And really? a little mentally out of it. Yeah. I mean, his early time has been taken by Paper X. There was one a few rounds ago. He's oh, missed the feet. He's missed it. Can't quite see it now. He sees it though. Spotted. Exchange of the fire, the flash, no connection. Everybody grouped up towards B main. Some bite to the round, of course. Even with the limited weaponry of Paper X. Never know we're gonna hit some shots off, but really, I mean heretics on full display, I think, with a lot of their defensive setups. They're gonna stun reclear mid here. Don't leave anything to chance. Trailblazer. Four words, mini boot. Just peeking out wide. Peppers them with bullets as they're trying to just retreat. They stopped them before they even got to the trip. Yeah. Haven't even cleared it. Second's wondering how to break this one. Guess what? You can't really yeah. you have to swing into it. Oh, no, it's horrible. It's a really horrible trip to deal with. Very powerful. Poison's off. Crossing back. Through main, running out of really opportunities. Jumping peak by something. Back through, in and out. Drifting with the movement. Did he know that the Vi's pushed up onto the tangle? It seems like Boo has that awareness. Forsaken through mid. There's a rocket. It's sent loose and flying again. Where's it going? Into the back of the killer man. He still stands tall. Try and conquer him. Try and take this side over. The anchoring players are making a mockery of the paper X. Please Nails him. Final bullet in the clip. Boo puts a punctuation mark at the end of that sentence. Do not come to be. But I gotta say, Brent, this was kind of shambolic the way that Paper X played this. Why are they peeking with an op through the smoke instead of letting the showstopper provide the pressure and at least figuring out, you know, forcing some kind of play out of him? It's not that, up. Do you see that, Benji, predicting the fact that Alex is going to be smacking his desk? Yep. I swear that's what he's going for oh there. My God. I'm going to be honest, I thought there was going to be more there after the <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Let's another timeout, the second one. Short succession here for Paper X, and you can feel it, the, necess the necessity of it. Am I, am I overreacting here to say this just looks cooked? We yeah, are. I, so. I mean, we're only seven rounds in. A team like Paper X can still come back, but the manner in which these rounds are going down, Benji's in the same corner of A. I mean, people are going to be calling that the Benji fishing spot. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's how these kind of things emerge within the game. And then also Boo just holding down B on his own against three players and a showstopper. These rounds are not looking good, not looking clean for Paper X.
clean. I mean, sometimes when you mix up the comp last minute, you're playing something like this away from you know what you've just been screwing with, playing with in official, officials, it, it, things go amiss. You run out of the, the right ideas, especially if you haven't put it into practice, and it really puts the demand on you know, everybody to just try and cook up something to get through this. But the trouble is when you're running against such a well-drilled setup like Heretics, when Absolutely. they have these retake protocols, when they have all these ideas, it's it's just inevitable that you're going to be failing. If you are improv and they've already you know, come up with a Google Doc 20, 20 steps ahead, you, you're not going to have it. Okay, but Patty's position right now, getting squeezed. Yep, stun, lay down, forsaken. Apparently moving, he is being squeezed. So, a rifle obtained. A reward for their troubles. Now they're really just making the moves out towards heaven. Benji forced away from the precious corner that he's been loving to play in. Back towards, again, screens, one-way smokes. At least the cages set up for him. Gives him that covering fire. And yet, finally puts him down. Blinded. Oh! Brilliant! You absolute animal! You absolute beast! And Munyet, what can you do? Rolling thunder up in the air, target practice. It's inevitable at this point. Heretics, man, they will not be dislodged from Spain. <laughs> if it's not one of them, it's the other. Benji does a great job. He even manages to get one again from his position, holds them back with a double cage set up. What, what, is, what that? is that, man? One enemy remaining. It's a paranoia play, another part of the setup, right? But at the same time, you still don't expect Rien's to be good enough to pick up three yes, off the back in such a yes, short space of time. Yes, yo, Mondia, yo, Mondia. Filthy, filthy stuff. Cutting it into the round, the options running out. Paranoia finally clears into the corner, but a cage to play into it, it splits it up entirely. Benji, Vichy, take your time, take your pick, son, finally. The return of the fire with a shotgun to the face and a vulnerability there with a snake by Carroll. follow through with a stingers, hello, and open it. Found and claim. The site is theirs, the plant will go down. Paper X, they're gonna be pushed back away from this one. Planted. 2v4, players are low, and enough out into the open that may be a possibility. These players are weak. Here for Heretics, 2v2. Seekers have to be used. It's just trying to count for the player's positions. Broken, mini boot. scared rebound. about it. Nade rebounds! Nade, Nade rebounds! Munyet in a 1v2. This started as a 4v2. No utility to his name, doubled up, heretics, you gotta think, discipline, name of the game! A dodge, a weave, a duck, a play, a Meunier saves the bloody day! The Red Bull clutch from Meunier in the round after Benji is screaming across the stage for him to step up. But I've got to be honest with you, Brent, considering that this was a 2v4, I'm not happy with it. Yeah. Enemy remaining. In the sense that they get one on the board and they figured out how to deal with the A anchors, yeah, okay, good stuff. Ah, disappointment on the face there of the Heretics fans, but it's mirrored within the coaching booth of Paper X because even when things go well, there are problems. Trip now set up a ramp. Mini Boo, he's in their faces right now with the show, stopping the movement. Little bit adjusted though, he can't quite find it. Flash, push him away. Gotta yeah. respect that one now. He was looking to try to punish the Trailblazer coming out from Divi, but he couldn't quite. Forsaken had a nade up in his face. Yeah, they kind of called the cancel there. And Ooh. Benji is watching. Mind free time, tries to take a timing. Shut down. Now you run your wee little legs right into the B oh. anchor. Guess yeah. what? It's oh, we're boo. going for Boo, are we? Yeah. Benji on one side, Boo on the other. Good luck to you. How do you clear him? Boo avoids it, round to the back. Still with the shotgun, no way he knows it, feels it. Maybe just hearing it, possibly off the sound cues pad attack though. He took that timing, he took that chance, gifted with one. Something's there, it's a flood defense, a flood play, right in, resetting, the aim! My God! Get out of here with that! Shadows of the ace the Forsaken got previously. That was incredible individual ability to be able to push them across the line. You're not really doing anything about that. Heretics tried to increase the pace, tried to bring it to them. Double kind of walked out through that and just got picked off. Neil Zinio's immediately taking a timeout and I think he's gonna be trying to talk to them about maybe setting themselves up a little bit so that they have the perfect timing to get out through the smoke. Yeah. But there wasn't much of a mistake there. The timing wasn't that far off. 
more credit, in my opinion, to how good Forsaken's aim looks rather than anything looking too sloppy for Heretics. And to be honest with you, Brent, if Paper X are able to put another two on the board here and tie this up six to six, it will be a miracle for them because they were looking so down and out. Yeah, I mean, how how would they even do it? <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to throw questions into the mix anymore. They've been proving themselves. They have the showstopper to work with here as well, right? Yeah. And also, they've shown that they actually are starting to come up with some really good ideas of how to deal with these side tankers. When they went for the A hit, they had a paranoia towards where Benji plays. They waited to force him inside of his cage and then double cleared it. You know, they're really thinking and trying to adapt on the fly. Not so much macro adjustments, but the small stuff. In our sight, exec, let's put this piece of utility here instead to deal with this. Uh, it's taken them long enough. It took them until round nine to look competent on these sight hits, but they get in there and it might be just enough. Gonna come down a lot to this, though. Yeah. Benji retreating to the back of the sight nade. This will clear at least one of the trips, maybe even both if they're lucky. It does. So now, no more defenses. Cages have to be popped off, and the util has to come flying. It's anchor, flood, call. Now the showstopper rocket through. Party! What a shot! Clay Pigeon shooting, and he's removed the major threat. But through the back of the site, they're not ready for it. Fast on the tempo, and paper bricks are increasing it all the way through a wide face. Benji was feeling that heat. It's over. Just like that, the round is finished. Spike planted. Boo in a 1v4. Very few chances of success. The round and should yet. be finished. The oh, round yeah. should be finished. <laughs> okay. And it is. It is. Monia and something both going for the exploration. Even though Boo slips the cracks, the something's there. And in that round, okay, there was an adjustment from Heretics too. Rians, instead of playing from over towards screens, he tried to get in on the site so that they could double up. But after dealing with Forsaken, they were just not ready for the second player. You know, once Monia swings into back site here, Rians and Benji are not ready for that at all. For some reason, they just did not catch the timing. And so, somehow, Paper X, mentally resilient, one away from a tight half. Feeling empowered now, setting it forwards. They change the setup. Seems like wherever they go, they're just destined to try and meet Benji Fisher with some of these setups, but they do clear the trip, at least towards B main, and they're keeping Monette in that position. Boo's also decided to just play a hyper-aggressive angle. With the Viper Pit in mid as well, this is going to be cutting up, removing those options available for Paper X. If anybody tries to walk through the trip, tries to go fast through it as well, they will have that trip in the pit on top of it, but it's broken. It's definitely Boo's position that's the most vulnerable, but Paper X are moving away from that into the stacked site to be. That's a call. I believe Miniboo's holding the nade. Trailblazer sends it flying. Actually predicting this one to the, just run forwards with the nice blood. Something already there with the blade. Some out wide to the flash. Set it up! Nasty stuff! The nasty one! Benji! Holy! What a return on the fire! Finally, the angry player removed. Two versus two. Viper's pit. It's a murky, murky territory now. It's going to be sweeping across the site. A tap. Forcing the util out. But finally, the plant. To buy. It's oh, good. Bullets. Very close. Bullets. Almost going down. Two versus two still. Patience being played now. Gaps and positions to be watched for. And what is the call for either side? How do you choose to play it? Devai holding the angle. Stepping out wide. Padatek taking it in his stride as a game of time. He's they're just bumping into each other. A paper X on the brink. The pit will fall though, toppled, decay. Back up to the health, paranoia wide. Boo's got the smoke and a tap onto it. Spraying, now Boo sticking, halved! But not enough to fight. He finds the perfect timing, picture perfect at that six to six. They've evened up the half with four rounds in a row. You can never count this team out. It looked so over by the time it got to round eight. And even here, Benji put in on absolute oh, heroics. Boy. But the problem being, they needed to get the Flood Defend going so that Mind Freak couldn't pit. Once the pit was down, pretty much game over for Heretics. They tried their best, but we're heading into a tied half to decide this. It's not even a BO1 anymore. Yeah, anyone's game at this point, really. Anyone's game at all for the second half. For our final map in this series. Now, earlier we heard from Munyet. Let's hear from him a little bit about this match. Hello, I'm Monyet. I'm the duelist of Paper Rex. 
I feel like we're not playing up to our performance yet from what we practice, but I believe that we will overcome this. I would say because this is my first time playing against CDG and all the boys already played G like twice or three times, but I would say I think we misread them in the game and also we have like sort some like communication problem in those crucial round, I would say. Not a lot really to play with. They're going to try and just almost run their way through it, but they're slowly being revealed every single time they try and make their way through. Finally, the reckoning will fade, but Mayim Freak now in position. A code for Forsaken to try and almost fight within, and they are falling like flies. Forsaken winning every battle! I mean, it's really hard for us, like starting very slow. And also happen in Pacific kickoff. I mean, the goal for this tournament is just we go one by one, you know. It's not like we need to go to playoff, but if we had a bad tournament, I mean, everything, everyone's just okay, you know, because we're not setting up the high expectation for this tournament. I just like want to go step by step, you know. Maybe that's the key to some of the Resilience has been on display here by PayPrex. I mean, just step by step, round by round, match by match. I mean, not expecting anything moving into this tournament. He even said it himself, you know, like not even expecting playoffs or anything like that. But they're on the verge here of removing potentially one of the tournament favorites, one of the arena favorites at least. I mean, Certainly. still even footings. Maybe getting ahead of myself here, but something at the top of the scoreboard. This guy's been lighting the world on fire. He's been lighting a map on fire. He's awoken. Yeah, yeah. You look at the two players at the top of the scoreboard. Benji's done everything he could possibly ask to do on the defense. But I don't see how he's going to be able to influence these attack rounds in the same kind of way. At least not easily. Whereas something on Jet in this comp, he can have enormous impact on attack and defense. If he's feeling it, he can force the fight. This pistol doesn't look like Paper X are in position to try to fight it, unless something finds a timing up through Vent. Go behind them. Heaven Control, vitally important here. And guess what? Everybody just grouped up onto the side with the exception of Benji Fishy. No, nobody is ramped to stop yeah. this retake from coming through. Uh, They're all on site. Can't like the look of this post plant just on paper, at least just staring at the mini map. Because now, look at it, ramp control gained. Smoking off the main angle. Look at them. They were trying to refight. It's just walking through these smokes. And well, with the decay kicking in. Good luck to you, Paper X. Still here, Benji Fishy cleaned up everybody. That's another pistol round for Paper X. So consistent with it, to such a high degree now. Yeah, and I feel like Paper X mostly have been winning them themselves by virtue of great ideas. That one, I think, thrown away a bit by Team Heretics. I really did not like what they were going for in the post plan there. Yeah. Didn't make any sense to me. They needed to be repositioning to try to, you know, take another piece of map control or at least set up some crossfires. That is. A rough fight, three easy pickings for Paper X. And they will take another pistol. It's been keeping them in this game. If the pistols and the eco rounds and stuff had been more even, Heretics would be out to a massive lead right now, but they're not. That is not reality. Paper X are winning in those important situations. Remain take, Nade rebounds with the stun. Connection with the dog, Forsaken. He's looking for a little bit more because it will mean his. Uh, Ult will be earned online. Look at that. Just overpowering them. All picked up. One enemy remaining. The stragglers. Really dealt with here. These are hard eco rounds for Heretics too. They can't afford to buy really anything into them because they're worried being pushed down onto light armor would be devastating against a team that likes to pick the outlaw as much. So there is some kind of knock-on effect of Forsaken and something going for that weapon as much. It makes those follow-up rounds after the pistol a lot easier. Nowhere close to any ultimates for heretics. They can't even think about getting those online. Instead, they've got to worry about headshots coming out from the outlaw, because we have seen some filthy stuff from something on Lotus. He's taking an early gander and peek down A main. And yet faking like they could be taking control of B main. Which yeah. they are, they just disrespect it. I mean. Running straight past the cam, not worried about any sort of trap play. Semblance of it, something with a dash. Enabled active. Smells like something is up for him. And but at the same time, the angle. at the same time, for heretics, they should be able to get a read on what's going on. This is like the most default way of playing this defensive comp, apart from the fact that Moniette's a little further forward than you would expect. 
But there certainly should be able to get an idea of what's happening. Blinding. They're gonna fake like they're taking. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a, I mean, a team flash with a paranoia connecting onto Forsaken. Yeah, just trying to reclaim. <laughs> but look at this. Space. The defenders here are going to be faster than the attackers. They could try to react off the back of this, but Paper X have got the read. They pixel know angle. that that was fake B main. Pure pixel angle. All that adjustment there. Just one to the body. 140 down and out. Mind freak. Off angle here could do some serious damage, serious work. Once more, nail it down. They're all stacked up. Flash rebounded, but he's playing anti inside the smoke. Drops down. Still got a shorty as well. Will it be cleared? Yes, it will. Reins. Good adjustment. Snaps to the side, but they're not expecting the back of the site. But yet, still here. The Spectre, a bit of running gun, could do some work, but not enough. But the bullets just barely tagging. Reclear. It's down. Boo. Great work. Great work with the composure. Important positioning from Boo there. Something they were lacking on the pistol. But I was still very worried. From a macro perspective, Team Heretics hit the site there as Paper X were expecting it, right? The defense yeah. is favored in that spot. And that's partly because Paper X are more willing to go for those rotates, hard reads, gambles. Heretics, sometimes the perfect is the enemy of the good. If you take your time trying to clear every single position, you actually end up giving more time for the defenders to rotate. And yet, they get through it that round. But that is going to be something to keep our eyes on, especially when Forsaken has a big ult like this. Getting ready at the start of the round to see whether anybody was going for early ramp pressure. Push back up onto the angle. Oh my, doubled up, flash, avoided, and dodge Forsaken! Hopes and dreams, talk about it, dashed away, rocket rebounds! Goodness me. Relentless, that's a spike drop down too. He wants a little bit more, boo. One enemy remaining. Sneaking around the sewers, mini boot. It's your turn. Can you step up to the challenge? You cannot. Lawless. And that's that early work that Forsaken was putting in, just trying to farm up those old orbs, disrespecting them, making sure that the kills went to him on the eco. Can use it to just set it up like that. Listen, they're probably going to win the round anyway. Probably didn't need the ult on top of it with those opening two kills, but he just seals it, doesn't he? He does seal it. And at the same time, too, that's an eco swing round for Heretics. So it's an important one to be able to secure. I think most teams would be happy in the 5v3 to save the ultimate for a better occasion. Maybe that's even the optimal play. But it is important to get yourself out in the lead here. Paper X now favored to go up by three. And Forsaken has just been a monster in these split games individually. Yeah, Form-wise, it's really been decided. That factor at play is just so good. Two full reposition of Mind Freak. So back into it. Dog's gonna have a spot too. They want a few more. What is that? What is that? Disgusting. Satchel in their faces, man. This is relentless. He looks unbelievable. The first half was Benji and Boo trying to hold back something. This time on defense, Forsaken's just, you know, calmed something down. He's like, don't worry, I got it. Yeah. I got this half. Hop in the backpack. Do not fret. What is this one? <laughs> Disgusting. Not even on it, man. Not even on it. But no, I mean, Forsaken not willing to end their tournament lifeline this early. Taking fade into his own hands. And yet, listen, I mean, Heretics got their own ambitions. Flames of it, but it's being extinguished right now. A timeout called for Heretics. Precious time at that. They need to get these players back on their feet because they're playing like they're rattled. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I think they are. They're playing a little slowly. They're not willing to match the pace of Paper X. And all of those mistakes that you were seeing earlier on are now getting covered up by pace and individual skill. The Paper X players playing tighter together now that they all are on the same page. And getting powered through by just winning so many duels. We have not seen Miniboo come online in this final map. He's been amazing for the rest of the tournament. Unbelievable in kickoff. He looked like a top five player in the world. And here, he has struggled to get online. They need Miniboo now more than ever. Otherwise, they are at serious risk of leaving this Spanish crowd without a representative here. And an extraordinarily strong team going home early. Yeah, heartbreak. A tragedy for them. You think about how close the prior match was, but a deep push contact making a footstep here. This should be a level of awareness, Boo! Oh, it's just asleep at the wheel, maybe watching something entirely different, but the fight was taken. I mean, that is so much confidence from Forsaken there, the way that he swings that too. It's so committed. 
Four players though, ready to fight back, I and they do. Exactly. Dropping something. Okay, they get the information. Does that call the pivot? It does. There's more pace here with Heretics. They know that the A site only being defended by Mind Freak, who could vulnerable them. Oh, he slipped into elbow instead. The position's here. He's revealed himself though. Just layering down that snake by Flash. Dodge. Now to stun. God almighty, he's in trouble. Needs some backup. Where is the help for the rest of his team? Through and out. Mind Freak and Devai. Double up onto that one. That's incredible work. How has Mind Freak stayed alive long enough there for Devai to help? It's a 2v3 surrounded. Every front. If no Rians, control of anything. If Rians gets a kill, he's got the breach ult online. It could be the only way they're saved. This paranoia is headed towards elbow. Trailblazer after shock down. Got to dodge it with a knife out. Now a plan. Rians now has the ult online. Does he choose to use it with the pressure? No, he dies. Or it's even active and instantaneous is the trade. No gaps in the play for Paper X here. And they can feel it. Smiles on the stage. They are on the precipice. They're in control of their own destiny. I cannot believe the difference between the first quarter of this map and the rest of it. Slow start. I mean, it took a while for Paper X to even look like they were playing the game. The first eight rounds, they were just out of it. I was ready to call it. It was chalked, it. man. It was chalked. It looked incompetent. And then since then, they've only dropped one round. One round. <laughs> I'm convinced we're running old clips, but... Uh, it must be. It's got to be. There's been nothing to be mad about. No. That was just perfect with the fundamentals. One way disrespected. Heretics now. Grouped up side by side. They have the odds. Flash on either side. Incredible pushing them all the way movement back. to cancel that. Whilst full block. Rolling Thunder now. This sort of connection, Aftershock, Paranoia, walking right into all of this. Util! It's eventually traded there, still in the smoke, playing it around, quick scope, something, Monyet from the back, to buy round the side! They can't hold a candle to it! The fundamentals, the flood defense! It's Paper X at their best, they thrive in it! Match point. Going up to match point. This has been an outrageous game. An unbelievable game. And it feels like Paper X have truly woken up. The form we're seeing from the players, the willingness to fight aggressively with each other. They are flooding out here with not a care in the world. No hesitation. One single mind. And this is where it all turns. I'm gearing up for it. I can see it on the mini-map. Five players from Heretics all on the line. We're in the round already. Grouped up, operator to meet them. And this could spell disaster for the Spanish org, the team of new players, new rookies, some of them experience at this wider stage. It could all just tumble and collapse. Dash now available, re-swings into it. The nail in the coffin, one after the time, the hammer swings down and out onto the anvil. And there is no hope, no chance in hell. They have gone home entirely. Paper X eliminating the Spanish favourites. What a performance! What a resurgence! Insane individual talent. And finally waking up and looking like Paper X of last year. Eliminating a team that won every single map to qualify for Madrid. And then played an insanely close game with Sentinels, looking like one of the best teams that we had here. So many ideas, and Paper X takes that and tears it apart. In the final map, in the final half, they were clearly the better squad. A great try from Heretics, yeah. but they will be gutted. They wanted to go further, they had so much left to show, and now they're gonna have to wait until April stage one to be able to showcase it again. It goes to show how tense and tight that competition is between all the teams here. I mean, when you have you know, the best two teams from every region, it doesn't matter if a team's looking like it, they're in poor form heading into the tournament entirely. I mean, Paper X are slow starters. They've said this about themselves. They said this about Madrid as a tournament. They weren't really looking forward to really putting on a good performance and making playoffs. They didn't set those expectations for themselves, but they're continuing forward anyway. And yes, playoffs isn't made, but they have overcome an incredible challenge here today. 
And I think there has been a struggle for this team to reinvent themselves. You listen to what Alex has yeah. been saying and the whole team, they're not feeling confident about this. They're still trying to figure out what their style is going to look like with Monia on the team. And for them to go, sure, it's still a double to-do list that they showcased on Split. But for them to change things up and still look really solid and still get all of that firepower out of something and Forsaken is just marvelous. Yeah. And all of the pace that they brought knocked Heretics asunder. That was not the same tight Heretics team. They looked timid on the attack rounds, slow to try to take advantage of opportunities, still trying to figure out how to deal with a fast-paced team like Paper X, who, like Mixwell said earlier, once you've played, they can be very difficult to deal with the first time. Wow, an incredible series. I mean, with that all being said and done, we're going to send it down to the analyst test to take it all down and away. Break it down, guys. I mean, if you can. I I mean, I'm, I'm going to try. We're going to try. You know, I look, Heretics uh, learned today about W Gaming because Paper X manages to close it out in, honestly, it rather uh, like intense fashion, but also it felt like Paper X were just so far ahead at a certain point. Like Heretics, they just like they took their foot off the uh, off the pedal, Mimi. Yeah, I mean, once we got into that second half, it was a complete 180 from the start of that game. Change. Playing this comp, just the, the utter confidence they're coming out with when they're flooding into these sites, like the casters were talking about. It's not a huge change in the comp, but it's such a 180 from what we saw earlier from Paper Rex. They are truly awoken right now. Absolutely. I mean, the real danger was Benji Fishy to start things out. Yeah. He got those back-to-back -back 4Ks. He's top fried both maps back-to-back as well the consistency was out of this world a great display for heretics and one other thing to remember is they played two maps on the international scene last year overall now they got to play six here a big learning opportunity for the organization and for this roster i think there's a lot that they're going to be bringing back to emea yeah. but that's the big tragedy of it because this team came out and looked excellent they were just a, a few yeah. rounds on any map away from beating sentinels it was the same here but they're going home and paper x is moving on well let's check in with dryad for the Verizon post-match interview with Forsaken. Que termina siendo el equipo eliminado, pero los fans de Paper X nunca faltan. Heretics gets eliminated, but Paper X fans are always here. And I want to hear you guys, where are the Paper X fans over here? And I'm here with Forsaken, where the post-match interview is taking with Forsaken for the interview. My first question for Forsaken is going to be just what we just saw, that last map of the split in which they change their the the composition. We're going to see Forsaken with Raze, and I want to ask you, what was this change? And what was what changed? Because they were having an incredible performance. incredible. Forsaken, the first thing I want to ask is, well, we just got the chance to watch for the last map of split. You change the composition, and you go from the triple duelist to just two duelists, and you on the Raze. And that's the main show today in that second half you were just going off. So tell me how and why you changed the composition and how does it feel to go back to that race? I think I realized that maybe this comes only work for Pacific because in this very hard, everyone just so good. And then I, ju I just realized that I think we need some info, some like initiator, you know? So I decided to like change the race and make uh, Monyet go Oman because yeah. I felt like he's really good at Oman, especially surviving skills. I think it's really good at it. So I'm still can't believe that <laughs> this is my race debut, my first race debut, you know, and I, I can win against the edge. It's like really amazing, you know. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Sí, lo, lo que nos está diciendo es que se ha dado cuenta de la composición que estaban jugando antes de triple duelista, solo servía en pacífico. Cambiaron esa composición, se daban cuenta de que él se daba cuenta de que necesitaban un poco más de información y por eso decidió hacer el cambio a él, jugar con la race y poner a Monieta que jugara en ese omen. Decía que él lo consiguiera dar un muy buen omen y que aún así no podía creer eh, lo que era este último mapa. Ahora, también le quiero preguntar lo que ha sido más que nada su flexibilidad a través de lo que ha sido la región de Pacífico y dentro de este torneo. Eh, ¿Cómo se siente? Y si podemos seguir esperando, como siempre, esas sorpresas de Paper X. And we just talked about the race, but you've become one of the best flex players, if not the best player, best flex players that we have right now in this tournament. Uh, can we expect a little bit more surprises coming from you? And uh, what is it like to be that flex player for Paper X? Mm, yeah, I mean, maybe I will play Deadlock or ISO next, who knows? Okay, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I believe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the reason why I, I like become flexible because like I just love how the way I can create like a lot of stuff, strategy, and I just love being creativity, I think that's all. And look, and this is 
de pronto, sí, cuando le preguntaba de qué otra composición y si podíamos ver algo más de él, decía, de pronto puedo jugar Deadlock, de pronto puedo jugar ISO, no se sabe, pero después nos dice que lo que más le gusta es ser flexible, es eh, poder eh, traer un poco más de, de creatividad, de ideas, y, y eso es lo que destaca la creatividad más que nada del equipo. Última pregunta que le tengo, ¿contra quién se quiere enfrentar de este torneo? ¿Quién quiere enfrentar en este torneo? Uh, I would say, if somehow we met EDG again, okay. you know? The rematch. Think, rematch, yeah. I think it's gonna be different. Dice que si se tienen que enfrentar con alguien, tiene que ser con EDG. Le gustaría poder tener ese rematch. Eso es lo que, todo lo que tenemos de esta entrevista. This is everything that we have for this interview. But if you're wondering how those next matches are gonna look like, we're gonna go right to the draw show. Hola a todos y bienvenidos a la Masters de Madrid. Os presento a todos el sorteo de los próximos partidos que vamos a tener en el día de mañana. Estoy aquí con Victoria. Victoria, you're going to tell us how the, this draw works, right? Yeah, um, so it's a little complicated, just bear with me. Um, you can kind of shuffle these around while I'm talking. Um, nice. So basically, during the Swiss stage, there's not going to be any sort of um, rematches that have already been seen in the Swiss stage. So what that means is that EDG and PRX will not meet each other again. So what this does for the draw, if they are drawn to be in the same match, then the second team drawn for the match that results in that happening will be Ooh. redrawn. So if we get, let's say we have KC versus Loud, then Loud's going to be redrawn to be one of the other two teams. And then if EDG versus PRX is drawn, we will redraw the second team. And that's kind of how this is going. So okay. four teams, but a little complicated. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. I'll just have you pick a box and throw it to me. It's going to be match one of whenever we decide the schedule is. The, the draw order is not necessarily the schedule order, um, but the first okay. match, uh, team one. Chicos, voy a darle la primera papeleta de lo que va a ser el primer equipo que vamos a sacar aquí. Y se lo voy a dar a ella para conocer right. que va a ser. We have Carmine Core. Carmine Corp. Y Carmine Corp se va a enfrentar a. Paper Rex. A Paper Rex. Vale, y vamos con el segundo partido que ya está claro, ¿no? Solo son cuatro equipos. There's only four teams, so. Yeah. Well, the, the first team drawn in each match is the higher seed, so it does matter a little bit. All right, so the first team for the other match is going to be Loud. Loud, los brasileiros! And then their opponent, by default. It's, gonna, it's a little difficult to open <laughs> these boxes, actually, without it knowing is. where it opens from, you know? Alrighty. It's gonna be EDG. EDG! Y se han dado partidos completamente distintos a lo que acabamos de ver hasta el día de hoy. Así que nos espera un día de mañana súper, súper emocionante. Espero veros aquí con la Masters Madrid para otro día más de emoción, frenetismo y partidos increíbles que nos están esperando mañana. ¡Nos vemos mañana, chicos! There you have it. We got the draw. And you may notice that we swapped out a Mitch man for an Alex. That's right. Coach Alex is here today. Hello, hello. Uh, please take care of my desk, OK? I, uh, and I'm please react to that draw. <laughs> you guys oh, are no. playing Carmine Core. What do you think? That yeah. was great. I think uh, it's gonna be, we're going to be a really good game. I think everyone, both teams are very, very aggressive. One is yeah. a little bit crazier than the other. Yeah. Like coming, Sad, coming, coming up. Okay. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we are the structured team. <laughs> you know? Have you not seen us play? No, yeah. I actually haven't. That's crazy. Oh, man. Well, I, look, uh, firstly, you know, this has been such a wild day for you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were talking before. There's obviously, like, a lot of uncertainty going into this matchup for you guys. But it just felt like once the, the switch gets turned on, it's just an, it's impossible to turn it off. How do you coach that? <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really say much in the second half, you know? Like, yeah. I, just, I just let you guys look good. It's the end of the line. You're either going home or we do something special. Yeah, when, when we watch you on the camera, you are always slamming your desk. It seems like you're, you're getting really emotional. I honestly tried to do it less today. Yeah, you're trying to treat the desk. Yeah, I was very, very kind today, no? Yeah, yeah. We're one, 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 on one time. But I wanted, to, I wanted to ask about it. How do you balance like your own emotions? with when you when you talk to the team and, and giving them the message you need to hear? Honestly, I think I just, I do it before so they can't hear me. <laughs> so, that, so that I don't actually get angry at them, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, so okay. after, after I let it all, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. This is Got what we need it. to do, guys. You know, that's what I do. 
Yeah, I, I want to ask you as well uh, about yeah. the, the calm, the final map. Forsaken was answering about it a little bit in his interview as well. But you guys had a really short turnaround to come back uh, and change up from that triple duelist comp. Can you talk to me about the thought process and also how you made the transition so quick? I mean, it, I think I think we just went back and asked like Chaya Monyet, like, look, are you really comfortable on this map? You know, like we need we need to change some stuff. Mm. The triple duelist is kind of overcooked, you know. Yeah. Um, he said, look, a split is the worst one. You know, we need to fix this shit. So after that, we uh, decided, okay. Put him on Omen. Mind Freak had to sacrifice a little bit, go on to Viper. He's never played Viper before, so we had one day. And for second, you know, he plays everything, so we just chucked in there and prayed. How many times did you get to scrim split before you played the match? <laughs> once? Yeah, just once. <laughs> okay. But we did a lot of like server work, you know, like talking and stuff. Sure, sure. Try to figure yeah. it out. How's it been incorporating Monia into the team? Because uh, it feels like he gets along really well, but yeah. I think it when, when he got brought in, I think a lot of people were wondering, like, where is he going to sit in this squad? How does he uh, fit into the, the system that you guys have built, you know, W Gaming yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, how, how's it been incorporating him in there? I mean, he actually plays very well in practice. It's just, I think he's really nervous sometimes, you know. So if it starts well for him and a round goes wrong, sometimes he can just like, oh my God, it's good. You're just trying to make it more comfortable yeah, so we're trying moving forward? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So I mean, like, right now he told, he told us, like, look, the race is not working for us. We're going to try and move him away from it. Okay. I mean, but you know, we don't have much time. I think we're playing tomorrow, no? Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have like five hours then, I guess. Yeah, how do, you, how do you prepare for a format like this? How much of your game plan is focused on your team on Paper X, and how much is on, uh, is on counter strutting generally? And how does that change for this Swiss format where the matches are back to back? I mean, before we came in, you know, we just did like a rough idea of every team here mm -hmm. because we don't know who we're going to play. So I use that as a base basis for anything we do. Um, when we find out the team, you know, I, I prefer to be awake really early in the morning. I just rewatch everything and then just reconfirm what we're doing, you know, what they're adjusting. And then after we come up with a game plan, everybody gets together in the middle of um, by just one hour before. And we talk about the game plan, we make sure we're aligned, and then we just go into it and see what happens. Sure. I mean, it, it panned out today. Uh, as well as that, you guys playing against uh, against a home crowd. You've done that before when uh, you all went on that run um, all the way back in Copenhagen. It, it was the same deal. Yeah. Is, yeah, is the crowd, team just used to yeah. it at this point, or do you still feel that pressure, as, especially for Mignette, it's a new player? I mean, I always tell them that they're cheering for us, you know. <laughs> just lie to yourself. <laughs> and then they laugh. And it's okay, you know. I mean, um, I think we're lucky enough that most people like us. So, <laughs> so you know, so we don't really get like. Do they get a little flustered if they feel like they're? Have you noticed that before? Never. Yeah. I mean, I think they enjoy it. Enjoy, it, you know. We really, really don't get like lens like this in Asia. Yeah. For us, it's like a really like a. It's an environment to enjoy, you know. And we try to approach it with a positive mindset mostly. Mostly. Yeah. I mean, well, I remember, you know, coming into this, it was Forsaken who had said he felt like he was a six out of ten uh, coming into the event here. Yep. And I have to wonder, you know, like for you, you got to keep that positivity going. Is that oftentimes very challenging when the players, you know, they're young, they're emotional, you know, all the, all the things that happen with teenagers and young adults um, and stuff. I mean, in the past, no. I mean, the last three years, we never really had to do this but this yeah. time we're coming in with less confident than we usually are so it's actually do you feel that was a helpful thing or a, a less confident yeah a terrible yeah okay because <laughs> yeah, i'm just curious you know everyone's yeah, got to be suffering right now yeah do you every think round is labor, you know? back now. <laughs> i don't know we, will, we have to see after watching that last map you, you, you for, don't feel for like one for one half yeah yeah I mean, look lotus i feel like we, we quit that a little bit better yeah okay. we had like 10 six lead or something and we just it suddenly disappeared you know confident yeah but, so but really in that okay. interview that that alex was, was mentioning for a second said you guys are a six out of ten what would yep. you rate your team right now six out of ten <laughs> <laughs> bang on still yeah. i love you man it doesn't change at all yeah i respect it i Honest. respect it all right well let's go ahead and show what we have coming up tomorrow for you wonderful people at home and what a treat that we had today here but of course playoffs on the line we have our one one teams that are going to be clashing against each other you'll get the schedules later on make sure you stay tuned to the social media for VCT across all the different uh, regions to uh, get updates there, but you can see the matches play out. You guys are playing Carmine Core. Uh, Alex, you know, I, I guess are you, it seems like you were excited about that game just to see like what would happen there. Any player in particular that you're like, oh boy, they're going to be a problem for us. I'm married, man. Yeah. You know, it's on fire this time. Kind of fed that one to you. Is he a top rated player right now? Uh, he must be. He, he must might be. be. He must yeah. be. He must be. I mean, I mean he's after. been incredible. Yeah. Be, I mean, we were screaming with him in, when we were in Champions, you know, and he was trying for it. Like back when he was on an NA team. Yeah, he was so good. 
he was like he was already so good yeah he was really so good that's wild yeah wow well hey man we're we're excited nonetheless uh best of luck Thank to you. you guys tomorrow uh take care of the furniture uh you're doing a good job i'm Thank proud you. of you buddy but yeah that's gonna do it for us today big shout out to mimi our casters we also uh you know mitch who stepped aside as well you know gotta I go celebrate so. some saint patty's day love but alex actually fired him first. yes <laughs> I, 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 yeah it's true <laughs> but guys don't worry because we're gonna be back here tomorrow you're gonna see his team take the stage against Carmine Core. You're also going to see Loud take the stage as well versus, uh, help me out, Mimi. EDG. EDG. There was only one more team. Yeah, I know, but you know what? I'm, I'm old and I'm tired. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to you for now, but we'll catch you tomorrow with plenty more Masters Madrid. See you soon, guys. Thanks so much. It's a classic David versus Goliath. FPX, they're facing off against some stacked talent in Loud. It's safe to say this is going to be a tall order for the Chinese team. But if there's anything that we've learned from this tournament, it's that this squad can do it. One of these two teams will be going home. But now he has to go. He's got to take this challenge halfway. Not achieved. Autumn plays it well. Life's now pretty questioning what the hell's going on. No idea about two E's, but a fantastic clutch from him and they don't know about Salak until now. And what a horrible surprise it was. And he's just spraying and praying and it works. This could be it. The downfall of FPX on this map. Bless looking to close and he does. 13 to 5. It's clean work for Loud. They are looking very sharp here. Autumn and Life are very good, but they're going to need to do a lot more than that here. Pins are down to 15. Yeah, Life's are on a platter. They've got to know about Autumn, but he's still firing. Great work from Autumn, and I am there. That's much better. His position will be considered. He's been there more often than not. But Life bringing death against Loudless. Two, he's what have you got? Anything he's going to take down. Only one, and that is nowhere near enough. So even though they have the sight, they have no ability to do it. Lysol going down. Autumn, you got to be worried about. He makes his appearance known. Oh, and that's just perfect again. Has he got the heroics in him? He's got so many targets, so many threats. He can't do it. It's done. FPX will be going home and loud. Live to fight another day. Heretics playing in front of the hometown crowd. It's going to be a difficult task for Paper Rex, but this team is no slouch when it comes to fighting in unfamiliar territories. There's Panatek half on the fuse. The time, he's got it. What will they check it? Not quite. It's a half clear. It's oh Benji. He's blinded. He does not care. Follow up, they only want two of the rifle rounds. Right? Ooh! <laughs> clean, total clean headshots. Clean off. Okay. Still watching. One the damage. Remaining. Low enough. One shot in the chamber. Monier sends it. Oh. Holy! The pieces have maybe fought something out of it, but it's a triple face. You do not stand. You fall against this team. And that puts him in a brutal position now, heading into Lotus. In time, something to seem to go. <laughs> and he's playing it patiently, really wetting it out. Could be a risk being played, but no, he's just lined it up for the two. Popped the balloon straight into the sky here, but now it comes down to the gunfights. And something is unleashed entirely. Flash here, just spots it as well. Blowing the halo ring around the head. And Benji, Fishy, take your pick, Forsaken. Who? <laughs> Ramon Yen to the back wall. He didn't Five get seconds. it. There's no way everybody's fallen. Time. Heretics not willing to go out so early. We're going to split now, and you got to be worried for Paper X. Just to play anti-flash position, nasty, nasty adjustment. Snaps up once, they don't know where they it is. Lost. They're trying to hunt him down. Oh, oh, I'm so good, I'm so Benji. good. Sit down, sit down, go. Go, sit down, sit down. Fully in control. Cage three. You dare set your sights or your feet. Still a shotgun, no way he knows it. Something's there, it's a flood defense, a flood play, right in, resetting the aim! In the coffin, one after the time, the hammer swings down and out onto the anvil. And there is no hope, no chance in hell. They have gone home entirely. Paper X eliminating the Spanish favorites.